okay we'll start so first of all a grand welcome to all of you for this five days fast track batch and uh, i'm so happy to take these classes so every six months now so for this i will be waiting you know really i'm not lying so i'll be waiting for this but uh, only thing you know i don't want to see the same faces again and again so that 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 is the there you know it's like uh, you know last time also they came before that also they came like that i should not feel you know so that's what my expectation will be every time you know you understood what i mean to say i mean to say that you should clear at any cost okay and uh, coming to this particular may 24 exam only you know six papers correct so not like previous november 23 exam six papers only and uh, definitely you should clear this may 24 exam that should be the target okay tatrom tukrom okay uh, so therefore uh, don't have any kind of second thought that uh, what if you know if not may november no may only do or die situation you understood or not so at any cost you should be clearing and uh, therefore please make use of this five days actually last time i took for four days only and this time i have added one day more because mo lot of students told me in telegram that uh, sir like last time what you have taken those portions okay sir that we know little bit but uh, newly three chapters were added sir when we attended the coaching so those three chapters were not properly covered and moreover uh, we are not having confidence on those three chapters so can you take those three chapters like regular like little bit uh, slowly so that we can understand as if we are listening for the first time so that's the reason why i added one more day extra four days our regular portion it will be there so one day extra we will be covering three extra chapters that were added by icii that is place of supply very very important chapter we cannot take it for granted place of supply then second important chapter tds tcs this is this was there in income tax as well gst also tds tcs is there so that tds tcs and three one small topic only this is accounts and records okay these three chapters were added in the new syllabus that is for may 24 exams onwards okay and uh, due to that reason only that last one day extra which i have preserved for discussion of these three topics okay and then so we have launched a, a new book considering the weightage of 50 marks and based on the new study material and lot of amendments so completely we have revamped the book so and we have increased the size also based on the suggestion of previous batch so they said sir book is small size sir we are not able to see properly so because too much time we are uh, spending on mobile and all uh, sir. So, because of that uh, little bit, you increase the size of the book like that they said. So, that is why we have made it A4 size and we have completely revamped the portion also inside. So, if you see that you will be knowing, sir, uh, which means that you are forcing us to buy the new book. No, I am not forcing you to buy the new book. So, if you are already having the old book and if you are comfortable with that, you prepare from that itself anything which i am telling as amendments extra points as amendments etc those amendments alone uh, you make note okay so this is one way no sir i am okay i will invest i can afford then you buy so first preference you try to use the same book which you are already having if you feel like you wanted to buy you can buy but only thing see uh, 600 rupees and all and even i have reduced the price also from the last time so mainly because we don't want to make any gain out of it and uh, all the students should get benefited okay and for that reason only if you can afford please buy if you cannot don't worry use the same old book plus extra wherever i am telling as amendments etc alone so if it is already there in the book that is a previous edition book you can use that otherwise you make note of that amendments okay and a if you buy new book it will be advantageous for you only so that you don't have to add anything because psychologically one impact will be there in the brain that is uh, what if this point is changed 
so that that will be pricking in your mind so is it correct or not is it amended or not so this kind of confusion will be there for that only i will be telling to the students if you don't want any kind of confusion you go for the new book okay but i'll be taking classes from the new book only so not the previous edition because previous edition already last time itself i have done so this is the updated book and uh, this time here lot of amendments are there for may 24 exams wherever i am telling as amendment so there even i will reduce the pace of taking the class so that is important area amendment area there you need to focus more because based on my observation let it be new syllabus or old syllabus every may attempt they will be asking lot of questions on amendments every may attempt november attempt will be little bit deep they will go so some areas which they have not tasked and all they will be asking some of you if you have appeared for november 23 you might have known it will not be like a regular paper so i'll be warning every time so in november 23 also i want them that is see boss november attempt will be little deep so they will go inside the pages and they will take uh, the magnifying glass and they will see inside the book and they will coin a question but may is not like that may is like a plain thing so they will ask mostly questions on amendments so that to the recent uh, mtp i have seen so already series one mtp they have released and uh, that mtp i have seen and yes the questions in mtp also is based on amendments only so that's the reason why trust me this may 24 exam minimum to minimum 15 to 20 marks in indirect taxes that is gst will be from amendments only it may be in the form of mcq or it may be in the form of descriptive questions or somewhere it will be given but on amendments definitely they will be testing so wherever i am telling as amendment you focus more on that okay so this i have given in the beginning itself list of amendments for may 24 exams like that i have given so in the fifth page itself so i have given all the list of amendments so these amendments you know what you need to do is that one day before the exam you need to revise these amendments at least mandatory you will definitely read all other things also but this must you should do one day before the exam so mandatorily and along with page numbers i have given what is the amendment in which page number it is there so that quickly you can refer and you can go for exam and even in case if you miss any point also i'm just stressing i know that's why i gave it separately as a index and then what i have done is that uh, i have given practice manual also as well as entire revision also in one book so don't see the size of the book and uh, have a fear so book has uh, you know size has increased so lot of things are there etc and all not lot of things are there the same thing as there but little bit i have explained through some illustrations uh, through charts etc and all so due to that reason only but the content it will be the same and let's all make an effort to complete in this 5 days the entire indirect taxes which is applicable for your exam okay so you all i need your support a lot so because i alone cannot do anything i need your support also in what terms your support is required a kind of positivity what is it positivity that see someone one idiot is coming here and taking classes for the sake of us so we should also be cooperating with him to the extent possible we should be attentive in the class and to the extent possible we should not cause any disturbance in the class so that if you are doing enough okay that is what i am expecting from you because you know i don't want to waste time in explaining you like you should not do this you should not do that etc and all. let's focus on the subject see we are all professionals hardly 2 years 3 years down the line you are going to become ca and you are actually like professional only you understood so just a semi qualified professional you are okay so therefore behave professionally and behave decently etc got it and three requests from my side and my team side that is number 1 so we you have been provided with a id card so please wear that id card just to know 
who is our student and who is not our student because someone also can come and sit now already from today onwards the summer peak summer is started so because ac is there someone who is going on roadside also can come and sit and sleep here correct or not that to election code has started everywhere uh, bottles is available so then they will just like that randomly come inside possible or not that's the reason why so please wear the id card and mention your name write your name in that id card just for the sake you know to know who the hell you are okay for the sake of the and then number 2 second request is that uh, we will be closing those doors only the first door will be open so once the class commences for the next 5 days so this first door alone will be open so in that first door alone you use for the restroom etc and all during the class but break time we will open all the three doors so you can use so that no others will not get any kind of disturbance for the sake of that okay to the extent possible so try to control of course sugar levels and all will not be in your hands and i don't mean to say that you should not go to restroom and all you can but use the first door so that it will not cause disturbance etc and uh, first door only no this door or that door second door ah okay second door and then uh, third request to all of you is that see it may be difficult you may have some other work and uh, you know you may not be able to focus fully etc you feel like uh, stressful etc then close your eyes for some time sitting here see ac is there correct and uh, sit here and relax don't leave because maybe 5 minutes or 10 minutes you will sleep but thereafter you will become attentive and remaining information you will be able to learn if you leave the class no gone for the day you will think that i will watch in the youtube and i will be learning but see it will be difficult because the moment you start watching in the youtube you will not get that satisfaction of sitting in the class and understanding in a flow it should go off rest of the time let's spend for other subjects because even though gst you are 100% thorough also it is not for 600 marks it is only for 50 marks you have to spend time for other subjects also that's why you devote this 5 days only for the sake of gst whole heartedly okay and uh, next thing is with respect to you know this uh, books whatever you have etc and all so you can buy the books which is available outside in the break times okay you can and please don't operate this acs through your mobile that's a humble request not from my side so this uh, place this place is not mine okay had it been mine it would have been nice only but it is not mine and it is someone's place where we are taking on rent and we are conducting the classes please don't operate any of these acs using your mobile if you feel like it is you know cold etc and all so you just inform our uh, admin team so they will change that settings and actually it is all controlled centrally only so i will ask them to maintain a normal temperature okay and when you feel like you know chill and all you sit in a different place that's okay okay yes so these are the minimum expectations from you and thereafter so let's focus on our subject yes yes so the the first i just wanted to share with you uh, as to if as there is a change in the question paper pattern so because of the marks there is a increase in the marks and all now so let's see what will happen so you know that it is paper 3 and in this paper 3 3b is indirect taxation gst that is for 50 marks so previously it was for 40 marks now they have made it 50 marks out of this 50 marks what should be your target you should get 45 out of 50 that should be your target okay ensure that you are getting 45 minimum out of 50 if you are getting extra superb but you should get minimum 45 out of 50 i'll tell you the reason for that i it does not mean i don't like other subjects and all i like other subjects as well i mean dt as well but uh, usually what i observe so from the last 10 years is that dt initially paper was easy from the last 5 6 attempts 
they are making DT paper very difficult because it is a core paper. So, there are two core papers for CA intermediate exams that is accounts that is advanced accounts now and DT. Do not expect these two papers and three audit also. These three papers are the core of CA, correct? These are main pillars of CA accounting, taxation, and then audit. So, these three papers they will play around, they will not make it easy for you, they will definitely make it difficult. Advanced accounts you feel it as easy because you spend lot of time on that, you spend lot of time in doing the problem, solving it, etc. That is why students will not feel it difficult in the exam, but the paper is standard only. So, if you ask a BCom guy to come and write advanced accounts, he will not know, he will not see able to read the question also, that is a different story. But you will be able to do because you would have seen all the depth in each and every question. So, for you advanced accounts will not be difficult because you spend lot of time. But wholeheartedly you tell that much time are you spending on taxation or audit, no, you are not doing it. So, that is the reason why, you know, taxation you will be facing lot of difficulty. Moreover, in taxation also, the question paper wise, if you see DT, we do not know from where they will be asking. Even when I have interacted with many final faculties who are taking for uh, direct taxes, they used to tell, sir, at intermediate level itself, like final standard, they are testing DT. See, uh, like you do not think uh, teachers telling this is like uh, when they are telling to me, it is true. If they are telling to you, maybe to create a fear in you, they might be telling this. But no, this is a frank. I spoke with every DT faculty. So, what I have heard and what I have seen personally is that DT portion is difficult. They are making the questions difficult. But IDT, they are not making the questions that much difficult. Thank God, really thank God, because they have made IDT as 50 marks. 40 marks means what we could aim is only 30 or 35. And remaining to complete the paper, we need to prepare for DT. But the advantage now is that for 50 marks, our focus should be is that 45 out of 50 we will be getting. Worst come 40 if you get also, you are going to clear. And from income tax, you get some 10 to 15 marks, you are in the exemption. You understood? So, that is why I am telling you, you focus more on this. But it does not mean that you do not have to read income tax. You read income tax as well. But you please bank on GST because GST paper, they will not make it difficult. That is what I am trying to convey. Interlevel GST paper will be easy compared to DT. So, due to that reason, okay. Then, so in this 45 out of 50 should be your target. So, paper 3B GST 50 marks. What they have done, this is based on the mock test recently conducted. So, from that only I am telling you. They have given MCQ for 15 marks, MCQ for 15 marks, mostly there are 2 marks MCQs only. So, hardly 1 only will be 1 mark MCQ, 7, I have seen 7 MCQs into 2 marks, 14 marks plus 1 mark MCQ they have given and in that also case study type MCQ they have given. Sir, what is case study type MCQ? Some of you might be knowing it. So, they will be giving a paragraph and after the paragraph, there will be some questions based on that paragraph, okay, which I have given in our book and this time, I wanted to cover those MCQs as well. You can see at the end, you can find. So, appendix uh, B, I think, appendix B, integrated case study MCQs, which is there in page 372. In that page 372, if you see, like this, they will be giving questions. So, easily for 12 marks, it will be like this only. So, like uh, 5 questions or 6 questions, they will be giving of 2 marks, but all these 6 MCQs will be based on this paragraph. So, they will give a paragraph like this. And below this paragraph, based on this paragraph only, there will be some MCQs, okay. 5 MCQs or 6 MCQs they will be giving. So, this is what I have observed in the first question and thereafter some 2 marks and 1 mark MCQ I have seen, but the weightage will be for 15 marks, okay. MCQ portion will be for 15 marks. Thereafter, descriptive. 
So, descriptive if you see this descriptive is for 35 marks. In this descriptive 35 marks, we are having question number 1, question number 1 which is a compulsory question, compulsory question and this compulsory question is for 15 marks. So, this question is for 15 marks, but what they have done in that is that they have divided it into two that is 10 marks question and 5 marks question and it is usual, usually they will be asking like this only and this 10 marks question will be based on computation of net GST payable. Okay. So, this 10 marks question is based on computation of net GST payable. Sir, what is this computation of net GST payable? There will be inward supply details and outward supply details that will be given in the question. So, few purchase transactions, few sales transactions they will give. Based on this, we need to arrive at the net GST payable that is gross GST payable. So, outward supplies means what? Sales. On sales, I have to pay some tax. Again, on some purchases, I have already paid the tax. So, whatever tax I paid on purchases is known as input tax credit. Whatever tax that I need to pay on sales is known as my output tax. Output tax minus input tax is the net GST payable. So, we need to know what are the outward supplies. What is that? Is it taxable? Is it exempted? First of all, is the transaction a supply or not? Like that we need to analyze all those things. Then again input tax, whether input tax credit is available or not available on those invert supplies, that also we need to ascertain and then we will get this net GST payable. So, basically in this computation of net GST payable, what we do is output tax minus input tax, output tax minus input tax. So, output tax means what? Output tax means what? Tax on outward supplies. Input tax means what? Tax on inward supplies. So, this is what we will be doing to arrive at the net GST payable. This is the first question. Now, what are the chapters that we need to learn to answer this first question that is a 10 marks question? So, there are few chapters. It is not based on one chapter alone. There are like 3, 4 chapters merging that only they will be giving a question. So, first question. So, you should be thorough with first exemptions, exemptions, exemptions chapter you should be thorough. Without this exemptions chapter, this first question you cannot answer. And then RCM, RCM means what? Reverse charge mechanism. What is reverse charge mechanism? Generally, who will be having liability to pay GST to government, supplier or recipient? supplier. But in case of RCM, the liability to pay GST to government is on the recipient. Okay. So, that is about RCM, reverse charge mechanism. But sir, always the burden is on recipient only now sir. Correct. I am not talking about burden. I am talking about liability to pay. For example, I am supplier. You are my recipient. If I pay GST to government, I have the liability to pay GST to government, in turn I will recover it from you. What is the name of this charge? Forward charge or reverse charge? Forward charge. Forward charge. Whereas, I am the supplier, you are the recipient, you are only required to pay GST to government. What is the name of this charge? Reverse charge. Okay. So, that reverse charge mechanism you should know because balancing figure is forward charge. Wherever RCM, that alone we will be learning. Remaining case and all will be FCM. So, that you should know. And the next aspect is input tax credit. Definitely in the first question, they will be testing on input tax credit. And now, because they have added place of supply, so that place of supply also they will be testing. I will tell you why. Because the moment if you see the first question, previously and all, in the question itself they used to give whether it is a intrastate supply or interstate supply. Now, place of supply chapter they have added, which means that from the transaction, you need to know what is the place of supply. And if location of supplier and place of supply is in the same state or same union territory, what is the nature of that supply? 
intrastate supply, then you should appropriately put it under CGST, SGST or IGST column. Okay. Column wise, we are required to do the first equation, computation of net GST payable. The template will be like particulars, CGST, SGST, IGST, like that in appropriate places we need to enter for that the place of supply chapter is useful. And I have given a separate appendix for the purpose of this consolidated questions. So, around some 19 questions I have seen that is appendix A. 19 questions I have given. So, these 19 questions if you solve that will be sufficient to tackle this first question. Like how the first question will come. All these are like 10 marks questions only. So, this you should focus. Okay. So, this also we will try to do in the class. Not all questions at least to the extent possible major questions. So, remaining questions you can take for practice also. Okay. Then that is about the first 10 marks question. Then in the compulsory question 5 marks. So, this 5 marks question will be based on value of supply. See, they have given value of supply, but they can also ask on composition scheme as well. Composition scheme, either value of supply or composition scheme or again on exemptions also they can ask, but it is a 5 marks question. Okay. Then, Thereafter, we have question number, question number 2 to question number 4. So, how many questions? 3. So, we need to write any 2 out of 3. Any 2 out of 3 and each question carries 10 marks that will be 20 marks. So, already 15 marks MCQ are thereafter 15 marks compulsory question descriptive 30 and out of 3 questions you need to write 2 questions 10 marks each so 20 marks. So, this is how you will be getting your 50 marks from you know this and in this 10 marks question also what I have observed is that they have not given one question for 10 marks. We are having either 6 marks or 4 marks or 5 marks type of questions only. Like there is no one question for 10 marks. So, in the entire paper what I have observed is that only the first question they have given for 10 marks. That is only a big question. Remaining and all will be 4 marks, 5 marks or 6 marks type questions only. Okay. So, this is about the type of you know paper that you can expect. This is based on our uh, MTP mock test paper which they have given. Okay. Now, so as you know as to which and all areas you need to focus. So, which areas you need to focus more? These areas, exemptions, RCM, ITC, place of supply, value of supply and composition scheme. These are like very, very, very important chapters. It does not mean other chapters are not important. That is less important. This is more important. Okay. Everything is important because this is the first attempt. Na? May 24 is the first attempt question paper. The risk with first attempt question paper is that they can ask questions from anywhere. We do not know. There is no precedence. So, due to that reason, do not take for granted. 100 percent we should co cover. But in that, this is more important, remaining or less important like that. Okay. Then, let us start with the first chapter and this also based on the request of many students. So, many students ask me, sir, do not start from middle, sir, like input tax credit and all. So, you start from the beginning itself because we forgot everything what we have learned. Of course, it will happen because from the exam time you have returned to now and even from the time you attended classes to now, lot of things would have uh, gone, correct or not. Many movies and all also have come. So, you stopped watching even Tamil movies, you went for Kerala movies also. So, you know, <laughs> therefore, therefore you know, uh, possible, you will forget. That is why I am taking from the scratch as if you know you are attending for the first time. Okay. See this segment 1 introduction to GST. In this introduction to GST, the type of questions that you will be getting, you may get will be MCQs as well as you know this uh, descriptive questions, theory type questions only. Okay. So, let us quickly look into it. So, what is the tax that we are talking about in indirect taxes? GST. What is the difference between direct and indirect taxes? Basically, direct tax. So, the burden to pay tax 
will be on one person, the liability to pay as well as burden to pay both will be on the same person. But in case of indirect tax, what will happen? Liability is on one person and the burden can be shifted to the other person. So that is the basic difference, correct or not? So see this tax burden. So it is borne by the person himself. The person who is paying will have the liability as well as burden. Whereas in case of indirect tax, it is shifted to another person. And what is the meaning of progressive and regressive in nature means higher the income, more income tax is payable. But irrespective of your level of income, you will pay the same tax that is known as indirect tax. So which is progressive, which is regressive? Direct tax is progressive, indirect tax is regressive in nature. So that is the second difference you need to keep in mind. And then, so the person who is paying the tax to government bears the incidence of tax. The person who is paying the tax collects the same from the ultimate consumer. Okay. So that already we have seen in the tax burden point itself. And uh, examples for direct tax, we have only income tax in direct tax. Whereas in case of indirect taxes, what are the major indirect taxes that we have? GST, customs, duty and we have other indirect taxes as well but these are major. Okay. Now, what is the full form of GST, goods and services tax? This goods and services tax got implemented in India with effect from which date? 1st July 2017 is the effective date of implementation of GST in India. And to implement GST into India, what has happened? So, whether GST is levied by central government or state government or both central government and state government, both central government and state government, which means what type of GST do we have? Single GST or dual GST? Dual GST. Dual GST means what? Both central government as well as state government parallelly levy GST on the common tax base, which means CG also will levy, SG also will levy, correct or not? So, due to that reason, so there was a requirement of constitution amendment. Why? Because before this amendment in constitution, in the constitution, seventh schedule to the constitution, what is the seventh schedule to the constitution? Power to levy was given to union list, state list and concurrent list. Union list means what? The power to levy will be with the central government. State list means what? The power to levy is with state government. Concurrent list means what? The power to levy is with both central government and state government. Now, they have, have to amend the constitution because just now you said GST is levied by whom? Both CG and SG. Due to that reason, due to that reason, they need to amend the constitution. So, when the constitution amendment has happened for bringing in GST, which year? 2014 or 2016 or 2017? 2016, again in MCQ they can be testing it. So, GST law is implemented from 1st July 2017, underline that, 1st July 2017, but constitution amendment has happened in 2016, constitution amendment has happened in 2016. And what is this 2014 then bill? Bill got presented in 2014, that you do not have to remember. Just remember two years, 2016 constitution amendment has taken place and 2017 1st July is the effective date of implementation of GST, clear? And then next whether this GST concept is applicable across the country or except the state of Jammu and Kashmir to the remaining part of the country, across the country underline including Jammu and Kashmir. Across the country, it will be applicable. It's not like some acts we would have studied, where in payment of gratuity or bonus act like that, this, are, this law applicable to entire country except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Like that, we don't have a GST. GST is applicable to entire Jammu and Kashmir. Then next, how GST is formed? Is GST a new tax or is it merger of old taxes? Merger of old taxes. What are those old taxes which they have merged in order to bring GST? In the past, past means which period I am talking about? 2017, before 2017, 1st July 2017, central government used to levy four indirect taxes. What, are, what were those four indirect taxes? Central excise duty, customs duty, 
service tax and central sales tax in that except customs duty all other three got subsumed into gst so it is the first point you need to remember all indirect taxes levied by central government in the past except customs duty got subsumed into gst what were they central excise duty service tax and central sales tax so these three got subsumed into gst that's what i have given as the first point sir what about customs duty sir customs duty not got subsumed into gst but in customs duty there used to be something called as additional customs duties cvd and sad cvd refers to what countervailing duty sad refers to what special additional duty what is the full form of cvd countervailing duty sad is what special additional duty these were levied under customs that also got subsumed into gst so cvd and sad also got subsumed into gst that's the first point you read the first point all indirect taxes levied by central government levied means what imposed okay by central government except what customs duty got subsumed into gst and even cvd and sad also got subsumed into gst then indirect taxes levied by state government what are the indirect taxes levied by the state government not all only six indirect taxes levied by state government got subsumed into gst what were those six come on try what are those six value added tax super then purchase tax purchase tax only we generally call as octroi okay then next lottery and betting tax very good lottery and betting tax three more entertainment tax awesome then two more luxury tax a uh, advertisement tax these are the six indirect taxes levied by state government in the past that got subsumed into gst that is value added tax purchase tax lottery and betting tax entertainment tax luxury tax and advertisement tax remember other indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into gst can you tell me few examples of indirect taxes levied by state government other indirect taxes not subsumed in gst professional tax very good local body tax so municipal taxes so even local authority taxes not got subsumed into gst that's why even today there is entertainment tax levied in cinema theater so whenever we go to movies so there will be entertainment tax but this entertainment tax is levied by local authority so local authority levies also not got subsumed so see the second point and third point indirect taxes levied by state government what are those six indirect taxes vat purchase tax lottery and betting tax then entertainment tax luxury tax and advertisement tax got subsumed into gst however other indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into gst what about indirect taxes levied by local authority got subsumed or not got subsumed not got subsumed into gst so that is this example entertainment tax professional tax even something called as local body tax and then municipal tax property tax so these are all some examples okay then therefore at present what are the two major indirect taxes gst and customs and what is the type of model that we are following in india for levy of gst single gst model or dual gst model dual gst model dual gst model means what both central government and state government parallelly levy gst on the same amount for example when you go to a restaurant or when you go to a cinema theater so what you will be observing cgst sgst restaurant cgst 2.5% sgst 2.5% cinema theater cgst 14% sgst 14% like that we will be seeing so that is an example of dual gst model and india adopted this model from where brazil and canada underline that brazil and canada so india has adopted this dual gst model from there why india has followed dual gst model simple reason state government also wanted the revenue central government only if they have revenue what will happen to the state governments every time like income tax completely goes to then state government what it will do it will ask for their share correct and sometimes they will get sometimes they will not get and that's a political issue same way 
So GST also if it happens, then the states will not have any revenue in their hand. That's why in India we have so dual GST model mainly to support the fiscal federalism. Sir, what is this fiscal federalism? So both center as well as state has powers to do certain activities. They are having responsibilities. For example, if the road is not proper, so will you question central government or state government? You have to question state government only unless otherwise it is a metro issue. Unless otherwise it is a metro rail issue, normal roads and all, street roads and all not proper, we need to question whom? Central government or state government? State government because it is the duty of the state government to maintain the roads of the streets and all properly. So therefore, they have some responsibility. With every responsibility, there will be money also required, correct? So that is called as fiscal federalism. So to support that fiscal federalism, they create a dual GST model. So these are the key words that you need to write. Whenever you come across a question, dual GST model, ensure that you are referring to Brazil and Canada, fiscal federalism, so that you know every valuer will not read the answer sheet fully. Okay. And you know what surprisingly AI tools are there for evaluation, really are AI tools are there. Now every evaluation is online, okay, this also I got shocked. So wherein uh, one of uh, person, one of the person whom I know, I asked him, how are you doing the evaluation etc and all, this even ICI don't know. So they will give a key, answer key, who will give, ICI will give answer key. This answer key they will scan. So AI tool will scan the answer key. And your answer sheet also, this will try to read. Handwritten and all now AI starts recognizing, okay. So they will read. If this keywords and all is there, so they will be checking that, ah, these keywords are there, okay, give marks. That's where the mistake it so happens that some of the answers they are not even evaluating. Because handwriting they cannot understand. AI also cannot understand your handwriting means, how great you are, you know, got it. So, therefore, ensure that you are improving your handwriting. Handwriting is very, very important. Sir, digital evaluation they are doing. Previously, they used to take a print and they used to correct, but no print and all now. So, to save the earth planet, so they are doing everything online only. So, if you see your evaluated answer sheets, so RTI copy you would have got na, on the left side, circles will be there. 0, 0, 0 like that, that's not 0 marks, a circle will be there, in that they will give marks 0 0.5, 1 0.5, like that they would have given marks, have you observed that? Sometimes they will put a tick and one mark also they would not have given. So sometimes answer will be correct, they will put into, okay. So already some sadists are correcting the paper. Definitely they will not have normal death, peaceful death and all they will not be having. So they will suffer and then only they will die and even if they die somehow also they are in hell you know based on this Garuda Puranam so oil boiling and frying and all will happen for them you know. <laughs> so because they are playing with the life of the students for every six months here so due to that reason you should be careful in ensuring that all these points are not missed these keywords and all when you prepare also highlight that keywords and ensure that those keywords are being present in the answer sheet, okay. Automatically you will be getting the marks. Then next, types of GST, what are the various types of GSTs that we have? CGST, SGST, IGST, UTGST, one more, compensation says, very good. And what is the full form of CGST? Central Goods and Services Tax, SGST? State Goods and Services Tax, UTGST, Union Territory Goods and Services Tax, IGST, Integrated Goods and Services Tax and Compensation says, super, yeah? CGST levied by name itself, it is there, Central, so Central Government, SGST levied by name itself, State Government, UTGST levied by, ah, not Union Territory, it is Central Government. It is not union territory because union territory do not have a separate government. But sir, there are some union territories which are having separate government sir. What are they? Pondicherry, Delhi, Jammu and Kashmir. Only these three union territories are treated like state. 
What are the other union territories? Ladakh, uh, Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep now became so popular uh, because of our grandfather went there and uh, he visited that place, it became so popular. Okay. And uh, next, uh, Daman, Diu, Dadra, Nagar Haveli, then Chandigarh. Okay, Goa is not a union territory, that is a state and these five, okay, so wherever beach is there that is union territory like that, do not assume. So, only these five places will be called as union territories with state legislature or without state legislature or without state legislature. Once again, what are the five union territories without state legislature? Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep, Ladakh. Daman, Diu, Dadra, Nagar Haveli and then Chandigarh. Then three union territories, treat it like state only. Just namesake union territories, Pondicherry, Delhi, Jammu and Kashmir. So, therefore, UTGST is levied by central government because those five union territories are under whose control? Central government's control. So, therefore, central government will levy. IGST who will levy? Central government only. And GST compensation says who will levy central government. So, which means all taxes, that is all types of GST levied by central government. Only one is levied by state government. What is that? Yes, GST. You remember this easily. And now, in which case, which GST will be applicable? So, intra-state versus interstate supply we need to know. What is supply, sir? That is the next chapter, fully we will be discussing there. But supply is the taxable event under GST. So, whenever there is an activity called as supply, so that supply we need to check whether it is intrastate or interstate. Activity means I am taking class, this is one activity. Someone is selling a product, that is one activity, like that. So, activity or a transaction, in our daily life there are a lot of activities and transactions. If that activity becomes supply and then you need to check whether it is intrastate supply or interstate supply. So, what is a taxable event under GST? Supply. Supply of goods or service or both. The supply is divided into two, intrastate and interstate. And what are the two factors that determine whether it is an intrastate supply or interstate supply? Location of supplier and place of supply. Location of supplier means if they are registered and providing services from their place, registered place, then that registered place is the location of supplier. Suppose, if they are not providing service from their registered place, but they are providing service from a fixed establishment elsewhere, that fixed establishment elsewhere will be the location of supplier. Suppose, if they are providing services partly from a fixed establishment elsewhere and partly from their place of business, registered place of business, that location which is mostly concerned for that service will be taken. Example, audit you take. In case of audit, the CA will be traveling to the client's place in some other state and he will do audit there. Again, he will come back his, to his office and do the finalization work, correct or not. And audit report where he will prepare in his office only. In client's place, he will not prepare the audit report, but he will travel to the client's place for the purpose of doing physical verification or vouching, etc. And all he will be going over there. Now, this service partly from his registered place and partly from the fixed establishment elsewhere, correct or not? Now, you tell me what will be taken as the location of supplier? His office or uh, client's place. Uh, his office because in auditing you would have studied one point that while signing the audit report you will mention the place as the place where you are signing usually where they will sign in their office so that place is only called as the service of location of supplier so that is this place which is most directly concerned to that service you understood or not then next suppose if I have a registered place of business in Karnataka, but I am coming to Tamil Nadu 
to take the classes like this in this place. Is this my registered place? No, but I am taking class here. Then what will be taken as the location of supplier? This fixed establishment is there, na? This will be taken as the location of supplier. Are you getting this? So three points you need to remember. Anyhow, in place of supply chapter, we will come across this again. So what will be taken as a location of supplier number one? If they are providing services from the registered place of business, such registered place of business. If they are providing services from a fixed establishment elsewhere, that fixed establishment. Partly from the registered place and partly from the fixed establishment elsewhere, that place which is more relevant, you remember this way, which is more relevant for that service, you understood? Next, place of supply. Place of supply, that is the second factor. What are the two factors which is required to determine whether it is an intrastate or interstate? Location of supplier and place of supply. The moment you read the question also, your eye should catch these two points. What is the location of supplier? What is the place of supply? Then only we will know whether it is an intrastate supply or interstate supply. You got it? So now, place of supply is a technical factor that will be determined based on the provisions. We have a chapter, a dedicated chapter on place of supply. There we will learn for what transaction, what is the place of supply. Sometimes location of recipient will be place of supply. Sometimes location of immobile property will be place of supply. Sometimes location where services are performed will be place of supply. It will change. For one one transaction, we have different place of supplies and all. So based on that, we will determine now. If the location of supplier also Tamil Nadu, place of supply also Tamil Nadu, what is the nature of supply? Intra or inter, intra state supply. If the location of supplier in Tamil Nadu, place of supply in Karnataka, inter state supply. So from this you tell me what is the definition of intra state? If location of supplier and place of supply is in the same state or same union territory, then it will be known as intrastate ah, same way interstate come on you can see this interstate location of supplier and place of supply is in two different states or two different union territories or a state and a union territory then it will be known as interstate for example location of supplier andaman and nicobar place of supply tamil nadu what is the nature of supply Interstate, state and a union territory. Location of supplier Andaman and place of supply Lakshadweep. So, what will be the nature of supply? Interstate only. One union territory to another union territory or one state to another state or a state and a union territory. Then it will be interstate supply. What is the type of GST that is applicable in case of interstate? IGST. Remember easily, Pa. I for interstate, I for IGST. So, wherever interstate comes, what is the type of GST that will be applicable? IGST. Suppose if it is intrastate, sir, if it is intrastate, within the state means CGST, SGST, within the union territory means CGST plus UTGST. So, CGST, SGST, UTGST, these three will come in which case? Intrastate, intrastate. IGST will come in which case? interstate okay there is one point that is given for igst now if you take intrastate cgst sgst cgst will go to sgst will go to so dual gst model is there correct or not then cgst plus utgst cgst will go to utgst will go to Central government. Sir, both will go to central government only now. Sir, why we have separately like this? Because they want to understand how much union territories are contributing for the GST revenue. See, everything should be accounted now. Now, salaries also, salaries, wages, both are same. But why we maintain separately wages and salaries? Because wages is related to the production, whereas salaries is related to the administrative. Correct or not? So we create a demarcation. Na. Everything is expenditure only. But why when you do final accounts, this many expenditures are there? Because we segregate it like that. How much revenue we are getting from union territories? So we need to know. That's why we are putting in a separate head called as UTGST. Okay. Then IGST is collected by whom? Central government. 
can it retain completely? No, they should not retain completely. They should share 50 percent with the consuming state based on place of supply. That is the importance of place of supply. So, place of supply is not only important for determining whether it is intrastate or interstate, but also to give 50 percent of revenue to the consuming state. So, place of supply is relevant. So, 50 percent shared with consuming state based on place of supply. Now, for example, so we have certain situations, you need to answer what is the nature of supply and what will be the revenue sharing. Okay. Now, look into the screen here. Hope it is visible to all of you. If not, you can check your book also. Location of supplier and place of supply, Tamil Nadu. What is the nature of supply? Intrastate. Type of GST? CGST and SGST. CGST will go to? SGST will go to? State Government of Tamil Nadu. So, CGST will go to Central Government and SGST will go to State Government of Tamil Nadu. Then, second one, location of supplier Tamil Nadu, place of supply Karnataka, nature of supply interstate, type of GST, IGST, fully it will go to Central Government? No, 50 percent will be given to Tamil Nadu or Karnataka? Karnataka. So, what is consuming state here? Place of supply. Based on place of supply, you need to see the consuming state. Then next third one. Location of supplier, Jammu and Kashmir and place of supply, Ladakh. What is the nature of supply? Huh? Interstate supply. And what is the type of GST? IGST. So, will it be completely retained by central government or 50 percent given to consuming state? I did not hear completely retained by central government. Why like that sir? Because Ladakh is under whose control? Central government means entire revenue will go to central government. You understood or not? Sir, then dual GST model? No, no dual GST model here. Reason being there is no state involved. It is union territory which is under the control of central government. So, completely it will go to central government. Then next. Location of supplier Ladakh and place of supply Jammu and Kashmir. Nature of supply? Interstate. Sir, Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir, same state only now, sir. First of all, Jammu and Kashmir is not a state. They have converted it into union territory. In that, 50 percent, Jammu and Kashmir, they called it as union territory with state legislature. And other is called as union territory without state legislature, which will be under the control of central government. The concept of union territories are created mainly for the, mainly like uh, in a state, say the issue is so severe that they are not able to control the law and order and state government is not working properly and all. So, then automatically central government can make that as a union territory. That power is there for the central government. Okay. So, Tamil Nadu also one day it will become like that. So, therefore, you know, but hopefully it should not happen. Even if it happens also, our uh, issue is not there. One amendment will come and one more amendment we will be learning for exam. But there won't be any change. Don't think our uh, life and all will become superb, etc. and all. Nothing of that, sir. Status quo, whatever we are like that, like that only it will be happening. But this is a control which they created in the constitution. Okay. So, that is where Jammu and Kashmir, there were lot of political unrest because of the Pakistan issue, China issue, etc. and all. That is why central government wanted to take control. They converted into union territories. They divided into two union territories, union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, union territory of Ladakh. So, between Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, when it is having intra or inter? Inter. So, see there, Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir, inter. What is the type of GST? IGST. In that IGST, 50 percent will go to Jammu and Kashmir. Why? Because Jammu and Kashmir is treated like a state. So, due to that reason, 50 percent will go to that. 100 percent will not be retained by central government. Suppose, location of supplier Ladakh, place of supply Ladakh, nature of supply, intrastate, type of GST, CGST and UTGST, because Ladakh is called as Union territory without state legislature. Then, location of supplier Jammu and Kashmir, place of supply also Jammu and Kashmir, nature of supply, intrastate. So, type of GST, CGST and UTGST or SGST? 
yes gst because jammu and kashmir is a state with that is union territory with state legislature or without state legislature with state legislature i told you you treat it like a state then location of supplier tamil nadu place of supply puducherry type of supply interstate supply correct and what is the type of gst that is involved in that case type of gst igst in that igst 50% will go to puducherry why puducherry should be treated like a state so that's why 50% will go you got the clarity here so i have given it over there then there is something called as gst compensation sir so what are the four uh, we have seen cgst sgst utgst igst now we are moving on to compensation sir the fifth one what is the purpose of this compensation sir initially central government has given assurance to the state governments the states were worried like because of gst implementation so their revenue will get affected so already income tax states are not getting properly the income tax share for example from tamil nadu if you give 100 rupees as income tax how much do you expect as a budget allocation to tamil nadu from central government huh somewhere like out of 100 rupees close to some 15 to 20 rupees only they are getting appa 80 rupees sir what happened to this 80 rupees uh, that 80 rupees will go to bihar will go to you know uttar pradesh or west bengal etc and all it will be going why sir they will not pay no they will not pay they will not pay so economically weak people even if they have money also they are poor people okay they will not pay and uh, when vadakans are not paying then from thekans only <laughs> they have to take and uh, what to do so actually if not south india you know the vehicle will not move you understood we should be feeling proud about that okay so therefore we are spending lot of money in the form of income tax which is used for the revenue for others already gone <laughs> then in gst also we will not get anything that's where states were afraid for the purpose of implementation of gst then central government gave them assurance don't worry if there is any loss of revenue because of gst implementation already you are having some revenue indirect tax revenue if there is any loss on account of implementation of gst we will contribute that loss we will compensate that loss so to compensate that loss central government has given assurance but central government is not paying out of their pocket what they are doing they created a new tax for that what is the name of that new tax gst compensation says okay sir government central government has given promise then they have to pay out of their pocket na but they are not paying out of their pocket so they are taking it from again people and on what supply sir notified goods and services on some notified goods and services what are those notified goods and services you don't have to remember the list for exam for example motor vehicles then garments and aerated beverages like this sodas and all are there na pepsi coke etc and all on these aerated beverages there is gst compensation says and in this gst compensation says which is collected by levied and collected by cgi sgi cg central government and used for what purpose compensating the states on account of implementation of gst any loss of revenue to the states it will be paid out of that sir up to when they will compensate this so 31st march 2026 that you underline so that can be asked in mcq up to 31st march 2026 sir thereafter will it be levied sir gst compensation says yes possible because see the second point it shall be levied for a period of 5 years from the date of implementation of gst what is the date of implementation of gst first july 2017 5 years you count from there 18 19 20 21 22 23 uh, 22 correct but we are in 24 so they are levying now because they extended it sir whether the power to get extended is there read and can be extended for a further period as decided by the gst council so they decided and they extended 
So then there is no guarantee that they will not extend. So again they will decide and they will extend it for a further period also. You understood. Moreover, 2026 is not election time also where central government election will come in 2026. It is uh, now only not 2024. So 2026 they do not have any restriction. If it is election means before election they will not do anything to please the people etc and all. So but 2026 no problem for them happily they can extend unless otherwise our Vijayana becomes PM. You understood. So the, the, therefore he said now he is coming for 2026. My vote is for him. Now also I am not putting vote, okay. So this 19th May some elections is there. So this uh, I will put vote for Nota. I will wait for my Anna only to come into election. So then only I will cast my vote, okay. So remember the year. When he is coming into election? 2026. Until that point of time GST compensation says they can levy, okay. Then next. Look into the next one. Legislative framework. So here already we discussed what are the various union territories and constitution 122nd amendment bill 2014 and amendment act 2016. How many CGST acts do we have? One because CGST levied by central government na. So one CGST act and SGST levied by state government. So how many SGSTs? 31. How sir? 28 states, uh, 3 union territories with state legislature na. So, 28 plus 3 union territories with state legislature. So, 31 SGST acts. And how many UTGST acts? UTGST levied by central government. So, 1 UTGST act. Then next one, IGST levied by central government. So, 1 IGST act. Then next, uh, look into this. Position of goods under GST in comparison to earlier indirect tax system. From this discussion you tell me what are the goods on which there is no GST? Uh, on Sarak, <laughs> so I saw one, one uh, Instagram video wherein one idiot was blabbering. So what is GST? So in Tamil Sarak Matrum Sevai Vari. On Sarakku no GST like that and all. But nice it was to remember, okay. So yes, really on alcohol there is no GST. And what is the other product on which there is no GST? Petroleum products. What are the petroleum products on which there is no GST? Crude oil, total 5. Crude oil, petrol, diesel, aviation, turbine, fuel and natural gas. On this 5, there is no GST petroleum products, alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Why sir? Which means there is no tax at all on this. No, no, there is. Only thing GST is not there, but old indirect taxes will continue to be levied. Okay. GST alone is not there. In that also, alcohol will come into the ambit of GST in future. No, it will never come into the ambit of GST. Completely it will be levied by state government only. But sir, alcoholic liquor for human consumption, permanently it will not come under GST, but it will be levied by state government is what you are telling. So state excise duty on manufacture, okay, state government will take. CST levied by central government, na sir, how it will go to state government? Remember, CST even though levied by central government, what is the full form of CST? Central sales tax, even though levied by central government, but collected and retained by state governments. So, you please write down somewhere over there, CST even though levied by central government, CST even though levied by central government, even though levied by CG, but collected and retained by SG, even though levied by central government, but it is collected and retained by state government. So therefore, on alcohol, entire revenue will go to state government only, okay. So one drop also, they will not share with center, fully it will go to state only. Then what about petroleum products are no GST, but it will be temporary. 
when it will come into the ambit of GST as and when decided by the GST council. I am telling this for last 5 years, but they are also not deciding here. So, temporary means 1 year, 2 years, 5 years over here, still it did not come. So, it is excluded and until that point of time, what are the indirect taxes that will be there? Central excise duty levied by central government and then CST and what? The revenue will go to state government and then tobacco on tobacco products. What is the speciality of this? Sir, GST is there, even old indirect taxes is also there. What is that old indirect tax which is there on tobacco on tobacco products? Central excise duty, okay. But CST and VAT is not there. Again, MCQ they will test this. CST and VAT is not there on tobacco on tobacco products. On other goods, there is GST and old indirect taxes not applicable. From this table, you tell me what are non taxable supplies. Non taxable supplies means what? There is no levy. There is no levy of GST. What are the non taxable supplies? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum products. What about kerosene oil? GST is there or not? Yes, yes because kerosene oil is not in the petroleum products. Correct. Then what about LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, which we use at our home? GST applicable or not applicable? Applicable. What about CNG, natural gas used for filling the fuel? Lot of vehicles will operate on CNG, na? Ah, GST is there or not there? No GST. Autos and all will run on gas and uh, four wheelers and all, cars and all. They will be filling gas, not uh, torrent gas like that, lot of uh, like petrol bunk you would have seen, gas stations. So, these are all natural gas. On that there is no GST. But LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, gas cylinders which we use at home, there is GST on that. Then what about engine oil and lubricating oil? GST is there. On petrol, crude oil, petrol, diesel. That too which diesel? High speed diesel. Very good. On high speed diesel alone, there is no GST, but light diesel there is GST? Yes. So, you just write down somewhere over there, high speed diesel, high speed diesel, no GST, but light diesel, light diesel, there is GST. So, what are the five petroleum products come again? Crude oil, petrol, which diesel? High speed diesel, then aviation turbine fuel. Where we use aviation turbine fuel for helicopters, flights, etc. And finally, natural gas. Then, what about uh, alcohol? Any kind of alcohol, beer, rum, whiskey, brandy, gin, everything there will be, you know, like alcohol only. But remember, there is a medicinal preparation containing alcohol on the GST applicable or not applicable, applicable example cough syrup will contain alcohol and certain uh, medicines okay during surgery they will be giving that also will contain alcohol and uh, post pregnancy painkillers will be given that also will contain the alcohol element. Uh, so, these medicinal preparations containing alcohol will it be called as alcoholic liquor for human consumption? No. So, on that GST will be applicable, okay. That also somewhere you can write there. Medicinal preparations containing alcohol, medicinal preparations, medicinal preparations containing alcohol, containing alcohol hyphen GST applicable, GST applicable. Okay. And uh, whatever this uh, extra notes I am writing now like this, this notes I will make available to you, do not worry. So, because suppose if you are not able to make note of this extra things which I am writing here, so that I will share as a you know PDF. So, in the telegram group, my telegram group, you can have access. Day wise I will be sharing that, do not worry about that even these lectures and all is getting recorded and once we record it, we edit it and we upload after the batch gets over, okay. So, we are not uploading, it is not live, we are not doing it live and we are not doing it like uh, day to day and all, 
So once we complete the patch, thereafter we will edit and upload it. So in our uh, YouTube channel, there also I will give you like below there itself. If in Telegram group also I will be sharing this. But these points which I am writing extra, you write in the book itself and uh, you please uh, in the afternoon lunch break buy one sticky note. Okay, sticky note. So extra points and all because if space is not there, you write in the sticky note and you paste so that while reading the book it will be easy. You do not have to refer your notes etc. and all. Okay, then. Now we are moving on to input tax credit in GST, ITC. So what is input tax credit? What is input tax credit? I did not ask what is ITC because if I ask ITC, you will tell input tax credit. What is input tax credit? ITC. <laughs> tax paid on invert supplies. Once again, what is input tax credit? Tax paid on invert supply. Once again, input tax credit, tax paid on invert supplies. What is invert supplies means? Purchases. On our purchases, whatever GST we paid, that is called as input tax credit. What we can do with that input tax credit? Is it real money or virtual money? Virtual money, it is not real money, we are not getting it real. So it is like a virtual money, it is there. What you can do with that? Set off. Set off against what? On outward supply you have to pay some GST, na? there you can do the set off. Is it clear or not? So what is input tax credit? Tax paid on invert supply and you can recognize this as a virtual money. So therefore, it is a asset. Asset shows what balance? Debit balance. So what is the journal entry for input tax credit? You are purchasing something. You have got some input tax credit. For example, you are purchasing for 1 lakh. 12,000 is the input tax credit. That is GST paid on purchase is 12,000. What is the journal entry for this? Purchases account debit 1 lakh. Input tax credit account debit 12,000. To bank 1 lakh 12,000 or to supplier or creditor 1 lakh 12,000. Now you created asset. What is this asset name? Input tax credit. It shows what balance? Debit balance. Huh? This is on one side part. Then whenever you make sales, say sales is 1 lakh 50 and GST is 18,000 rupees. What is the entry for this sales? Debtor account debit. So 1 lakh 68,000. Debtor or bank. Okay to 1,68,000 to sales. How much is to sales? 1,50,000. To GST payable, how much is the GST payable? 18,000. So GST payable is showing what balance? Credit balance. Liability na? So liability shows a credit balance. On the other hand, asset shows a debit balance. Now, this input tax credit, how much you have? 12,000. What is the GST liability you have? 18,000. Now, you will cancel the liability. So, you will make a debit. Okay. And you will use the asset for setting off this liability. So, GST payable account debit, 18,000. Two input tax credit account debit, uh, two input tax credit account, 12,000. So, remaining difference is what? 6,000 that you will pay by cash. This only I said as net GST payable. What is the output tax in our example? 18,000. What is the input tax in our example? 12,000. So 18,000 minus 12,000 will be 6,000. So that is an GST payable. You understood or not? So that's what in English I said. Input tax means tax paid on invert supplies, which can be taken as credit. So credit. Why credit? Because you are not getting literally money. You create an asset. So it can be taken as credit and can be adjusted against the tax payable on outward supplies. You understood? What is the name of this tax? GST. So now restructure the definition once again. Come on, repeat everyone. GST paid on invert supplies. Huh? Invert supply. Supply can be goods or supply can be services. So GST paid on invert supplies can be availed as ITC. Taking credit is known as availed as ITC. Okay. What is the name of availed as ITC? Taking credit. But don't write in exam, taken credit, taking credit, etc. That is a normal word. What is the legal word that is used? Availed as ITC. Ah, come on. GST paid on invert supplies, availed as ITC and 
यूटिलाइज फॉर वॉट पर्पज पेमेंट ऑफ जी एस टी ऑन आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज यूटिलाइज मीन वॉट सेट ऑफ वट इज अदर नेम फॉर यूटिलाइज सेट ऑफ विथ लायबिलिटी ओके सो वन सेकेंड लास्ट टाइम जी एस टी पेड ऑन इनवर्ड सप्लाईज कैन बी अवेल्ड एस इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट एंड यूटिलाइज फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ जी एस टी ऑन आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज अंडरस्टूड सो दट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ Input tax credit GST paid on inward supplies can be availed as ITC and utilized for payment of GST on outward supplies. There are two words here: availment of ITC, utilization of ITC. Availment of ITC means what? Taking credit. Where we will take credit? In our ledger. But that ledger we will not maintain. GST portal will maintain on behalf of us. Called as electronic credit ledger. You understood. So input tax we will create for our books, but that is of no use. So GST portal will maintain one ledger for us. There it should come. You can pass an entry, any entry you can pass. Just like that, you can write one entry in your books, but that is of no use. It should come in the electronic credit ledger, which is maintained by GST network or GST portal. how it will come in the electronic credit ledger you need to put that amount in one return what is that return gstr 3b gstr 3b is a return which is filed by every registered person and that contains the details of output tax and input tax in that gstr 3b there is one table number 4 in the table number 4 we will mention how much is our purchases how much is a gst paid on purchases that is known as availment of itc you got it so what is the meaning of availment of itc taking itc in which place we take itc through gstr 3b then utilization of itc means what set off adjustment with the liability in which return we will do the adjustment same gstr 3b then sir on import are we required to pay gst on import of goods are we required to pay gst yes i told you on import of goods we need to pay customs duty previously two additional customs duties were there called as cbd and scd that got subsumed into gst then on import of goods along with customs duty we need to pay igst can that igst also be taken as credit yes again i am repeating carefully listen on import of goods we pay customs duty and we also pay igst that igst can be taken as credit and adjusted against the gst payable on outward supplies that's the next point igst paid on import can be availed as itc but we pay some other things along with customs duties igst social welfare surcharge that and all we pay only igst can be taken as credit but customs duty social welfare surcharge cannot be availed as itc then next so they may give this also as one of the point so on so person has imported goods he paid a basic customs duty of this much igst this much social welfare surcharge this much what you will be thinking mentally tax on inward supplies itc then all tax you will take as credit no only igst component alone you can take as input tax credit then next one there are few principles that you need to keep in mind if my outward supply is taxable i can take credit on my inward supply if my outward supply is exempted can i take credit on my inward supply no why sir because the basic idea is what here as you are going to pay some tax in future whatever tax already you paid on your purchases you set off with the liability suppose you don't have a liability at all in future why we will give you credit we will not give you credit then it is lost to government na see it is like there is water and there is fish in the water now you will put a bait correct while doing the fishing you will put a bait what is that bait that you will put one earthworm you will put so that fish will come to eat that earthworm and the fish will be caught you correct got it now that fish is output tax this bait is input tax credit you got it 
for the sake of this input tax credit we will be showing our output liability and that gets set off simple pa if you are having input tax credit means you purchased then where is your sales they will question you took the credit super where is your sales what you did with the sales no sir i did not sell it is in the closing stock show me your closing stock no sir it is not in closing stock then you are have sold correct so therefore pay the liability so this is like a bait to catch the fish now there is water but there is no fish what is the point in putting bait in that correct or not so that is what when our outward supply is exempted we are not at all required to pay any gst what is the point in giving input tax credit here you got it so that is why input tax credit is not required are you getting this clarity so remember when our outward supply is exempted can we take credit on our inward supply no when my outward supply is taxable can I take credit on my inward supply? Yes. So, these two principles you keep in mind. Exempted means what? I do not have to pay GST. Exempted means I do not have to pay GST. That is the meaning of exempted. You got it. Taxable means I have to pay GST. Exempted means I do not have to pay GST. Now, there is something called as zero rated. What is zero rated? Plain English you will understand rate 0 means 0 rated wrong answer ok rate 0 is not 0 rated 0 rated has got a definition rate 0 is called as someone said there nil rated rate 0 is called as nil rated but 0 rated means what export of goods or services or supply of goods or services to special economic zone is known as zero rated supplies. Can you tell me once again what is zero rated supplies? Export of goods or services. Supply of goods or services to special economic zone. What is special economic zone sir? Mainly to encourage the exporters, government has created a territory wherein all exporters can come into the territory can do the business so the overhead cost will come down overhead cost is what electricity infrastructure cost then rent cost and all will be saved now when your overhead cost come down your cost of production will come down when your cost of production comes down you can keep a competitive price so in the international market you can compete with china see china is competing with india because china can sell the goods at a lower cost that is why China is making superb money. How sir they can do and why we cannot do? Both are competing in population. Nah. Then why they can do? We are not able to do. See population we can. That is in our hands. But economy, <laughs> economy is not in our hands. Okay. So what happens? We all have a expectation. The moment you complete CA, we have a expectation like how much salary you need? 12 lakhs, 18 lakhs. 24 lakhs is there any limit for that no one will tell i don't need money pa so i have earned enough like that no one will tell i will tell but no one will tell so but uh, what happens here is that everyone is having big big ambitions and we start earning we expect more money when we expect more money the cost for the companies will increase but in china it's not like that it's a socialistic country wherein government will tell this much only you should earn beyond this we will not pay you government will decide everything so they are able to sell at a lesser price but india we cannot do that for that reason the cost should be reduced so they created a zone territory in that all the necessary infrastructure government only will take care now you are an exporter you just come and do the business there that is enough remaining cost we will bear that is called a special economic zone now in that special economic zone there will be some person who is doing business now you are making sale to that person you are making sale to that person for you it will be called as zero rated once again what is zero rated supplies come on export of goods or services or supply of goods or services to special economic zone is known as zero rated supplies why is it called as zero rated because the burden of GST will become zero. So, it is called as zero rated supplies. What is this burden of GST mean, sir? Listen, there are two options available in case of zero rated supplies. Option number one, for the sake of understanding, let us take with numbers. I am making an export 
I am making an export. On that export, the tax I have to pay is 10 lakhs. And I have some invert supplies on which the input tax credit available is 6 lakhs. Now, option number 1, pay 10 lakhs. How I will pay 10 lakhs? Using 6 lakhs plus balance out of pocket 4 lakhs. I paid up. How I got 6 lakhs? On purchases already I paid tax that is 6 lakhs. Now, what is my liability? 10 lakhs, 10 lakhs. For payment of 10 lakhs I adjusted 6 lakhs. Still how much I need to pay out of my pocket? 4 lakhs. Now, I will get refund. How much I will get as refund? Entire 10 lakhs I will get as a refund. Sir, but I paid out of my pocket 4 lakhs only now sir. Yes, but already at the time of purchase also I paid some 6 lakhs now. So, gross IGST I will be getting as refund in my bank account. Now, you tell me what is the burden on me? Zero. How the burden on me is zero? On purchase how much I paid as tax? That I got as a refund. On output supply how much I am paying as tax? That also I am getting as refund. So, what is my burden? That is why it is called as zero rated supplies. You understood or not? So, burden becomes zero means it is known as zero rated supplies. You got it? Now, what is option one? Pay IGST on outward supplies. Then on inward supplies, whatever GST we have paid that we will be taking as ITC, setting off and the gross IGST we will get as a refund. Now, second option you see. What is second option? On outward supplies, I will not pay GST, sir. I will export it under bond or LUT, bond or letter of undertaking. So, promise, I will export it. Like that you are putting a promise on President of India, that is LUT. I will export and I will not cheat you, like that you are putting a promise, that is LUT, letter of undertaking. Suppose, if uh, they are not accepting your promise, then one stamp paper you need to sign. So, that I will use these goods only for export. I will not use it for local sales. Like that you need to export it under bond or LUT without payment of tax. But I made some purchases now. On that purchases whatever GST I have paid, it is in the form of input tax credit. That I will get as a refund. Same example pa. Outward supply I do not have to pay 10 lakhs. But on inward supply already I paid 6 lakhs now. In that 6 lakhs I will get the refund. But what refund I will be getting only with respect to inputs and input services. So, see this. Zero rated supplies under GST, export of goods or services, supply of goods or services to SCZ, supplier making zero rated supplies have the following two options. Option 1, pay IGST and use the ITC and refund will be IGST, gross IGST. Option 2, do not pay IGST and on outward supply do not pay IGST, on inward supply you avail ITC and whatever you availed as ITC that you will get as refund, but ITC avail right there with respect to inputs and input services, only with respect to inputs and input services. Sir, what is inputs, what is input services, what else is there? All our invert supplies will be grouped into three, inputs, input services and capital goods. Capital goods means what? Any goods which are purchased and capitalized in the books of the person who is purchasing it is known as capital goods. Any goods purchased and charged to p and L is known as inputs. So, what is the difference by inputs and capital goods? Purchased goods capitalized in the books is known as capital goods. Purchased goods charged to p and L is known as inputs, clear. Input services means any service received. But on what we will get refund only with respect to inputs and input services, not with respect to capital goods, okay. Now, now you tell me which option you will prefer, option 1 or option 2? Option 1, 2, why 2 you will prefer here? 1 only I will prefer because in 1 even capital goods credit I can use and I am getting as a refund, correct? So, when you have the credit on capital goods, you go for which option? Option 1. But option 2 also, it will be advisable for me when? Because option 2, I have to pay the GST and I need to wait. Correct or not? Refund in case of option 1, 
I have to pay and I need to wait. But in option two, I don't have to pay anything now. So cash outflow is minimized. So okay. I will ask this question again after seeing one illustration. So through numbers you can analyze and you can tell me. So see the illustration below. ABC Private Limited is an exporter and they are making export of finished goods. 8 lakhs is the value of finished goods that is exported and excluding GST at 12 percent. Now what ABC Private Limited did is that they have made purchase of inputs, input services and capital goods. What is the value of the inputs purchased? 1 lakh excluding GST 12 percent. Input services? 50,000 excluding GST, 18 percent. Capital goods, 1 lakh 50 excluding GST, 12 percent. Okay. Now, what are the options available to this ABC Private Limited? Can you tell me option 1 is what? Pay IGST on export and get the refund of gross IGST. Am I right? Now, you please see the question and tell me what is the outward supply value? Outward supply value? 8 lakhs. What is the GST on outward supply? 12 percent. So, 8 lakhs into 12 percent is what? 96,000. You understood how we got 96,000? 8 lakhs into 12 percent, 96,000. Minus, what is the input tax credit that they have? Input tax credit means what? Input tax credit means what? Tax paid on invert supplies. What are the invert supplies? Inputs, Input services and capital goods. So, 1 lakh. 1 lakh into 12 percent. What is 1 lakh into 12 percent? 12,000. Okay. Then next, 50,000 into 18 percent, 9,000. 1 lakh 50 into 12 percent, that is 18,000. Now, 12,000 plus 9,000 plus 18,000. How much? 39,000. You understood how we got this 39,000? Sir, 8 lakhs into 12 percent, 96,000 is my output tax. What is the input tax? These three into GST is my input tax. What is the net GST payable? Output tax minus input tax. That is 96,000 minus 39,000, 57,000. Up to this you all understood. Output tax is 8 lakhs into 12 percent. Input tax is 1 lakh into 12 percent plus 50,000 into 18 percent plus 1 lakh 50 into 12 percent. Output tax minus input tax is the net GST payable. Now you tell me how much refund you will get? 57 or 96? Why 96,000 you will get? Gross IGST you will get as refund. So refund of IGST 96. How we got this 96? Nothing but whatever you paid on purchase 39,000 plus whatever you are paying on sale 57,000. 96,000 you will get as refund. You got it? Next, option 2 is what? Option 2. Do not pay IGST on outward supply. So, ignore this. Do not pay any GST on outward supply. Ignore this. And you will get refund of what? ITC on inputs and input services. Inputs ITC how much? 12,000. Input services ITC how much? 9,000. So, 12,000 plus 9,000 only you are getting as refund. You got it? How much is that? 21,000. What you did not get as refund? How much is that? So, 18,000 still it is in the form of input tax credit. You got it? What you can do with that? What you can do with that? You do not have liability. What you can do with that? Carry forward and adjust to cancel liability whenever you have the liability. Like that for how many years I can carry forward sir? You can carry forward for a number of years, infinite time. It's not like set off and carry forward, where in 8 years only you can carry forward, 9 income tax set off and carry forward. But here it is not like that. You can carry forward for 30 years, 40 years, 100 years also you can carry forward. You understood? So we can carry forward and set off. But you will not get it as cash in your bank account. You got it. So how much you got as cash in your bank account only? 21,000 rupees. So that is this. Refund of ITC only 21,000. Input tax credit balance 18,000. Now you compare these two and tell me option 1 or option 2. Option 1. Why option 1? Sir, 
entire money it is in my bank account sir correct i can use it for any purpose i can use it for payment of salaries or i can use it for procuring the raw material or i can use it for any purpose but if it is input tax credit i can use it for only one purpose what is that one purpose i can set off only against the liability it's like i am giving you 500 rupees voucher which you can redeem it for purchase of my book i am giving you 500 rupees now which you need 500 rupees correct voucher fold and keep somewhere sir why i need a voucher i can use it only for the purpose of you know redeeming it there i don't need a voucher cash means i can use it for any purpose correct or not so like that input tax credit you can use it only for payment of liability but when you have cash in your bank account you can use it for any purpose so that's the reason why we expect a cash so that's why option one is preferable but option one has got one disadvantage what is a disadvantage i have to pay 57000 and i need to wait till the time i get the refund so that is a disadvantage what we have with respect to option 1 compared to option 2 but in option 2 i don't have to pay this 57000 at all correct so that is about now when if you have sufficient like if you have credit input tax credit with respect to capital goods you should go for option 1 if you don't have input tax credit on capital goods you can go for option 2 now the exporter can decide either option 1 or option 2 with respect to each invoice not with respect to each financial year with respect to each invoice so just write down there option 1 option 2 with respect to each invoice with respect to each invoice they can decide okay now now a slight change in this what will be your answer if export turnover is 5 lakhs and domestic turnover is 3 lakhs same question same question in this 8 lakhs they are dividing it into 2 5 lakhs is export 3 lakhs is domestic in case of domestic we will not call it as zero rated na so these two options will not be applicable in case of domestic in case of domestic it will be normal normal means what output tax minus input tax now let's see option 1 what is option 1 pay igst and get refund of gross igst correct so now for the sake of understanding i am just doing the answer here what is your gross liability in option 1 gross gst payable you don't have to write just listen gross gst payable search the numbers from the question and tell me what is a gross gst payable 96 no change in that why no change in that domestic how much you are paying 3 lakhs into 12 percent 36000 correct then export how much you are paying export 5 lakhs into 12 percent that will be 60000 so 96000 you have paid correct now what is the input tax credit that you have 39000 so what is the net gst payable net gst payable will be 57000 same ah now you tell me how much is the refund that you will get 60 or 96 so therefore refund is only on zero rated turnover correct so refund will be only 60000 how we got this 60000 rupees as refund simple on purchases how much you paid on purchase how much you paid 39000 ah 39000 is for total turnover in the 39 how much is pertaining to export how much is pertaining to export out of this 39,000? 5 lakhs export, ah. total 8 lakhs, ah. correct or not? So, what is the ratio of export to total? 5 is to 8. So, proportionate is 5 by 8, not 5 is to 8, 5 is to 3. 5 is to 3 proportion when you take 5 by 8. So, how much is 39,000 into 5 by 8? 
you do the calculation and tell me 3 375 24375 whereas on 57000 also you take this ratio on output supply 57000 also into 5 by 8 625 if you add this to which is nothing but 60000 you understood so now you don't have to remember this way how the logic we have arrived but i'm just telling you why they have telling gross igst on export only you will get as refund this is the logic behind it but what you remember for exam purpose is whatever is a gross igst paid on export that much we will get as a refund you got the clarity this is in case of option 1 now you tell me option 2 what will happen in option 2 don't pay igst so what is your gross liability 0 or 36000 36000 why sir 36000 don't pay IGST only on export, but on domestic turnover you need to pay na. So gross GST payable, gross GST payable will be on export or domestic, domestic that is 3 lakhs into 12 percent 36,000 on export it will be 0. So total 36. How much is the input tax credit that we have? 30. But how much can be used? 36,000. So what happens to the net liability? 0. Now, you will get refund with respect to what? Inputs and input services. Correct. What is the inputs and input services? ITC, check the question. 21,000. How sir? 21,000. Inputs. 1 lakh into 12 percent, 12,000. Input services, 50,000 into 18 percent, 9,000. So, 21,000 into what is the ratio used for export? 5 by 8. So, 21,000 into 5 by 8, 13,125. But you will not get 13,125 as refund. So, actual refund is only 3,000. Why actual refund is only 3,000? Why actual refund is only 3000? Sir, you had 39,000. You spent 36,000. What is the balance available? Only 3000. Refund is subject to balance in ITC. For example, you have a debit card. In the debit card, 10,000 rupees can be withdrawn per day. Correct. You go to the ATM. You use the debit card and you are entering 10,000. But why money is not coming? There should be some balance. Correct balance 30 rupees is there now how you will be getting 10,000 rupees you understood or not yes you are eligible for 13,125 but why you will not get because you don't have that much balance what you have done you used it for payment of your liability so what is the balance that you have out of 39,000 so you used the 36,000 what is left 3,000 so 3,000 only is the actual refund is it clear so see the answer there maximum refund is 13,125 but the refund is balance in ITC or maximum refund, whichever is lower, 3000 rupees only you will get as refund. This is about zero rated supplies. Now, you may not get this question in exam, but you will be tested with this concept of zero rated supplies. Okay. They may or may not ask this big complicated question, but you should know as to what are the two options. That is why I explained. So, theoretically, you tell me what are the two options available. Option one. Pay IGST, utilize ITC and get refund of gross IGST, super. Then option 2, do not pay IGST, get refund of ITC with respect to inputs and input services. So that is about, you know, zero rated supplies. Then look into some small, small concepts that we have. See the next one, GST council. So, who will take decisions related to GST? GST council. In GST council, there will be central government representation as well as state government representation. See, only one government cannot decide everything in GST. That is why they have created a common body called as GST council. So, which is a decision making body and this GST council is not a government body. It is a 
constitutional body. So, it derives powers from underline article 279A of the constitution. Article 279A of the constitution and who is the head of this council? Union finance minister, union finance minister Nirmala Chechi is the chairman of this GST council and we do not know what will happen in future. So, so far she was the chairman okay. and it is a decision making body of GST and basically they give decisions with respect to important issues like exemptions, rates of GST, then process, return filing process, etc. And it contains 33 members, how sir 33 members, how many states? 31 states will have 31 state finance ministers plus one union finance minister plus 5 union territories are there na for that one MP, one union MP in charge of the revenue. So, therefore, 33 members, you understood how 33 members? 31 states, 31 state finance ministers plus one union finance minister plus one union MP for 5 union territories that is where we will have 33 members and what is the quorum? Quorum means what? Minimum number that should be present in the meeting is called as quorum. And what is the minimum number that should be present in the meeting? 50 percent. Total 33 pa. 33, 50 percent is what? 16.5. So, we cannot bring 0.5 and all here. So, 17 will be taken, okay. 17 members. And what is the weighted votes? Whether central government vote and state government vote has an equal weight? No. Central government vote is only one third weight and state government vote will be two third weight, weighted average they will do, you understood. And to have a majority, how much majority, simple majority or three fourth majority, three fourth majority is required, three fourth means what like our special resolution in companies act, 75 percent majority that is required. So, these are some key points, now say this like. Uh, what is the quorum in case of GST council? 50 percent. What is the weighted vote for state government? State government, two thirds. Central government, for majority, how much majority required? Three fourth. How many members will be there in GST council? 33. And what is the article which give power to the GST council? 279A of constitution, MCQs. For MCQs, it will be required then. Other points to remember, France became the first country to implement GST. So, India cannot take the credit of GST, 160 countries already implemented, we are 161st country which we have implemented. Before us, 160 countries have already implemented GST, France was the first country. And who recommended implementation of GST in India? Underline Dr. Kelker Task Force. And what is the effective date of implementation of GST in India? 1-7-2017. Then GST network, so basically GST network, so will provide the information technology infrastructure for implementation of GST, we call it as common portal. Because now technology is required, for that purpose they created a separate body, but this is a government entity, government entity means 100 percent owned by government. 50 percent is owned by central government and 50 percent is owned by all state governments together. So, this GST network will provide the infrastructure, information technology infrastructure like filing of returns, payment of taxes, all the software will be provided by GST network. Underline, it provides information technology infrastructure for implementation of GST. And they provide services to whom? CGSG banks and other stakeholders. So, is it a government entity? Yes. 100 percent government owned entity where central government will own 50 percent, state government will own 50 percent. And what are the services that they will provide? Today if you need to take registration, payment of tax, filing of returns, settlement of IGST and EVA bill, everything will be through this GST network, okay. So, these are the points that we have in segment 1 and we will take a break. Thereafter, we will see the practice manual and then proceed to segment 2 that is supply under GST, okay. So, break as we started today at 9.30. So, for every 2 hours, I will give one break, okay. And uh, today, 
9.30 to 11.30, so 15 minutes break and thereafter we will have every 2-2 two -two hours 1-1 one -one break. Done? Tomorrow onwards class will start on time 9 o'clock, today because some students were doing registration that is why I started late, from tomorrow onwards 9 o'clock it will start, 9 to 6 or 6.30 depending upon uh, you know your mood and my mood etc. Okay. Fine, we will take a break for 15 minutes. Fine, we will start. See this, have a look into the practice manual discussion related to segment 1. See the first MCQ. Various taxes have been subsumed in GST to make one nation, one tax, one market for consumers. Out of the following, determine which taxes have been subsumed in GST. Basic customs duty, subsumed or not subsumed? Not subsumed. Taxes on lottery, lottery betting tax, subsumed or not subsumed? Subsumed. Entertainment tax, subsumed into GST. So, these three, out of these three, two and three got subsumed into GST. So, the option will be C, correct answer C. Then second, alcoholic liquor for human consumption is subject to state excise duty, yes or no? Alcoholic liquor, alcoholic liquor, yes. Central sales tax, value added tax, yes. Both A and B, again option C is the answer. Then this already we know, distinguish between direct and indirect taxes. Then see all ICI study material question, updated study material questions. Everything is included, so do not worry. Yes. Zoom ah. Okay. Next. Enumerate major direct and indirect taxes. What are the various direct and indirect taxes? Huh, direct only one, we saw income tax. Major indirect taxes, GST, customs, then write a short note on various lists provided under 7th schedule to the constitution. What are the various lists, 7th schedule to the constitution, union list, state list, concurrent list. Union list means what? Where central government is having power to make law. State list means state government is having power to make law. Concurrent list means both central government and state government is having power to make law. That is about this. Then discuss the functions of common GST portal. What is common GST portal means? GST network. So, we saw in a GST network like that few points. So, this we need to write as the answer. So, it provides information, technology, infrastructure, it provides service to central government, state government for implementation of GST and it facilitates registration, payment of tax, furnishing of returns, these details we need to write. Then next one, GST is a simplified tax structure, justify the statement. So, why it is called as a simplified tax structure? Previously lot of indirect taxes were there. Now, subsuming those indirect taxes, they have made it as a single tax na. That is why GST is called as a simplified tax structure, okay. Because underline this words, simplified tax regime with fewer exemptions along with reduction in multiplicity of taxes. Multiple taxes got reduced. And there is uniformity in tax structure. Uniformity in tax structure means what? So, previously different products were taxable at different rates. Like for example, you know you take rice. Rice will be taxable in Tamil Nadu at nil rate under VAT, okay, previous. And in uh, Karnataka it was 1%. In Andhra it was 5% like that. But now if you see any commodity across the country, it will be having the same rate. That is known as uniform tax structure. So, there will be reduction in multiplicity of taxes and uniformity in tax structure and uniformity in the procedures. Procedure also same, different states do not require different procedures. Every state the procedure will be same. So, that is about this uh, simplified tax structure. Three points you should remember. What are the three points? Number one, reduction in multiplicity of taxes, 
Number two, uniformity in tax structure and uniformity in the procedure. Then next, uh, list the advantages that GST accrues to the trade and the industry. So, what are the benefits to the industry? Input tax credit, correct. So, input tax credit, underline input tax set off, input tax set off. Then, complete chain of set off, complete chain of set off means Manufacturer will collect GST from wholesaler, wholesaler can take his credit and wholesaler while making sale to the retailer, again wholesaler will set off the credit with the liability of retailer like that from manufacturer, like that from manufacturer to consumer everywhere. So, supplier will pay GST, recipient will take ITC, again recipient will set off with his future liability. So, that is called as chain of credit, okay. And better tax compliance. So, better tax compliance that leads to lower lowering the tax burden. So, like penalties, unnecessary penalties, unnecessary torture from the department and all will get eliminated. Then, mitigation of ill effects of cascading, underline that. Mitigation of ill effects of cascading means, cascading means tax on tax is known as cascading. Cascading effect of tax means tax will be there on the top of that again tax will be added. In old indirect tax and all we had this problem. While computing sales tax we used to add excise duty, but now that issue is not there. So, therefore, this eliminates the cascading effect of taxes. Then benefits to small traders and entrepreneurs by way of giving exemption up to 20 lakhs or up to 40 lakhs if your turnover is there, you are not required to pay GST. So, threshold limit is there enough for registration, only after crossing that limit you need to register, means up to that limit you are not required to register and pay. One second. Yes, so up to that limit they are not required to register and pay because of that there is advantage. Also one more benefit is also there for small traders like composition scheme. Composition scheme is a simplified scheme for payment of tax rather than paying tax at the regular rates a person opting for composition scheme will pay tax at the reduced rates ok. So that is the advantage which is given to small traders and entrepreneurs. So that is about this. So first benefits to the industry by way of input tax credit set off and continuous chain of credits. These highlighted words you know and using these highlighted words you write the paragraph ok. And then complete chain of set off, better tax compliance, then it will mitigate or reduce the cascading effect of taxes and it will give benefits to the small traders and entrepreneurs. How small traders and entrepreneurs they will get benefit because there is something called as threshold limit for registration and composition scheme ok, threshold GST and composition scheme. Then next, list this special category states as prescribed in article 279A of the constitution. What are considered as the special category states? Huh. You remember one key word here. So, there are 11 states which are considered as special category states or union territories as per article 279A of the constitution. Article 279 talks about what? GST council. Along with that they have given some special category states. You remember M, M, T, N, okay. A, SAM, H, U, J. M, M, T, N, A, SAM, H, U, J. M, M, T, N, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Nagaland. A for Assam. Then Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, okay. Assam, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya. These are called as northeastern states. These are called as northeastern states. So, again in exemptions also we will come across northeastern state, there it will be useful. So, MMTN, A, SAM is called as northeastern states. What is the full form of MMTN? Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Nagaland, A for Assam, then Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, H for 
Himachal Pradesh, U Uttarakhand, J Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. Then next, list any six state levies which are subsumed in GST. What we have is only six. Only six we have. Okay. What are they already? You told the list. Value added tax, entertainment tax, luxury tax, betting tax, and then uh, advertisement tax, then purchase tax, six. Okay. Then list any four central levies which are subsumed into GST. Central excise duty, central sales tax, then service tax, CVD, SAD, these are some. List some of the benefits that GST may accrue to the economy. Actually, it's a repetition, yeah. You can write these points also. But these are the advantages to trade and industry. These are advantages to trade and industry. Don't get confused. These are advantages to trade and industry. Whereas these are advantages to the economy. Okay. What are the advantages to the economy? Creation of unified national market. So, same point. What is that? Previously, different products were taxable at different rates. Now, those products will be taxable at the same rate. So, there will be a common market across the country. Then, boost to Make in India initiative because they are giving lot of incentives to the exporters. So, they are invent, see, make in India is different from made in India. Made in India is, they want to encourage only Indians who should be manufacturing and exporting. But make in India is not like that. You may be in outside India, you come to India and you start manufacturing here. Reason, at least that way, they will give lot of employment opportunities. Now, a lot of foreign companies are coming to India, like iPhone, Apple is manufactured in India, MI is manufactured, Samsung also, so is being manufactured, Lenovo laptops are getting manufactured, so foreign companies, but they come and manufacture here, because in India they are giving lot of incentives to that, that is known as boost to make in India initiative, one of that incentive we have seen is zero rated supplies, the burden will become zero now, that is this. Then. Boost to investments, exports and employment. So, this is also the incentive in that what they are doing is that exporters are being facilitated provisional refund within 7 days, 90 percent of that amount. So, this point alone you underline and remember. Just now we saw zero rated supplies, there are two options. Both options they will get refund now. In usually, refund will take time. But for exporters, what they are doing within 7 days from the date they make application, how much refund they are being given? 90 percent of the refund amount they are giving. So, these are all some benefits they are giving to the economy. Then, next, with the help of examples, how a particular transaction of goods and service is tagged simultaneously under central GST and state GST. What is that you need to write for this? dual GST model. You need to write about dual GST model. In dual GST model, what will happen? On the common amount, both central government and state government shall levy the taxes. They are asking us to explain an example. Any example you can give. You give a restaurant example, wherein, so in a restaurant, the food bill is so and so, in that CGST will be this much, SGST will be this much like that. They are asking example, but this and all they will not test in exam. Don't worry. Then, why was the need to amend the constitution of India before introducing the GST? I told you this point. Previously, we had union list, state list, etc., concurrent list. But GST is to be implemented by both CG and SG. Due to that reason, there was a requirement of constitution amendment. Then, GST is a destination-based tax on consumption of goods or services or both discuss the validity of this statement. This point also I have been referring, that is, whenever the transaction takes place from one state to another state, IGST, 50 percent will be given to central government and remaining 50 percent will be given to consuming state, not the originating state. So, if the sale takes place from Tamil Nadu to Karnataka, 50 percent of IGST will go to central government, remaining 50 percent will be given to Tamil Nadu or Karnataka. Karnataka because GST is a 
destination based consumption tax due to that reason okay so gst is a destination based tax on consumption of goods or services so due to that reason you know what will happen is that consuming state will be given the revenue so means wherever the goods and services are getting consumed so that particular state or union territory will enjoy the benefit of revenue okay then this question number 14 you mark as very very important discuss the leviability of gst or otherwise on the following alcoholic liquor for human consumption no gst permanent exclusion or temporary exclusion and and what will be the duties or levies that will be applicable on that state excise duty cst and vat very good petroleum crude diesel petrol aviation turbine fuel and natural gas temp no gst temporary exclusion till the date it is decided by council and until that point of time central excise duty cst and vat tobacco so whether gst is applicable yes and old indirect tax only one old indirect tax what is that central excise duty will be applicable then opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs ha huh. whether gst is applicable on that yes yes because this is others na uh, this will not come under alcoholic liquor for human consumption so this will be coming under others others four points we discussed here in the table alcoholic liquor then petroleum products then one more thing we have seen na tobacco and finally all other goods all other goods gst applicable or not yes so this indian hemp opm narcotic drugs will it come under first second third no it will come under last other goods so for which the gst will be applicable is it clear sir can state excise duty also be levied on opm narcotic drugs yes yes state excise duty also can be levied because state excise duty not got subsumed in gst na due to that reason state excise duty also can be levied you just write down there below ha huh, it's there already it's there are subject to gst as well as state excise duties indian hemp narcotic drugs and other narcotics are subject to gst as well as state excise duty sir on uh, ganja weed etc and all now that in chennai lot of uh, you know places it is available and even recently also some uh, 10 kgs they have got they have identified in chennai so we have lot of places it is available now on sale of that whether gst is applicable generally government they will close their eyes they don't know suppose if they open their eyes and if they come to know that there is sale can gst be levied on that yes sir but it is illegal na sir for taxes there is no legal or illegal tax can be levied even on illegal income as well so income tax also can be levied gst also can be levied on illegal transactions okay then under gst only value addition is tax and burden of tax is to be borne by the final consumer examine the validity of this statement first tax is paid by one person and later on it can be recovered from the other person so who will have the burden final consumer and at every stage gst is payable on value addition correct because we will pay net gst as output tax minus input tax output tax minus input tax means literally we pay gst only on value addition for example see this i discuss one example with you sir i am purchasing for 1 lakh and on that this is invert supply okay this is invert supply and on that i am paying a gst of 12% i am purchasing for 1 lakh on the 12% so what is the gst paid on invert supply 12000 this is itc correct then on outward supply on outward supply 1 lakh 50000 so what is the rate of gst 12% so that is how much 18000 so what is the net gst 6000 so this 6000 is nothing but 1 lakh 50 minus 1 lakh correct 1 lakh is the invert supply into 
one lakh fifty. So one lakh fifty minus one lakh. What is the difference? Fifty thousand. And into what is the rate of GST? Twelve percent. Correct. So therefore, fifty thousand into twelve percent is nothing but this six thousand. You got it. So which means GST is a value added tax. True or false? True. GST is a value added tax because literally we pay tax only on the value addition. What is the value addition in this example? Fifty thousand. So on that only we are paying. This is what you need to explain. The statement is correct. GST is a destination based consumption tax. It is levied at all stages, right from where to where, manufacture to final consumption, where credit of tax paid at previous stage is available as set off. Resultantly, only on value addition, GST is payable. Correct, and that to the entire tax burden is on whom? On the final consumer. Which of the commodities? Which are the commodities which have been kept outside the purview of GST? Examine the status of taxation of such commodities after introduction of GST. What are the commodities which are kept outside the purview of GST? Good, alcoholic liquor for human consumption and five petroleum products. That's what we need to write. See, the problem is we know the answer, but we don't know for what question, what answer to be written in exam. That's where we will be, you know, flunking in the exam. We see the question, and we don't know what answer to be written. Outside exam hall, once we come, one idiot will be telling, "Hey, the kid didn't answer like that." Oh, yo, yo, I know that, but I have not written. So this regret should not be there. So that's why it's not about how much you learnt. How much presence of mind you have in the exam is very, very important. So that's why I'm giving you all these questions. You know answer, but for what question, what answer to be written? Okay. Then next, and along with that, you can also write what are the levies that are there. Alcoholic liquor for human consumption, tobacco products, no GST. But what are the other levies which are applicable? That data you can write for this. Then, a dual GST has been implemented in India. Elaborate. Yes, already we have discussed about the dual GST. And what are the keywords? India is what type of country? Federal country. There is a fiscal federalism. For that reason, only dual GST is levied. And we adopted this model from where to where? Where and where? Brazil and Canada. Okay, then Article two sixty nine A. There is there are two articles here. Article two seventy nine A. You know what is Article two seventy nine A? GST Council. Correct. Now Article two sixty nine A and two forty six A. About these two also you should know. Article two sixty nine A is only about you know. GST collected by central government in case of interstate supply and 50% given to the consuming state. This discussion we have made now. Where is it given in the Constitution? Article 269A of the Constitution. Read that. What does Article 269A says? In case of interstate trade or commerce. Okay. So who will levy GST? Central government, that is government of India, correct. And such tax will be apportioned between the union and the states. This is what Article 269A of the Constitution. You got it? What does Article 269A of the Constitution says? Already we know that, but that we did not discuss. It is in Article 269A. So whenever there is an interstate supply, who will levy? Central government. Thereafter, they will apportion it between the central government and the states. What if it is a union territory, hundred percent retained by the central government? Okay, so that is about this. We need to write, and how it will be distributed? How it will be distributed? Fifty percent to consuming state based on place of supply. Based on place of supply, it will be given. Then next, suppose, suppose, if It is a B to C sale. It will be given to the consuming state. What if it is a B to B sale, sir? What is B to B? What is B to C? B to B means sale to registered person. B to B means sale to registered person. B to C means sale to 
unregistered person okay now concentrate mr a is located in tamil nadu and of course he is registered and mr b is located in karnataka and he is also registered okay just listen mr a is registered in tamil nadu b is also registered in tamil nadu this sale is interstate sale correct now in case of this interstate sale what is the gst that will be applicable igst so therefore a will be collecting a will be collecting price plus igst am i right price plus igst now mr b is having the igst credit please concentrate mr b is having what igst credit what mr b will do with this igst credit in turn he will make sale na in turn he will make sale so whenever he is making sale say for example his liability is cgst payable and he is setting off this igst credit with cgst payable you understood this so there is a igst credit which is set off against the cgst payable you got it now concentrate mr a will be having the igst revenue so igst is paid to central government am i right igst is paid to central government now the entire igst is with central government what b is doing b set off with cgst payable which means central government will retain 100% of igst why it will retain 100% of igst because igst credit is set off with what liability cgst liability so 100% will be retained by central government suppose if igst credit is set off against sgst payable then then they cannot keep this igst so far igst is in suspense account here please concentrate so far igst account is in suspense okay we don't know where to take so it is in a suspense account now b is the recipient you are recipient i am supplier you are recipient what you are going to do with that lab itc you are going to set off against your cgst payable then this suspense will fully go to central government suppose you are setting off with your sgst payable then this suspense amount will fully go into state government you got it this is in which case b to b a b to c a b to b b to b so in case of b to b how the igst will travel how the recipient is going to take the credit and set off with his future liability accordingly igst will travel you got it suppose if it is a b to c transaction same scenario what if it is a b to c transaction if mr b is unregistered no confusion 50% will go to central government remaining 50% will go to state government because b cannot take credit why b cannot take credit sir unregistered person cannot take input tax credit only a registered person can take input tax credit understood or not so in case of sale to unregistered person it will be distributed based on place of supply in case of sale to registered person how the igst credit is being set off like that it will go okay then you can write down here igst revenue collected by central government igst collected by cg igst collected by cg divide it into 2 supply is b to b supply is b to b b to b means sale to registered person supply is b to c supply is b to c when the supply is b to c what will happen you already know hmm 50% to central government and 50% to consuming state based on 
based on place of supply. Okay, suppose if it is B to B, ah, how recipient is going to set off IGST credit, correct, B to B, IGST credit utilized, IGST credit utilized for CGST or UTGST payable or SGST payable. If IGST credit utilized for CGST or UTGST payable, where the money will go? 100 percent transferred to central government, 100 percent transferred to CG. Okay. Suppose if it is IGST credit utilized for SGST payable, then 100 percent transferred to 100 percent transferred to SG. Here also 100 percent point is there. What is that? If POS is union territory, correct, then 100 percent transferred to central government. Maybe this could be tested somewhere in MCQ or some short note questions. Everyone understood IGST collected by central government. Now check whether the transaction is B to B or B to C. If the transaction is B to B, IGST credit will be taken by recipient. How he is going to use it? If he is going to set off with CGST or UTGST payable entirely, it will be transferred to central government. If it is set off with SGST payable entirely, it will be transferred to state government. Suppose if the supply is B to C, means the recipient is unregistered. So then 50 percent will go to central government and 50 percent goes to state government based on place of supply. What if the place of supply is a union territory, then 100 percent will be going to central government. Then one more question, question number 19, discuss article 246A which grants the power to make laws with respect to goods and services tax. What does article 246A says? 246A is telling that you know parliament has exclusive power to make laws with respect to interstate trade or commerce, correct. However, in case of intrastate, both central government and state government is having exclusive power to make the law. See this, 246A says that both parliament and state legislature, both parliament and state legislature means what? Central government, state government have power to make law with respect to goods and services tax. Whereas if it is interstate supply? interstate supply, who will levy? Central government, we discuss this, we discuss this, central government. So, if it is interstate supply, then fully it will be by the parliament, parliament means CG, okay. And then on 5 petroleum products, there is no GST for the time being till the council decides. This information is in article 246A of the constitution. Why I am giving you this because students know this information, they would have learnt, but they do not know this is there in article 246A, because of which when you get a question, so discuss article 246A, the moment you see that you will understand out of syllabus, okay, I do not know, actually you know the answer, but you do not know for that what to write as the answer, that is why I have just given, so now you know what is the answer, you can write, so what does article 279A talks about, GST council. Article 269A about what? IGST, what happens to the IGST revenue, you got it. Then Article 246A talks about who will levy tax on intrastate and interstate and on petroleum products, you got it. Then now we are moving on to the next segment. So you can just see the index. So, we have total 16 segments here as per ICI updated syllabus 
we have this 16 segments. In this 16 segments, so I am, I just wanted to give you A category topics means must, you should learn that thoroughly, at least 2, 3 times you need to revise and go for exam. That is A category topics, what are they? So this liability to pay GST is a A category topic, you just write there A, B, C. This is A category topic, liability to pay GST, input tax credit and exemptions. And then value of supply, these are the 4 chapters which are A category chapters. You should be thorough with this at any cost. So, it is like uh, from nook and corner anywhere it is asked you should be able to answer. That much seriously you should prepare and 2 to 3 times before the exam you should revise and solve as many questions as you can from these areas. Whereas B category topics, so supply under GST, so this is a B category topic, it is important only but not having much weightage and all, B then composition scheme is a B category topic, place of supply is a B category topic, then TDS and TCS, then one more this uh, payment process because in that interest computation and all is there. So, these are B category topics that is supply, composition scheme, payment process, TDS, TCS, place of supply, rest and all is C category. Now, for B category what you should do is that, so you should learn in the class that will be sufficient and uh, you do not have to you know, do multiple revisions and all. Whereas, C category topics you should prepare like a revision kind of, just you know what is there in that because questions may come, questions may not come on that, it is not that much important, but you have to complete that also, okay. So, that is about this, so this B category topics, A category topics full, full detail, B okay, C one day before exam also fine, after this batch, after this batch one day before exam also C category topics you read, but after this batch also in the available time you need to practice more and more A and the next priority B, okay, done. Now we are moving on to the second chapter that is supply under GST. In this supply under GST, segment 2 please take page number 22, we are going to cover two sections, section 7 and section 8 of CGST Act and I gave the section index also at the end of this book. Appendix A if you see, I have given this section index, what section talks about what and in which page number that section is given. So, at the end you can see Appendix A, Appendix A or Appendix C I do not know. Huh sorry appendix C, last two pages. So, there I have given section and that sections for example, section 7 supply, section 8 composite supply, mixed supply like that I have given and in which page number it is there also I have given. So, that in case when you want to just revise what are the sections along with the numbers, it will be useful and please try to remember these section numbers. See hardly if you see you are having only 52 sections. In that 52 also, few sections are not there for your syllabus itself, it is not there. Like for example, the section 3 to section 6 is not there in syllabus. Then again, section 14 is not there, 19, 20, 21 not there. So, then 31A, 32 like that and all few sections you do not have in the syllabus itself. From this 52 no around some 10 sections not there, means what you have is only 42, these 42 sections you remember here, rule numbers also do not remember, subsections also do not remember, at least section number you remember, when you are writing the answer, please write it along with the section number, for example, cancellation of registration, section 29. So, when you get a question, what are the situations that leads to cancellation of registration, you write 
as per section 29 of CGST Act in the following cases, the registration can be cancelled. You got it? So, wherever possible, you only should create the possibility of writing the answer section number. So, when you write that, see, whether you are intelligent or not, they don't know about you. Na. What they have, your answer sheet. From, their, from your answer sheet itself, they need to know whether you are intelligent or not, etc. And all. They don't know anything about your background. They don't know perhaps your name also. So, your answer sheet contains some information that should create an impression. So, how that should create an impression? When you start quoting the section numbers and all, so the valuer will think, yaar, this student has prepared superbly, maybe he is a ranker or what. So, therefore, let us give good marks like that they will be giving. You understood. So, everything is about cheating only here. And, uh, you know, therefore, we need to do all those things. So, they will think. Reality, we only know. How much talent we have, how much knowledge we have, we only know. So, but when you write all this way, na, so they will think that we are intelligent, pro and all in the subject. Okay. So, that is why. So, remember these section numbers. What is the first section that we are discussing now? Section 7. What does section 7 deals with? Supply under GST. So, see that. Supply is divided into, so total 3 components, 4 components, but that fourth component is not there. Supply is divided into 4 components. See the first component. Supply includes, means what? What are the inclusions in the meaning of supply? Then, supply excludes, what are the activities which are not treated as supply? Not treated as supply means whether GST payable or not payable? Not payable. Then, 7.1a, classification of supply into goods or services. Once an activity becomes supply, whether it is goods or services, we should classify. Sir, why should we classify into goods or services, sir? Because the rates will differ, na. For goods, we have different rate. For services, we have different rate. The provisions will differ. For goods, different provisions are there. Services, different provisions are there. That's why once an activity becomes supply, we need to classify it into goods or services. That is given in this. Then, 7 subsection 3 talks about reclassification. Once we classify an activity into goods, the government is having power to reclassify it as supply of services, but they have not given anything in this regard. So, right now, 7.3 is not applicable. They have not brought anything of this sort under 7 subsection 3. Means literally what we have is only three things. 7.1 talks about inclusions. 7.2 talks about exclusions. 7 subsection 1a talks about classification into goods or services. Okay. Now, we are looking into inclusions here. Inclusions we are discussing. So, in inclusions, there are total four inclusions. 71A, 71AA, 71B and 71C. In that 71A, you see, read that any activity in the nature of debts RLL. Sir, what is this debts RLL? D for disposal. E for exchange, it is there already. Debts RLL, it is there. Okay, same page, right hand side, you can see. What is the full form of that debts RLL? It is already there. Okay, so what is D for? Disposal, E for exchange, B for barter, T for transfer, S for sale, R for rental, L for license, another L for lease. Sir, disposal means what, sir? Generally, when you do not want the asset, when you do not want that, you will sell it and you will get some value. Example, disposal of waste and scrap. You got it. It is not having much value, but it fetches some amount. Okay, That is what disposal is. Normally, if you sell, it is called as sale. Understood the difference? Then what is transfer? Not only sale, transfer includes sale also, but transfer includes other things. Somewhere in capital gains, you would have learned transfer, relinquishment, extinguishment, correct, transfer otherwise than in pursuance of contract, compulsory acquisition, have you heard this? Compulsory acquisition. What government will acquire it from me? I do not have interest to sell. 
but even then I am forced to sell, correct or not? All these things will come under transfer, okay? Then next uh, E for exchange. Exchange means you go to a shop, you buy a new product in exchange of the old product and you pay the difference. Example, TV. Old TV you will give in exchange, pay some money and get the new TV. Old bike you will give in exchange or old car you will give in exchange, you pay some money and buy the new car. That is an example of exchange. Then B for barter. Barter means what? Exchange of goods for goods, exchange of services for services or goods for services. That is known as barter. For example, I am having 100 bags of rice. I am giving you 100 bags of rice and in exchange you are giving me 50 bags of wheat. In OLX and all, lot of people will post mobile and they will tell, so I am ready to exchange with some other mobile also, like that they will mention. I have Samsung mobile and they will list it for some 40,000 rupees, Samsung mobile and they are ready to exchange it for iPhone, like that they will mention. So people who are having iPhone, so more or less the value will be same. And people who, has, who is having iPhone but not comfortable with iPhone, they want to go for Android. They can give this iPhone in exchange and can get one Android mobile. Possible or not possible? This is called as barter in real life, what we see. You got it? So barter is what? Exchange of goods for goods or goods for service or service for services. Then T and S we know. What is this R? Rental. Rental means right to use. I don't have the title, but I have the right to use. I have a car. I am giving you the title. It is sale. I am having car. I am not giving you the title. I am giving you right to use. It is called as rental. Then license and lease. What is the difference between rental and lease? Both are same. If for the major life, I am giving it on rental, we call it as a lease. Normal short term if I am giving it, it is called as rental. Then license is in relation to intangibles. For example, copyright, trademark, patent, etc. and all, I will be giving. For example, author gives the copyright to the publisher to publish the book and for which author will get the royalty na. That is called as license. Okay. So tell me what is this debts RLLD for? Disposal. E for exchange. B for barter, T for transfer, S for sale, super, R for rental, L for license, another L for lease. So any activity in the nature of debts are LL for a consideration. Consideration means what? Something in return, quid pro quo, okay. In the course or furtherance of business. So three points you need to remember. Any activity for consideration in the course or furtherance of business. Any activity, come on repeat, any activity for consideration in the course or furtherance of business. Sir, only these activities will become supply under 71A or any activity will become supply under 71A. Any activity will become, this is just a illustrative list, you got it. You don't have to remember this, but for general discussion I am giving you, not only these activities, any activity in the nature of these activities, you got it. Any activity in the nature of these activities, but what are the two conditions? It should be for a consideration, it should be in the course or furtherance of business. Now, I am taking classes, okay. Is it an activity? Yes. And is it in the course or furtherance of my business? Yes. So it is part of my profession. And I am taking business includes profession also. So it is in the course or furtherance of my business. Consideration? No. Is it supply under 71A? No. It is not a supply. Sir, why consideration is not there? I am not charging anything from you. One rupee also I am not charging. But you may tell, sir, you are doing this because in future we will come to CA final. At that time, we will be coming and joining your classes, so you will earn money na sir, then consideration is involved. That consideration may be involved for the supply which happens in future, correct? 
but this is not the consideration because the consideration is uncertain uncertain are you signing any contract that you will join only with me by that time is there any guarantee that i will be alive no guarantee here you understood and maybe some other good faculty could be there definitely you can go and join there also where is the certainty so therefore consideration should be certain you got it consideration should be present means it should be certain it should not be remote or uncertain it should be certain then only it will be called as consideration are you understanding this come on tell me what is 7 1 a activity for consideration in the course or furtherance of business now one more example you are selling your mobile in olx is it activity for consideration in the course or furtherance of business what is the activity sale consideration you are getting money but is it in the course or furtherance of your business no so it will not come under supply you got it then next 71a you read and tell me what is the difference between 71a and 71aa both places consideration is there a yes or no both places consideration is there and here any activity here any activity between a person other than individual and its members who is person other than individual person other than individual person definition you know na income tax person definition individual huf company like that in that other than individual other than individual huf huf firm llp aop boy company body corporate trust artificial judicial person like that is there na between them and its members who are members of huf karta and co partners who are members of firm partners who are members of company shareholders between them if there is any transaction between whom co partners and huf partners and firm or firm and partners company and shareholders or shareholders and company then 71 aa will come into picture it should be for a consideration you got it now definitely between them means it is in the course or furtherance of business i'll give you one example here generally when we transfer the shares from one person to another person say for example i am having shares of a company and i want to transfer the shares to my children or i want to transfer the shares to my wife now i cannot go to the stock market because if i go to the stock market when the moment i sell i can sell it to any person because seller don't know who is the buyer buyer don't know who is the seller but i want to transfer it to my wife only then in that case i should not go to the stock market i should go to the company and request the company please transfer the shares from my name to my wife's name for which the company will collect from me share transfer fees i am shareholder company and shareholder person other than individual and its member consideration is share transfer fee this is an example of supply 71aa you just write down there example share transfer fee share transfer fee share transfer fee then in this context i want to give you one more situation also there is a partnership firm and that partnership firm has given remuneration to the partner will it come under 71aa because any activity between a person other than individual and its member 71aa na so here who is the person other than individual partnership firm and who is a member of the partnership firm partner partner is getting remuneration from the partnership firm is it supply under 71aa or not no why it is not a supply because that remuneration to partner is nothing but withdrawal of profit sir i invest in a business and i get profit from that business investment activity is not a supply you got it return on investment cannot be treated as consideration so you write down somewhere in the book okay somewhere in the book you write down investment activity is not a supply 
investment activity is not a supply as per CBI CFAQ investment activity is not a supply as per CBI CFAQ. So, which means on investment activity there is no supply, no GST. So, here it is a investment activity or not? Sir, as a partner I get profit sir, withdrawal of profit will not come under supply. Now, concentrate. Suppose if the partner enters into a contract with the partnership firm to provide the services to the partnership firm and get some money consideration for the services provided to the partnership firm, then it will become supply or not a supply 71AA, yes it will become supply. For example, so there are three partners in a business. In these three partners, one partner is having knowledge on income tax. So, this partner provided the income tax filing services to the partnership firm and he got some money from the partnership firm, you got it. Now, this is not in the capacity as a partner he is getting, there is a separate contract, correct. Now, in that case, suppose if a third person is coming and providing income tax return and they will pay money, na, that will become supply like that. If a partner enters into a separate contract with the partnership firm and get some remuneration or consideration for that, then only it will become supply under 71AA. Are you understanding this? So, what you need to remember? Salary drawn by partner is not a supply, okay. So, this also you write down. Already you have written investment activity in a, there itself you write down. Therefore, therefore, salary or remuneration paid to partner, salary or remuneration paid to partner is not a supply, is not a supply, okay. Got it? Suppose in the question if you have, in the question if you have amount paid to the partner wherein the partner has entered into a contract with the partnership firm to provide the services, then that will become supply under 71A. Now, so tell me what are the differences between 71A and 71AA? 71AA is activity between any person to any person, but 71AA is activity between a person other than individual and its members. Then look into 71B. What is the difference between 71A and 71B? 71A is any activity, but 71B is only import of services, okay. 71A is, 71A should be in the course or furtherance of business, but 71B may or may not be in the course or furtherance of business, but both 71A and 71B requires consideration. So, example for 71B is Amazon Prime or Netflix subscription, you just write down there, example for 71B is Amazon Prime or Netflix subscription, Amazon Prime or Netflix subscription. Now, where is this Amazon Prime or Netflix located, supplier located? outside India, correct. Netflix is not an Indian company here, Netflix is an outside company, okay, foreign company. Now, you are located in India, are you importing the services? Yes. And you are paying money for that? Yes. Import of service? For a consideration, correct. Is it in the course or furtherance of your business or not in the course or furtherance of your business? No, it is a personal activity. Even then, it will become supply under 71B, you got it. Why sir, personal activities and all they are not bringing in supply 71A, but bringing in supply 71B, because in 71B there is a foreign exchange outflow. So, when we import the services, money will go out of India in foreign currency. Foreign currency outflow means, is it good for the economy or bad for the economy? Bad for the economy, for that reason they are telling that. So, this transaction will be taxable and it will become supply. Are you understanding this? But in 71A, personal transactions are not read as supply. Only in 71C, 
sorry, 71B personal transaction, that to only one activity, what is that? Import of services. So, tell me what is 71B, come on. Import of services for a consideration whether or not in the course or furtherance of business. Sir, but directly they can give not in the course or furtherance of business, na, sir. Because if it is in the course or furtherance of business, anyhow it is covered in 71A. Then why it is given separately in 71B, whether or not point, uh, not we understood, but why it is given in the course or furtherance of business also? Because 71A should be interpreted from whose perspective? Supplier point of view. But 71B should be interpreted from recipient point of view. For Netflix, it will always be in the course or furtherance of business. Now, from whose perspective we have seen? Recipient perspective, your perspective we have seen that it is not in the course or furtherance of business. Understood? Got the clarity? Then, look into 71C. 71C, there are total four activities. Even though without consideration, it will become supply. What are those four activities? Remember with a keyword here, D R I P, drip, D R I P, D for, read, read there, disposal of business asset on which ITC has been availed. Listen, I purchased a AC in my business. At the time of purchase of AC, I have paid the GST and I took the ITC. And that AC, I donated to an orphanage. Now, is it for consideration or without consideration? Without consideration. Remember, only when it is without consideration, you need to refer to 71C. No C, C 71C. You understood. No consideration, then only you should refer to 71C. If the activity involves consideration, you should never come into 71C. Is it clear? So, disposal of business asset. What is the example of business asset here? AC. Am I disposing it of? Yes. On which ITC availed or not availed? Availed. So, now it will become supply. But sir, I am not getting money sir. But why are they telling it as supply? Because you enjoyed the ITC na. As you enjoy the ITC, you pay the liability. You got it? Suppose, if I buy a car, on the car, GST paid cannot be taken as ITC. Now, this car I am donating to a old age home. Will it become supply? No. Why it will not become supply? Dis this is also a business asset. This is also disposed of. But on which ITC is not available. Due to that reason, it will not become supply. You got it. Then, next one you see. So, first one is what? In 71C, in all these cases of 71C, what is common? No consideration. No consideration. So, D, after the D, see the next point. R. What is R? Related party transactions including transaction between distinct persons. So, there are two parties who are treated as related. The related definition we will see later. There are two parties who are treated as related. Between related parties, if there is any activity, even though without consideration, then it is treated as supply. Example, holding and subsidiary company is related parties. Pa. Between them, if there is any transaction, definitely profit sharing and all will be there. That is why they are telling that it is supply under 71C. Same is the case of distinct persons also. Who are related persons, who are distinct persons, we will see little later. Let us complete this and see that. Then next, I, import of services. Now, you read 71B import of service and 71C import of service. Both places they have given import of service. What is the difference between these two? 71B is for consideration, 71C is without consideration, very good. And next difference, 71B import of service, whether or not in the course or furtherance of business, but 71C import of service should be in the course or furtherance of business. Then one more difference is also there, 71B import of service from any person, 71C import of service is from a related person. Now, listen carefully. Holding company outside India, subsidiary company in India, subsidiary company importing the services from the holding company without consideration, but it is used in the course or furtherance of business of subsidiary company. Will it become supply? Yes. Because they are not giving consideration, but profit share they will give. Na. Due to that reason, they are taxing this. 
suppose it is not holding company subsidiary company so two companies one company outside india one company in india independent companies now the import of services without consideration will it become supply no why it will not become supply because it should be from a related person or another establishment located outside india is it clear or not then so import of service why import of goods is not given anywhere very good import of goods is covered under customs that's why import of goods is not given here only import of service is given so d r i d for disposal of business asset on which itc is avail r for related party transaction including transaction between distinct persons i for import of services from a related person or another establishment located outside india then p principal agent transactions okay so in case of any transaction between the principal and agent where agent is acting on behalf of the principal so then also it will become supply so you need to remember these four activities which are treated as supply 71c this is about 71a 71aa 71b and 71c you see next page page 23 i have given a comparative difference between 71a aa b and c look into the table in the next page summary of section 7 subsection 1 can you see see there first 71a what you should know is what is the activity second consideration involved or not third course or furtherance of business from whose point of view and what is the coverage okay 71a what is the activity any activity okay consideration should be present yes and should it be in the course or furtherance of business yes from whose perspective we need to see supplier point of view and whether it is goods or service or both both got it then next 71 aa activity any activity but it should be between a person other than individual and its members consideration yes course or furtherance of business whose point of view and coverage goods or services 71b activity only import of service consideration yes course or furtherance of business may or may not be and from whose perspective we need to see recipient perspective coverage is why import of goods is not given only import of service is given then next 71c red with schedule 1 whenever you are referring to 71c you need to write red with schedule 1 okay so in the d d for disposal of business asset on which itc is avail consideration required or not required not required should it be in the course or furtherance of business may or may not be pa i gave you example of donating to a orphanage donating to a old age home is it in the course or furtherance of my business no but what if i have done something under csr corporate social responsibility then it will be in the course or furtherance of business what if i have given it to my employee under employee welfare it is in the course or furtherance of business so disposal of business asset that disposal may or may not be in the course or furtherance of business and from whose perspective we need to see supplier coverage is only goods why disposal of business asset how service will be in asset business asset means definitely it will be goods only and next r sir what about immobile property if it is there will immobile property come in goods right now we are dealing with what goods and service tax so therefore definitely it should be goods only so immobile assets will not be taken only movable assets then r for what related party transaction including transaction between distinct person whether consideration is essential no and should it be in the course or furtherance of business yes yes and from whose perspective supplier coverage both goods and services whereas i import of services from related person or person located outside india establishment outside india what is the meaning of establishment outside india related means okay what is establishment outside india so example head office not holding company subsidiary company holding company subsidiary company will be related 
establishment outside India means head office outside India, branch office in India. Are you getting this? Now, in that case, I am importing service from my establishment located outside India. You got it? Then, consideration essential or not essential? Not essential. Should it be in the course or furtherance of business? Yes. From whose perspective we need to see? Recipient perspective. Coverage is what? Only services. Then see the last one. Principal agent transaction. Principal agent transaction. Consideration? No. Course or furtherance of business? Yes. Whose perspective? Supplier. Coverage? Only goods are between principal agent. If there is any service transaction without consideration, it will not become supply. You got it? Now answer my question. Principal agent transaction with respect to services, consideration is involved. Will it become supply or not a supply? Supply. Where? 7-1-A. If it is without consideration, will it become supply? No. Because principal agent transaction should be only with respect to goods. Then only it will be coming under 7-1-C. Understood here? Now every time when you refer to 7-1-C, you need to write red with schedule 1. Every time when you refer exclusion from supply, you need to write 7 subsection 2 red with schedule 3. Whenever you are referring to classification of supply into goods or service, you need to write 7 subsection 1A red with schedule 2. Understood? Schedule 1 when you will refer? 7-1-C, activity without consideration. And uh, schedule 2? Classification into goods or services. Schedule 3? Exclusion. Okay. Then, now we are moving on to you know exclusions from the meaning of supply. So, look into exclusions. What are excluded from the meaning of supply? So, we have spalled slow. Remember this keyword spalled slow. Yes, for sovereign functions of government means all activities of government other than the following is excluded from supply. Means these four activities of government is covered under supply and other activities of government is excluded from supply. What are the four activities of government covered under supply? See there. Department of post, transportation of goods or passengers, airport or port services, services provided to business entities covered under supply. Other activities excluded from supply. Can you give me one example of other activities? See there properly. Services provided by government to individuals, is it covered in the list? Sir, department of post covered, transportation covered, airport or port services covered, services to business entities. What if these other services are provided to individuals that is not covered? Example, generally uh, we have this uh, Chennai Metro Water and Sewage Board. CMWSB uh, like that one board is there, Metro Water Sewage Board. What is that service they will provide? Metro Water. They collect the charges? Yes, Metro Water charges they will collect. From whom? From the household. All individuals they will be collecting. Is it covered under supply or not a supply? Why not a supply? Is it Department of Post? Is it Transportation of Goods or Passengers? Is it Airport or Port Service? No, it is service to business entity, no. So, therefore, it is not a supply. Suppose, if the same water supply is provided to a business entity and collect some money, will it become supply? Yes. So, tell me what are the four activities of government covered under supplier? Department of post, transportation of goods or passengers, airport or port service and services to business entities. All other activities of government is excluded from supply. Then P for post. What are the post? Government post, constitutional post, nominated post. Government post means what here? MLAs, MPs, etc. So their tenure will be only for 5 years now. And thereafter they need to vacate the office and again contest in the elections. Now, how much ever big person you may be, from yesterday your face and all is closed. Correct? Because everywhere 
you know i could see only two people's photo in entire chennai one is stalin another is stalin junior you understood so therefore only these two people and what they have achieved okay stalin fine he is a chief minister of the state but what the other guy stalin junior has achieved really i don't know i am clueless i could see him only in two three movies compared to him vijayana is best na correct or not no serious i am serious i am not trolling now i am not trolling i really am not trolling because i used to tell lot of things bad about vijayana but are yaar compared to this guy vijay is okay na yaar at least he has acted in many movies many super hits he is having because now the barometer is what you are a actor if you are a actor you can become cm of this state now it's all about how many movies you have acted comparatively our anna has acted more movies correct or not so now therefore this chinnanna has uh, only 3 4 movies only okay but everywhere his photo only you are seeing correct now from yesterday did you observe what happened election commissioner has put the paste on all the posters there won't be any posters for the next one month why everyone has to vacate the position now no one will be called as chief minister i am mla i am mp i am chief minister no for the next one month all powers gone now entire power is given only to the election commission now they have to mandatorily vacate their office and again they need to contest in the election if they win they are mla mp otherwise they are no one you understood so which means this post is not a permanent post this is only a temporary post so they cannot be called as employees so now whenever they draw the money will they be paid money by the government yes they will be getting lot of money from the government in the form of remuneration so but they will not come under employees okay sir if they are not employees are they required to pay gst generally if there is an employee he is not required to pay gst because employment salary is excluded from supply that's one more point we have e you see employee to employer in the course of employment then whether this mlas mps are called as employees no then their money is also excluded from supply that is about government post then constitutional post constitutional post example pa governor president then supreme court chief justice district collector these are all examples of constitutional post nominated post there will be a body or there will be you know a board under government for which the head of that body or board will be appointed by government example sebi chairman securities and exchange board of india chairman rbi governor these are all some examples of nominated post so tell me what are the three posts which are excluded from supply means no gst on the money that they are getting constitutional uh, government post constitutional post nominated post first government is excluded then their people are excluded correct ah the next one a actionable claims actionable claims other than specified actionable claims this is an amendment here previously actionable claims other than lottery betting gambling was excluded from supply only three were covered under supply what were those three lottery betting and gambling now there is an amendment which says actionable claims other than specified actionable claims is excluded from supply means what are the specified actionable claims which are covered under supply remember hc blog what is this hc blog you can see there below h for horse racing but this is an amendment pa okay remember h for horse racing previously only three actionable claims were covered what were those three lottery betting gambling but now six actionable claims are covered under supply what are the six actionable claims h for horse racing c for casinos so then b for betting okay l for lottery o for 
online money gaming not online gaming online money gaming not online gaming okay then g for gambling sir what is the difference between online gaming and online money gaming if you spend money to play the game it is online gaming if you invest money with the expectation of winning the money then it is known as online money gaming example lot of people will play this uh, free fire minecraft gta vice city by spending money we play lot of games by spending money we will not win the money it is purely spending some games are free games some games as you progress you will be required to spend the money and lot of ps5 games and all so we need to purchase the game it's not free we have to buy the game that is called as online gaming online gaming but that is not covered under actionable claims but online money gaming online money gaming means what betting platforms dream 11 rummy circle online rummy 1x bet pari match a number of platforms are there all these things will be coming under you know online money gaming i gave the difference in the next page please see that online gaming and online money gaming online gaming means what offering a game on the internet or a electronic network and includes online money gaming okay so basically in online gaming we will spend money to play the game but online money gaming means what you see next definition means online gaming in which players pay or deposit money or money is worth okay players play pay how much some money or money is worth money is worth means they will be connecting it to the wallet their wallet including virtual digital asset cryptocurrency bitcoin ethereum doge coin using that also they can play the game in expectation of winning money or money is worth so they will pay or deposit money and play the game in expectation of what winning some money or money is worth in any event including game scheme competition or any other activity now previously also this was covered under actionable claims under betting under betting it was covered but dream 11 dream 11 said it is not betting ours is not a betting platform why ours is not a betting platform actually gst department asked dream 11 to pay 9000 crores as gst demand 9000 crores they are required to pay gst they did not pay the gst of 9000 crores so immediately gst department asked them to pay 9000 crores for which uh, dream 11 said where gst will be applicable no gst is applicable on our platform so for which gst department said no no it is betting you have to pay gst on that but these people said no ours is a game of skill not a game of chance game of chance only betting but ours is a game of skill ours is not a game of chance because just like the tom dick and harry cannot come and play and win the money here yes that's true actually dream 11 is a game of skill only it's not a game of chance how sir sir i don't know anything about cricket sir i don't know anything about any player sir now i will be choosing 11 players and those 11 players should be performing superbly in today's match then only so definitely i will be getting more money correct or not that is what basically here dream 11 how it works now i don't know anything about the player can i choose anyone randomly because i played literally i played for learning how dream 11 works i played 2000 rupees i spent and it was like last season ipl match and i selected some players and in that players whom i selected they did not perform well because i don't know anything about that player what is their average run rate and who will be performing who in the recent matches performed well i don't know anything randomly i chose entire 2000 gone swaha entire 2000 went so it's not a game of chance then it's a game of skill some skill is required so dream 11 is correct in that aspect immediately what government did 
they modified the definition whether or not its outcome or performance is based on skill or chance or both okay now you pay you got it so whether or not its outcome of performance is based on skill or chance or both and whether the same is permissible or otherwise apdina it may be illegal also it's okay whether the same is permissible or otherwise you understood in many states in india there are some apps which are banned app only banned but we can access that app you guys will be knowing it so you will go to us uk somewhere sometime korea and all so sitting in india you will visit night times lot of countries and you will be able to access na correct or not and that to certain platforms and all dot apk file you can download in your mobile play store the app will not be there but you can download you can install into your mobile and you can give one uh, app hide lock also for that so that others and all will not be able to see that app many things you guys will be doing so you know that better okay even though i am talking about different context okay so here here even though the same is permissible or otherwise this online money gaming may not be permitted in india because many platforms got banned recently that online rummy and all got banned okay even though it may be banned but still people can use that and if they play and if they earn any money so that is covered here whether permissible or otherwise under any law for the time being in force then they have to pay gst because specified actionable claims are now covered many companies many gaming companies they have levied gst so close to some 40000 crores of gst demand was served on these gaming companies they all ran away they all ran away delta corp like that one company they also ran away dream 11 owner ran away so who will pay this much money and uh, this they made as a retrospective amendment okay so because then only they can levy gst they made it like a retrospective amendment so now what you need to remember as the meaning of online money gaming ha huh. it's a gaming it's a online gaming ha huh. it's a online gaming wherein we pay or deposit money or money's worth or virtual digital assets okay definition important here definitely they can test it so what is online money gaming here online gaming where we pay money players pay or deposit money or money's worth or virtual digital assets in expectation of winning money money's worth or virtual digital assets okay in any game or competition ah uh, what is that whether or not the outcome is based on skill or chance or both and whether the same is permitted or not permitted or not okay online money gaming will be chargeable to gst sir what about online gaming online gaming also covered under supply but it will be treated as oidar services long back somewhere you would have studied oidr services like that so what is oidr online information database access and retrieval services under that oidr services online gaming will come you understood or not so you just write down over there one line online gaming online gaming falls under falls under o i d a r service online gaming falls under o i d a r service but online money gaming but online money gaming treated as actionable claims but online money gaming treated as actionable claims and falls under goods 
ऑनलाइन मनी गेमिंग फॉल्स अंडर एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स ट्रीटेड एज एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स एंड फॉल्स अंडर गुड्स यू अंडरस्टूड द कंप्लीट डिफरेंस ऑनलाइन गेमिंग विल कम अंडर सर्विसेस ऑनलाइन मनी गेमिंग विल कम अंडर गुड्स ओके स्पेसिफाइड एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स इंक्लूड्स ऑनलाइन मनी गेमिंग नाउ नाउ टेल मी व्हाट आर द एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स व्हिच आर कवर्ड अंडर सप्लाई एच सी ब्लॉग एच फॉर हॉर्स रेसिंग सी कैसिनोस बी बेटिंग एल लॉटरी ओ ऑनलाइन मनी गेमिंग जी गैम्बलिंग सो दीज आर ट्रीड एज स्पेसिफाइड एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स कवर्ड अंडर सप्लाई सर हॉर्स रेसिंग ओके वॉट इज कैसिनो सो दे आर लाइक दीज आर सम प्लेसेस वेर we go and deposit the money and they will give the coins chips they call it as chips red color or green color yellow color like the chips will be there so using the chips we can play lot of games poker games and uh, lot of betting three as like that lot of games will be there in that place we can play that and winning will be through the chips only and whatever money we got we can give it to the counter and they will be giving us like volume kami parnuma puri la pa enna solran i should reduce the volume ha huh. cotton and all will be available no oh. illa pa normal a see pa volume i cannot control okay so my suggestion to you is that if you feel like my voice already my voice is not that great and if you feel this voice itself as louder you keep this cotton in the break already you know it's 121 130 we'll take a lunch break and uh, when you go na some panji panji you know that you keep or headphones you keep whenever you feel like my voice is less you remove that automatically voice will be more because some things are not in my control then someone will say sir your voice is less increase the voice like that and all please pa okay this only i said us don't disturb me in this okay it is in your hands you can do okay fine so now i was discussing about casinos ha casinos horse racing casinos betting if it happens in one particular platform like in one place that is what casino that place is called as casino and then we have hc blog then what is betting sir it need not be in one place anywhere it can happen then next we have so lottery lottery tickets you know online money gaming just now we have seen gambling normal gambling so these are all called as specified actionable claims which are covered under supply and all other actionable claims are excluded from supply okay what are the other actionable claims which are excluded from supply sir actionable claim so first of all what is actionable claim reason an instrument which satisfies four conditions is called as actionable claim i gave it in next page page 26 page 26 you can see what are considered as actionable claims so an instrument which satisfies four conditions are called as actionable claims what are those four conditions you should have a right to receive a benefit or recover a debt and that right is legally enforceable and it can be transferred from one person to another person the holder of that right is entitled to receive benefit or recover a debt example bill of exchange you take when you have a bill of exchange you have right to recover the debt yes transferable from one person to another person yes we can endorse the bill of exchange and whomsoever is having the bill of exchange that person is able to receive the benefit that is recover the debt and is it legally enforceable yes bill of exchange is covered under negotiable instruments act and we can go to the court of law if the other person is not making the payment so bill of exchange is an actionable claim you got it then lottery ticket is an actionable claim yes 
how you have a lottery ticket means you have right to receive the money when the prize money is awarded number two is it legally enforceable yes in the states where lottery system is prevailing for example kerala assam etc and can it be transferred from one person to another person yes and uh, the holder of that lottery ticket is entitled to receive the benefit so lottery ticket is also an actionable claim like that there are a lot of actionable claims but in that actionable claims if it is covered under money definition it is neither goods nor services because money money is excluded from both goods and services so what are the actionable claims which are covered under money definition please see this bill of exchange promissory note and bearer check it is neither goods nor services why bearer check is actionable claim bearer check you have bearer check means what not a crossed check when you have the bearer check, can you transfer it to any other person? Yes. And whomsoever is holding the check, he is going to receive the money. And is it legally enforceable? Yes. So that's an actionable claim. But these three are already covered under which definition? Money definition. And money is neither goods nor services. So that's why there is no GST on that. But remaining actionable claims are treated as goods. In that, only these six actionable claims are covered under supply that is HC block and all other actionable claims are not treated as supply. Example, right to receive arrears of rent is an actionable claim. Somewhere in house property, you will come across right to receive arrears of rent. What is this right to receive arrears of rent means? I have purchased a property from you. Now there is one tenant in that property who did not pay you rent for six months. The moment when you transfer the property, you also transfer the right to recover that six months rent to me, correct? Now I have a right to recover the arrears of rent. So this is an actionable claim, but it is not covered under this HC block and it is other actionable claims. There is no supply on that. Is it clear or not? That is about this. Then, so look into the next one. So we have seen yes. P A. Right now we are into what discussion? What are the activities which are excluded from supply? What is that? Yes, for sovereign functions of government. That is all activities of government other than four. What are they? Department of post, transportation of goods or passengers, airport or port, services to business entities. Then next P, post. What are those post? Government post, constitutional post, nominated post. Then A actionable claims other than hc block then next l l refers to legal fees fee collected by court or tribunal so usually court or tribunals whenever we file a case in court or tribunal we have to pay some fees court fees or tribunal fees this fee collected by them will not be covered under supply so there is no gst on that but sometimes courts and tribunals will be giving their premises on rental to the telecom companies for keeping telecom tower and they will be giving their premises for some persons to open a canteen inside the court premises or tribunal. Now in that case the rental income what they are getting is it also excluded from supply or is it covered under supply? Covered under supply only legal fees collected by court or tribunal is excluded from supply is it clear? Apart from legal fees any other consideration earned by the government example what rent 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 okay so that will be covered under supply is it clear here because that's an amendment so related to that there is one rcm provision there i will connect this point okay so only legal fees collected by the court or tribunal is excluded from supply any other money collected by court or tribunal will be covered under supply then look into the next point land sale including sale of building where entire consideration is received after obtaining completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier so there are two aspects in this sale of land is excluded from supply land is excluded from supply any land here agricultural land or industrial land any sale of land is excluded from supply because why land is a immobile property on immobile property there cannot be any gst that's why it is excluded from supply whereas 
building is also excluded from supply. But when building is excluded from supply, they gave one condition. When entire consideration is received after obtaining completion certificate or first occupation, whichever is earlier. So, what does it mean? Now, there is a flat spa apartment under completion, not at completed. Now, you buy the flat. Now, you buy the flat. Whether it is covered under supply or excluded from supply, covered under supply. Why covered under supply? Are you paying the consideration after completion certificate or you are paying before completion certificate? Before completion certificate. Suppose if you buy a ready to occupy flat, ready to occupy flat means what? They completed the construction, everything over, they got the completion certificate. Now you buy the flat, there won't be any GST. That's where in many places, if you see the real estate advertisements and all, they will be mentioned CC obtained, no GST like that they will highlight. Why no GST? Because already they have obtained the completion certificate. Now, entire money collected will be excluded from supply, no GST on that. So, therefore, what type of flats you should buy if you do not want to pay GST? Ready to occupy flats. Ready to occupy flats means for which completion certificate is obtained. Okay. Now, what if part consideration before and part consideration after? See the next page. See the next page. There are three situations based on this. Sir, entire consideration before completion certificate, covered under supply or excluded from supply. First case, situation number A, entire consideration before completion certificate, covered under supply or excluded from supply, covered under supply. Why it is covered under supply? When is it excluded from supply? When entire consideration is after completion certificate, then only it is excluded from supply. When entire consideration is before completion certificate, it is covered under supply. GST payable or GST not payable? GST payable. And what is the nature of this transaction? Works contract service. The name of this is works contract service. Whereas, second situation you see, case B. Entire consideration after completion certificate, whether covered under supply or excluded from supply? Because entire money after completion certificate, so excluded from supply, it is a sale of immobile property, no GST. Now, third situation is a special situation. Part consideration before completion certificate, remaining consideration after completion certificate. Now, example, sir, flat is construction, sir. You paid some advance. Say 25 lakhs you paid as advance. 75 lakhs is the flat. So, remaining 50 lakhs you will pay after completion certificate. Now, in this case, whether it is covered under supply or excluded from supply, covered under supply. Why is it covered under supply? The provision says entire consideration after completion certificate is only excluded from supply. But here, part consideration before and part consideration after, therefore, it is covered under supply and GST is payable on entire consideration. It is not on 25 lakhs only GST payable. Sir, advance as well as the other amount. What is that? 75 lakhs. Entire 75 lakhs GST will be payable. Are you understanding? And it will be treated as what? Works contract service. Now, in which case it is not chargeable to GST? Sale of building. When entire consideration is received after obtaining completion certificate. Now, listen. Or first occupation which is earlier. Now, listen. Now, what I can do? Advance I can collect in cash. Correct? Advance I can collect in cash. After completion certificate, I will collect the check. So that this cash I will return. So, as per my records, entire money is after completion certificate. This is the scam which lot of builders are doing. What they will do? First, they will collect advance in cash. And later on, full amount they will collect a check. So, as per accounting, entire amount is received after completion certificate. This cash they will return so that there won't be any GST on this transaction. You got it? That is a loophole. Then, there is something called as first occupation. What is that first occupation? Completion certificate is given for the project. But I am not going to complete the project and then give. So, I will be completing based on the requirement. So, bare shell I will make. But interior I will not complete. Now, based on your requirement, I will finish the interior and I will give the flat to you. Now, in that case, I will never obtain completion certificate or I will obtain completion certificate later. That is why what they are telling. For flat wise, you see the, you know, first occupation. So, date of commencement of construction 25th March 2029. 
and when this project got completed 28th uh, September 2021, you understood date of commencement is 25th March 2019, when we completed the construction 28th September 2021, now in this 10 flats first got booked, out of this 10 flats, one person occupied on 15 5 2020 out of these 10 flats one person occupied on 15 5 2020 now this 15 5 2020 will be taken as the deemed date of completion completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier so which is earlier here 28 9 or 15 5 15 5 so as on this date how many flats got booked only 10 flats, on that only GST payable, after this date any flat which is booked there is no GST because entire consideration will be after completion certificate, booked means what, we will pay some money and we will book the flat now, so entire money received is after completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier, so excluded from supply, you got it, now what we have completed is S P A L, S for sovereign functions of government, P post, then A, actionable claims other than HC block, L, legal fees, that is fee collected by court or tribunal, another L, land sale, including sale of building where entire consideration is received after obtaining completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier, then E, E for employee to employer in the course of employment. So, I am an employee working in an organization, salary I will be getting, that salary is excluded from supply. So, on salary there is no GST, because on salary enough of income tax we are paying, so we are adding allowance, this allowance, that allowance, perquisite, everything. So, we are paying income tax, that is why there is no GST on salaried people, okay. But it should be in the course of employment. What is the meaning of course of employment? As per the employment contract, whatever salary they are getting is excluded from supply. What if it is not as per employment contract? Then it will be covered under supply. How sir? I am an employee pa and I get some salary that is excluded from supply. Beyond my employment contract, I may do some work for which I will earn some money. So, that will not be covered under employment, so that will become supply under 71A. For example, there is a chartered accountant. Chartered accountant working as a finance manager in a company, salary is excluded from supply. Now, the company asked this chartered accountant to do one audit, which is not as per his contract, employment contract, but he did that audit for which he was paid some 1 lakh. Is this 1 lakh paid as per employment contract or not paid as per employment contract? not paid as per employment contract, so that particular amount which is received will become supply, but whatever is paid as per employment contract will be excluded from supply, got it? Then one more last one, D, spalled, in that spalled up to E we have seen D, D is death related, pa. funeral, burial, crematorium, mortuary including transportation of deceased, the transportation of deceased uh, lot of vehicles are there now that Dandanaka dance uh, till the burial ground. So, that entire thing, so any amount that is paid, simply are post death, all the amounts which are spent for the dead body, no GST, at least after death may the soul rest in peace, okay, for the sake of that and death related activities are excluded from supply. So, that is about spalled, okay. So, once again can you tell me what is spalled? S for sovereign functions of government, P post, what is that, government post, constitutional post, nominated post, A for actionable claims other than lottery, betting, gambling, horse racing, casinos and online money gaming and then A L, legal fees collected by court or tribunal, another L, land sale including sale of building where entire consideration is received after obtaining completion certificate or first occupation whichever is earlier, then E employee to employer in the course of employment, D death related that is funeral, burial, mortuary, transportation of deceased, crematorium etc. Okay. So, we will take a break and thereafter we will see the remaining points in exclusions and the other aspects in this. So, we will meet at 2.30.
Yes, thank you. K will start. So we have seen so far few activities which are excluded from supply that is PAL. There are four more activities also which are excluded from supply that is S, L, O, W in that S is sale on high seas and W is warehoused goods under custom sold. These two are connected. So please concentrate, I am an importer. I placed an order with the foreign seller. Now the goods are in transit. When the goods are in transit, I transfer the document of title to you. So which means who is the buyer now? You are the subsequent buyer. I am the original buyer. You are the subsequent buyer. Now according to customs, who will be called as importer for payment of customs duty and clearance? A or B? A is original buyer. B is subsequent buyer. I gave the document of title to you. Means who is the owner of the goods? You are the owner of the goods. Means you are the importer. So you will pay the customs duty along with GST. So for transferring this document of title to you, I will be getting some money na, that will be excluded from supply. What is this document of title called as? In case of airways, if we are importing by airways, the name of this document is known as airway bill. In case of waterways, the name of this document is known as bill of lading. In case of airways, the name of the document is airway bill. In case of waterways, the name of the document is bill of lading. So again, I am repeating this. I have given through one chart, have a look into this, which is in page number 24, which is in page number 24. Mr. Rajesh is the original importer. He placed an order with the foreign seller. See the transactions, just follow the points, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. So Mr. Rajesh is the original importer. He placed the order with the foreign seller for goods worth $10,000. Now what foreign seller is doing, he handed over the goods to the shipping company. Now shipping company will take care of transportation from where to where, outside India to India. Now, the shipping company will give one document of title to foreign seller called as airway bill or bill of lading. Means whomsoever shows that bill of lading or airway bill, they will be given the goods. So these are like, you know, bill for the goods. Whomsoever show the bill, show the bill, their goods, they will be able to take the goods. So the airway bill or bill of lading is given to the foreign seller. Now the foreign seller is giving that airway bill or bill of lading to Mr. Rajesh. How it will be sent? Maybe through mail or uh, courier it will be sent. Now Rajesh is having the document of title. Now where the goods are? Where the goods are? With the shipping company. Means the goods are in transit. When the goods were in transit, Mr. Rajesh identified a subsequent buyer, Mr. Satish. And Rajesh has given the airway bill and bill of lading to Satish, for which Satish has paid $11,000. What is the original value of these goods? $10,000. But Satish has paid $11,000. This 1000 rupees is the profit of Mr. Rajesh. Now in this case, who will be called as the importer for these goods? Or who is the owner of these goods? Rajesh or Satish? Satish is taken as the owner of the goods. Now Satish is paying $11,000 to Rajesh. Na. On this $11,000, there is no GST. It is excluded from supply. Why sir it is excluded from supply? Because Satish will anyhow pay customs duty including IGST on $11,000. If Rajesh also pay GST, in turn he will recover it from Satish na? And again Satish also separately is required to pay. There will be double taxation. Two times on the same transaction, they need to pay tax to avoid that only. This supply is excluded from supply. What is this supply? Sale on high seas means sale before high seas means before import is known as high seas. So sale before import is known as sale on high seas that is excluded from supply. Got the clarity? So what you need to remember? Sale before import, sale before import, sale on high seas, sale before import. How it this sale will happen? By way of transfer of documents to title. So whatever money that is being collected is excluded from supply. 
another point sale of warehoused goods under customs what happens in this is that mr rajesh will import the goods into india but it will be kept in a warehouse called as customs warehouse without payment of customs duty thereafter rajesh will sell it to satish now in this case what is the difference between sale of goods during import versus sale of warehoused goods what is the difference can you identify in case of sale of goods before import the goods were in transit whereas in case of sale of warehoused goods the goods are imported and is kept in the warehouse without payment of customs duty then it is transferred to satish now satish will be the importer he will pay customs duty including igst so rajesh is excluded from supply what are the true transactions in the context of import which is excluded from supply sale of goods before import number 2 sale of warehoused goods under customs then look into the next point l liquor license by state government generally state government in some states will sell the liquor in some states they will give the license to sell the liquor for giving this license they will collect a license fee that license fee is excluded from supply because state government don't want any gst to be there on the liquor okay so state government is selling the liquor giving license to sell liquor giving license to sell liquor if they sell liquor first of all there is no levy they are giving license to sell liquor whatever money is collected for that license fee that is excluded from supply now say from state government i got the license i paid 30 lakhs to get the license now i am transferring this license to some other person for 35 lakhs whether it is covered under supply or excluded from supply it is not excluded from supply it is covered under supply only liquor license granted by state government is excluded from supply is it clear or not then below that you just write down here somewhere just one line liquor license granted by sg is only excluded from supply liquor license so please try to get one sticky note here okay so it will be useful otherwise no you will not be able to find the space here and there you need to write liquor license granted by sg liquor license granted by sg is excluded from supply liquor license granted by sg is excluded from supply but 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 liquor license transferred by one person but liquor license transferred by one person to another liquor license transferred by one person to another is not excluded from supply is not excluded from supply okay so only liquor license granted by state government central government will not grant liquor license only state government so liquor license granted by state government is excluded from supply but one person will get the liquor license he transfers it to another person that is covered under supply that is not excluded from supply then look into the next one outside the country movement of goods that is i am a seller you are my buyer we both are in india you place an order with me to sell the goods to your branch in australia but those goods are in my branch in germany so i am moving the goods from my branch in germany to your branch in australia whether the goods are coming into india or leaving from india no so completely goods originates outside india terminates outside india outside the country movement of goods even though for this transaction which happens outside india you make the payment to me in india that is excluded from supply is it clear outside the country movement of goods goods originates where terminates where so there is no gst on that transaction then next so where of goods already we have discussed so these are the exclusions from supply apart from that one more point is there gifts by employer to employee generally employer and employee are treated as related persons any transaction between related parties even though without consideration is supply under 71c but if employer is giving gift to employee 
if the value of gift does not exceed 50,000 rupees per annum per employee, then it is not a supply. Suppose if the gift value exceeds 50,000 per annum per employee, then entirely it will be treated as supply. Okay. Now, we need to understand the difference between gift and perquisite. So, what is the difference sir? Perquisite and gift. Perquisite, whatever may be the amount, it is always excluded from supply because perquisite forms part of salary. While doing income from salaries, perquisite and all you will be adding into the salary income, correct or not? As perquisite forms part of salary, there is no GST on perquisites. Whatever may be the value, let it be 1 lakh or 2 lakhs also, there is no GST. But gift, if the value does not exceed 50,000 only, it is not a supply. If it exceeds 50,000, entirely it is treated as supply. Now, we need to understand the difference between perquisite and gift. What do you feel as a difference? Arising out of employment contract or not. In the contract of employment, if it is clearly mentioned that the employee is eligible for so and so things, then it will be called as perquisite. If it is not mentioned in the contract, then it will be called as gift. Is it clear here? So, what is the difference between perquisite and gift? Mentioned in the offer document, not mentioned in the offer document. Mentioned in the offer document, what is the name of that? Perquisite. Perquisite is not a supply because it will come under salary. We discussed now employee to employer in the course of employment. What if it is not coming under uh, salary of a document, then it is a gift. Then only you need to check that 50,000 rupees point. So, please read this. Gifts by employer to employee not exceeding 50,000 in a financial year, excluding GST per employee is excluded from supply. Also, any benefit covered under salary of a document forms part of salary and excluded from supply. This employer employee transactions, GST implications on employer employee relationship, in detail I have given in page 24 and 25. Have a look into that. Page 24 and 25, look into that. Supply by employee to employer. First, we are discussing employee to employer services. There won't be goods between employee to employer. Why? Because contract of employment is a contract of service. So, due to that reason, employee to employer only services. Now, we will divide it into two. In the course of employment, not in the course of employment. So, before this, I was discussing about a chartered accountant who is working as a finance manager and getting a salary that will be covered under in the course of employment. In the course of employment means it is excluded from supply and there won't be any GST on that. So, you just write down here example CA, CA appointed us, CA appointed us finance manager for a salary of 12 lakhs for a salary of 12 lakhs, this will be coming under exclusion from supply. There is no GST on that because salary is excluded from supply. Okay. What if it is not in the course of employment? Not in the course of employment means, will there be employer-employee relationship or there is no employer-employee relationship? So, just write down there, there is no employer employee relationship there is no employer hyphen employee relationship so there is no employer employee relationship if it is not in the course of employment when it is not in the course of employment again we will divide it into two is it in the course or furtherance of business or not in the course or furtherance of business? If it is not in the course or furtherance of business, it is not a supply. Because no way connected to business, personal activity between employer, employee, personal activities, it will not be coming. If it is in the course or furtherance of business, I gave an example of CA who is appointed as a finance manager, is doing one audit work. So, is it in the course of employment? No, not in the course of employment. But is it related to his profession? Yes. 
it's in the course or furtherance of business. Now, is it for consideration or without consideration? I gave an example of 1 lakh for consideration. Then it will become supply under 71A. So, below this you write down example such CA, such CA doing audit for rupees 1 lakh. This audit is not start audit, some other audit because being an employee they cannot do statutory audit. So, some other audit like internal audit or forensic audit like that some other audit they have done for which they got 1 lakh rupees that will become supply under 71A. What if they are not getting consideration freely they are doing? No consideration means we need to refer where? 71C, super pa. 71C, D is what? Drip, correct? Ah? Drip, D is what? Disposal of business asset on which ITC avail. Is it applicable here? No. Okay. R for what? Related party transaction including distinct person. Will it be applicable here? Sir, why sir? Employer, employee related na? First of all, there is no employer, employee relationship. That is why related party transaction will not come. Import of service from related person will not come. Principal agent transaction also will not come. Consequently, it is not a supply. Sorry. What if it is not in the course or furtherance of business? No need to check anything because 71A as well as 71C, everywhere it should be in the course or furtherance of business now. Only in case of 71B import of service and 71C disposal of business asset on which IT is available, only in these two places in the course or furtherance of business is not required, correct or not. In all other places, if you want to check, check that 7 subsection 1 summary, the previous page. You can see previous page and this page 7 subsection 1 summary if you see everywhere it should be in the course or furtherance of business, correct? Huh? Yes, 71A, yes, 71A, yes, 71C also everywhere it is, yes. Only two places it need not be in the course or furtherance of business. What is that? 71B and 71C disposal of business asset. So, if it is not in the course or furtherance of business, it is not a supply. Now, do not see your book for some time. So, services by employee to employer divided into two, in the course of employment, not in the course of employment. What is your answer for in the course of employment? Not a supply, excluded from supply, okay. Not in the course of employment, now that is divided into two, in the course or furtherance of business, not in the course or furtherance of business, not in the course or furtherance of business. In the course or furtherance of business for consideration, supply under 71A, without consideration, not a supply. Now, look into the next chart, supply by employer to employee. What is the difference between previous chart to this chart? Previous is employee to employer, here it is employer to employee. Now, this will be divided into two, for consideration, without consideration. Example, pa. Usually, employer will be providing canteen facility to the employee, like food and all they will be providing for a nominal amount, like 10 rupees meals they will be providing. Example, you take a income tax canteen, okay. Income tax canteen, 10 rupees they will be providing food and even telephone, uh, the BSNL canteen is there. There also they will be giving for 10 rupees. So, lot of students uh, who go to this ICI for reading in the study hall, they will go to the GST office and income tax office, not for any work and all, okay. So, afternoon they will go there, 10 rupees they will be getting food over there. So, is it really 10 rupees? No. At a concessional rate, their employer is giving it to their employees, but we also go pay 10 rupees and we will be eating it, but it is okay, they will not tell anything and this 10 rupees is actually a consideration, correct, may not be adequate consideration, but that is the consideration, even then GST will be payable, is it clear or not? There is no concept of adequate consideration in GST, is there a consideration involved or not involved, that is what we need to check. So, canteen facility to employees where food is sold at a concessional rate, there is a consideration. So, it will become supply under 71A. Suppose if it is given for free without any consideration, now you need to check is it perquisite or is it gift. 
So, perquisite means what? It will be mentioned in the offer document which forms part of salary. So, therefore, again it is not a supply. Is it clear? What if it is gift? How much you need to see? 50,000. If the gift value does not exceed 50,000, not a supply. If the gift value exceeds 50,000, entirely it is treated as supply under 71C. Example, employer gifted iPhone to employee. And sir, will it be in the course or furtherance of business? Of course, it will be in the course or furtherance of business. That, should, that is deemed. What if it is not in the course or furtherance of business? Then there is no employer-employee relationship. Some other relationship, you understood. Uh, employer giving gift to employee, pa, not in the course or furtherance of business. Then that is personal relationship between them, correct or not. If it is gift given, definitely by default it will be in the course or furtherance of business. Okay, And uh, therefore, generally gift will be for consideration or without consideration. If it is for consideration, we will not call it as gift. You understood. It is like you are gifting one person and you are telling, so this is 300 rupees you give, then how is it called as gift? It will not be called as gift first of all. So therefore, gift means there is no consideration. But if the value of the gift exceed 50,000, GST will be payable. So iPhone definitely more than 50,000. Huh? So therefore, it will be treated as supply and chargeable to GST. Who will pay GST? Employer will pay GST. Out of his pocket, he will pay yes, out of his pocket. So, he cannot tell to employee, iPhone I gave, tax alone you, shall, you have to pay means no one will pay, correct. I gave you iPhone, but I have to pay GST, that alone you give me means no one will give, so employer has to pay. But sir, why employer should pay out of his pocket? Employer is literally not paying out of his pocket. He can take ITC on his purchase. That mobile he is purchasing, na, iPhone. At the time of purchase of iPhone, he pays GST, na that he can take as credit because the outward supply becomes supply. But sir, any goods purchased and distributed as gifts or free samples, we should not take ITC. Like that one blocked credit is there in input tax credit chapter. But this is an exception to that blocked credit. Even though we are giving it as gift or free sample, but is it supply or not a supply? It is supply. So, we can happily take ITC on our invert supply. Means can the employer take ITC on the gift purchased? Yes. So, entire value treated as supply under 71C. Na. Here you just write down, employer can avail ITC on gift purchased. Employer can avail employer can avail ITC on gift purchased. Employer can avail ITC on gift purchased. Suppose if uh, one Android mobile is given, somewhere like 40,000 mobile is given. Now, is it supply or not a supply? Not a supply. Why value does not exceed 50,000? So, it is not a supply. While determining value, whether we need to include GST or exclude GST, generally value will be excluding GST. So, that is what I have given, value will be excluding GST. Now, you understood about employer, employee? First chart you got the clarity now, now second chart you tell me. What is the second chart? Supply by? Employer to employee. Let it be goods or service or both or only goods? Both. Goods or service or both. Sir, how gift will be service, sir? Why one honeymoon package can be given as a gift? Possible na, pa. Other service. One tour trip, uh, etc. and all can be given. When uh, dinner can be given as a gift. Dinner in one Taj hotel. Okay. So, employer is giving a gift. What is that gift? Uh, dinner in Taj hotel. You go with your family or with anyone. You go and eat. I will pay the bill. That is also gift only na. You understood or not? So, employer should take care of employee properly. Then only, you know, organization will grow. You understood or not? Not every employer will be like uh, CAs who will torture their article students. There are some good employers are there in earth. So, they will give lot of things to the employee. Wherein I heard last year, pa, somewhere in this uh, OMR ECR area, one software company has given a BMW car to their employee. Five employees, five BMW cars. Another software company to 100 of their employees, they have given Swift car. 
swift car worth each car worth 10 lakhs they have given as a gift okay and somewhere in north pune i think so one jewelry shop owner to all their employees one gold chain he is giving as a gift for diwali okay now these values and all what more than 50000 then it will become supply okay so now it can be goods or it can be services okay now supply of goods or services by employer to employee divided into two for consideration without consideration for consideration what is your answer supply 71a without consideration again divided into two perquisite or gift perquisite what is your answer not a supply gift divided into two value less than or equals to 50000 per annum not 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 per month per annum per employee one employee 50000 per annum per employee then it is not a supply what if it exceeds 50000 per annum per employee then it will become supply one special situation you see say employer is giving gift on a quarterly basis first quarter he gave a gift for 10000 so not a supply second quarter he gave a gift for 20000 so 10 plus 20 30 not a supply third quarter he gave a gift for 30000 now the first quarter and second quarter also will become supply in third quarter how 10 plus 20 plus 30 60000 more than 50000 more than 50000 means entirely it will become supply so first quarter second quarter whatever tax was not paid is required to be paid now you understood then look into the next one so this is about exclusions then we are moving on to some important definitions related to this uh, inclusions and exclusions so see the next area page 25 same page after this discussion employer employee see the next one definitions we have these definitions mainly they will not be asking us to write this definition but somewhere in the question it will be useful to know whether it is goods or whether it is services whether it is business or not there it will be useful so no need to buy heart this just if you understand that will be sufficient okay first to goods meaning we should know goods means what generally goods means what immobile immobile so immobile will not come under goods correct or not so that is the meaning goods means any kind of movable property and goods excludes you see what are excluded from goods definition money and securities also see the next page service definition service definition also excludes money and securities correct ah? can you see that which means money and securities are neither goods nor services okay sir why money there is no gst and stupidity na, to tax tra gst on money i am giving you 500 rupee note you are giving me 500 rupee note exchange pa on this if gst is levied so i am not selling 500 rupee note you are not selling me 100 rupee notes that's meaningless you got it so that's why there is no gst on a mere transaction involving money so money is neither goods nor services same way securities neither goods nor services why because on securities there is already something called a security transaction tax is security transaction tax subsumed into GST not subsumed into GST due to that reason there is no GST on securities you got it so what are two things which are excluded from both goods and services definition money and securities now look into goods definition goods includes goods includes so actionable claims just now we have seen what is the meaning of that actionable claims then growing crops grass and things attached to our farming part of earth agreed to be severed under a contract of supply means what example i have a tea could plantation you know tea could take take mono so this uh, teak wood or a take wood so basically that is a costliest wood on earth so if any furniture is made out of that wood so normal furniture normal one sofa or bed and all will be 20,000, 30,000 means if it is made up of teak wood, it will be 60,000, 70,000 like that. So, because that is scarce product, okay, like how gold is the costliest metal, like that in wood, teak wood is the costliest wood. 
and uh, this teak wood plantations I am having costly you know wood now. It is attached to earth, but I enter into contract with a furniture company to deliver it after 6 months cutting and delivering it. So, it is movable, immovable as on today, immovable, it is attached to earth. But as per contract, I will cut it and deliver, so it will become movable in future. So, they are telling that you treat it like goods. So, any trees, plantations or anything attached to earth, which are agreed to be severed, severed means what? Cut under a contract of supply, then it is treated as goods. Okay. So, now quickly, what is goods means? Any kind of movable property. Goods excludes what? Money and securities. Goods includes what? Two things. Actionable claims, growing crops and trees attached to earth or farming part of land agreed to be severed under a contract of supply. Now, money means what, sir? You see there, money means Indian currency or foreign currency or any instrument recognized by RBI. What are examples of instrument recognized by RBI? We already discussed in actionable claim, bill of exchange, bearer check, promissory note, traveler check. These are some examples of instrument recognized by RBI. But money definition excludes uh, currency held for numismatic value, means what? Old coins. Okay. Now, my question to you is, I am selling a old coin. Can I sell the old coins? Yes, lot of people will be selling old coins. I am selling a old coin. For sale of that old coin, I have got some money. Okay. Now, is it covered under supply of goods or not? Yes. Why? Money excludes old coins. Goods excludes money. Goods minus money. Money minus old coins. Minus into minus plus. So, goods includes old coins. You understood or not? An exclusion to the exclusion is inclusion. You understood, Appa? An exclusion to the exclusion is inclusion. So, write down below, sale of old coins hyphen sale of goods. Sale of old coins, sale of old coins is treated as sale of goods. Same way, sale of cryptocurrency. You know right cryptocurrency, what are called as cryptocurrency? Lot of coins are there, bitcoins, ethereum coins like that, lot of coins are there. So, which is called as cryptocurrency, which works on blockchain technology, that cryptocurrency I am selling. Okay. Now, this sale of cryptocurrency, is cryptocurrency recognized by RBI or not recognized by RBI? Not recognized by RBI means it will not come under money. As it is not coming under money definition, so it will be treated as sale of goods. Okay. So, tell me what is the meaning of money come again? Indian currency or foreign currency or any instrument recognized by RBI and it excludes old coins, old coins. Then, look into service definition. Already we know in service one point, what is that? Service excludes money and securities. Service means what? Anything other than goods. Anything other than goods means balancing figure. Sale of land you take, sale of land. Is sale of land goods? No, as it is not goods, it will become service. You understood? Sale of building, entire consideration or sale of building, is it goods? No, immobile. So, it will become service. Sir, what kind of a definition, sir? Yes, when we are lazy, we will not be able to tell definition. We will tell anything other than goods is service because of which the stupid uh, interpretations and all will come. But again, they have excluded it. Thank God. Otherwise, on land and building, there will be GST. They have excluded it from supply. But first it should be covered under supply, then only it will be excluded. Now, where is it covered under supply? Under services. So, services means what? Anything other than goods is called as service. And service excludes money and securities. Look into service includes, first point, 
transaction in money for a separate consideration. Example, I have foreign currency. Say, I got some hundred dollars as foreign currency from YouTube, okay. And that I want to convert into Indian rupees. To convert into Indian rupees, what I will do? I will approach my bank. My bank will convert hundred dollars into Indian rupees. What is per dollar today? 83 rupees, for example. Now, 100 into 83, 8,300 rupees I should get. But will I get 8,300 or less than 8,300? Less than 8,300 because they will deduct a currency conversion fee. You understood? So, 2 percent or 1.5 percent they will deduct currency conversion fee. So, is it transaction in money without consideration or separate consideration is there? Separate consideration. What is the name of that separate consideration? Currency conversion fee that will be treated as supply of service. Is it clear or not? You just write down there example currency conversion fee. Currency conversion fee. The next uh, service includes facilitating or arranging transaction in securities. Sir, securities is excluded, but facilitating or arranging transaction in securities is a service. Example, you are selling, someone is buying, but I am acting as a stock broker. I am facilitating this transaction. So, I get a brokerage or commission that will be covered under service. You are selling, someone is buying and these shares are maintained in a DMAT account, depository, will collect some charges. So, that is also facilitating or arranging transaction in securities. See the example, stock broker, depository, okay. Now, tell me what is service definition, come on, do not see. Service means anything other than goods, excludes money and securities includes facilitating or arranging transaction in securities or transaction in money for a separate consideration. Now, looking into the next definition, consideration. For all these definitions are section 2, okay. So, first to make an effort to remember that. If you are able to remember the subsection, you try to remember, otherwise at least section 2, okay. All definition will be section 2. Now, See this consideration definition. Consideration is monetary or non-monetary, both, both, it can be both. Either it can be monetary or it can be non-monetary. Monetary means money, non-monetary means what? In kind, okay. Now, consideration excludes what? That is important. Consideration excludes what? Refundable security deposits are not treated as consideration. Example. I give you a property on rent and usually properties which are taken on rent, what the property owner will do? 10 months rent they will collect as advance, correct? Security deposit and when they will give that security deposit at the time when we vacate the house, am I right? Or at the time when we vacate the property. So, this is known as refundable security deposit that will not be treated as consideration in the hands of property owner. Is it clear? Same way, when you take a mobile connection or when you take a gas connection, etc., you need to give a security deposit, but that is not refundable. Then is it treated as consideration? Yes. So, which deposits are not treated as consideration? Refundable security deposit. Then second point you see, one more point is also there in exclusion. Subsidy from central government or state government. Example, pa. As central government is encouraging usage of electric vehicles. See, we are importing lot of fuel. As we are importing lot of fuel, other countries are becoming rich at our cost. That is why central government from the beginning, their idea is to go for electric vehicles, electric motor vehicles. But electric motor vehicles has its own challenges. We do not know where to do the recharge and all these will be a difficult process. But people, they are encouraging the people by making the purchase. But the cost of electric vehicles is high compared to normal vehicles. You know that? You take a normal bike. Pa. Normal bike 1 lakh means the same model or similar model, electric bike will be 1 and a half lakh. Okay. So, then why sir people will be interested to buy? They will be buying only for the sake of? saving in the fuel cost. 
but still government is giving a subsidy to the dealer to promote. When you are buying an electric bike, central government will pay 10,000 rupees per bike as a subsidy to the dealer. You understood or not? So, who is getting subsidy from whom? The dealer is getting 10,000 rupees subsidy from the central government. So, that will not be treated as consideration. You understood? Sir, subsidy from central government, state government only not treated as consideration or any subsidy not treated as consideration? Only central government, state government not treated as consideration. Subsidy from any other person will be treated as consideration. Sir, any other person also will be giving subsidy? Yes, any other person also will be giving subsidy. How, sir? Example, generally this car manufacturers will get subsidy from the tire manufacturers. Why? Because car manufacturer will be using that brand tire. Now, in future when you replace the tire, definitely you will replace that brand tire only. Example, you purchased a car pa, which has a MRF tire. Now, you are replacing. Will you replace C8 and Bridgestone tire or you will replace MRF tire only? Because four tires, MRF, one tire when you are replacing, you will not replace with some other company. But actually, can you replace some other company? Yes. Definitely you can, but you will not do that because psychologically you will think only this tire I need to replace. So, this company only I need to replace like that you will be thinking. So, because of which MRF future sales will increase for which the tire manufacturer will pay a subsidy to the car manufacturer. Now, in this case is this subsidy treated as consideration or not treated as consideration? Treated as consideration. Why? Because this subsidy is from central government or state government or others? Others. So, now. What are the two exclusions from consideration definition? Subsidy from CGRSG, number two, refundable security deposit. Now, consideration can be received from recipient or any other person. What we need to see is presence of consideration. Example, when you buy a bike and you get a free after sale service, is this free after sale service really free? No. At the time of purchase of bike itself, you will pay some money. Na? So, the dealer who is doing free after sale service, he will recover that money from the manufacturer. Are you getting this? So, this money what the dealer recovers from the manufacturer. So, who is the recipient to the dealer? You are the recipient. But who is paying the consideration? Some other person is paying the consideration. So, consideration is involved or not? Yes. One more example. I enter into contract with the holding company to provide the services to them but I got the consideration from the subsidiary company. Is consideration present or not in the transaction? Yes. But consideration need not be received from the recipient. What we need to see is presence of consideration. Is it clear or not? Then look into the next point. Consideration should be in respect of, in response to or for the inducement of supply of goods or services. Okay. So, in respect of means what? this is the service or this is the product, this much money you are required to pay. So, it is in respect of. Example, CA intermediate classes, fee is 75,000 plus GST, example of in respect of or sale of one book 300 rupees, this is in respect of. In response to means, so there is no consideration specified, but the recipient will be giving some consideration, some money in response to the activity. For example, last batch, November 23 exam, I took uh, same way free fast track batch. I have started this from the last four attempts. This is the fourth time I am taking. Okay, And uh, last attempt what has happened, one student uh, completed, he attended some YouTube lectures. And in the YouTube video, fast track, same batch, fast track batch, he attended YouTube and uh, somewhere, I don't know his name also, he completed CA intermediate. What he did, in YouTube, there is an option called a super thanks up. And he paid me 500 rupees through that, through YouTube he paid. I don't know his name, I don't know why he paid. So, it's like a donation, as you are doing it for free, take it, like that he has given. It's okay, fine. Now, that 500 rupees will become consideration in my hands. Yes. Why it will become consideration in my hands? In response to. Then, 
usually nowadays what happens once a movie become hit producer will give car to the hero correct or not now is the car collected by the hero from the producer is it treated as consideration or not yes in what category in response to you understood of course some people will expect helicopters and all so therefore you know for that movie should become super hit okay and uh, this has become a fashion even uh, recently also for jailer movie Kalanidhi Maran has given one luxury car to producer, uh, sorry, director and uh, hero, etc. and all. To everyone they will give. But these and all will become consideration. But sir, what if this is given between four walls? No one will know this. No one will know this. But what these people will do? They will give the gift and they will put it in the media. The moment it comes into the media, not only you, GST department also will be watching. So therefore, GST will be payable on that consideration. Then for the inducement of, for the inducement of means what? So inducing a person means offering the money and making the person to do the activity for the sake of that money. You understood? That is known as inducement of. Okay. So it's like, so I am conducting this free batch na, and uh, one person so what he told, uh, if you do it for free, so what is the benefit you will get? You only are spending, what is the benefit you will get? Everything in life we will not do expecting something in return. So I told him, no, no sir, I want to do. You do it in my brand name. I will give you money. How much ever you want, I will give you. You do it in my brand name. I said, no sir, sorry, I cannot do that. Suppose had I collected that money, and did this, then it will be coming under consideration, inducing a person to do something. You got it. Understood? Of course, as I rejected that offer, so that person uh, is stopping some students to come to the classes. That's okay. No issue. So, anyhow, YouTube, it will be there. Na. YouTube channel and all, they cannot block. Correct or not? So, then, say this. Look into this. Next one. Consideration should be in respect of or in response to or for the inducement of supply of goods or services. You understood these three terms? In respect of, in response to, for the inducement of. Then see the next one. Activity without consideration or consideration without activity is not a supply under 71A. Activity without consideration, you know, charitable activities. Consideration without activity, example, consideration without activity, donation, donation. Consideration is there, but there is no any activity, donation. That to what type of donation? Conditional or unconditional? Unconditional donation. Example here, you go to a temple, you give some money, you do not expect anything in return. So, what type of donation it is? Unconditional donation. So, that unconditional donation not treated as consideration, you understood. Consequently, the activity will not become supply. What if you donate money and you say, my name should come on the top of the temple? God name also next, my name only should come like that when you say, then it will be called as what? Conditional donation. So, the donation will be treated as consideration. Sir, generally there is something called as corpus donation. Corpus donation means for a particular purpose, we will be collecting donation to construct a, you know, like a library or to construct one bus shelter or to construct one old age home, like that we will con collect the donation. That is called as corpus donation for a particular purpose. Now, in that case, will it be coming under conditional donation or unconditional donation? Still, it is unconditional only. Because basically, pa, obligation to do something in return to the person who has given the donation. Every donation will be for a purpose only. Otherwise, it is called as begging. For example, if I am coming and telling, what is the name of it? Begging only, na. Ayah, like that if I say, there is begging. 
I have to ask a reason. I have to tell a reason. I am constructing a temple. For that you give me. Or I am constructing a library. For that you give me. Then it will be called as donation. Otherwise it is begging. Correct. So now that donation I am collecting for a purpose. But that does not mean I have an obligation to do something for you. Suppose if you put an obligation on me. Wherein you know in some uh, orphanages and all. So people will give donation. And they will make the kids who are over there to pray for the donors. So and so person, today's food he has given because of him only. Thank you God, I am able to fulfill. So he and his family should be living. Like that people will mandate. No, my names they should tell. Then only I will give. What kind of morons you know they are. You give money and let them eat. No, why they should tell about your name. But this is mandated. You are giving money and are me putting one obligation on them. So it is conditional donation. You give money for anadhanam, leave it. So then it will not be called as conditional donation. It will be unconditional donation. So which will be treated as consideration? Unconditional donation is not treated as consideration. Conditional donation is treated as consideration. Consequently, it will become supply. Got the clarity about these donations? Now, sir. Donor name is displayed sir, donor name is displayed. The display of donor name gives a business advantage to the donor. You gave me money to construct a temple. You did not ask me to put your name. But as a gratitude, I have displayed the list of donors. Okay. Usually if you see in some places and all, even ICI if you see, so for one building which they have constructed list of donors. In temple and all, they will be putting list of donors like that, okay. Actually, ICI has to put all of your names as list of donors because every six months you will be giving money to them in the form of exam fees. And uh, but they will not be putting your name. Suppose if they display your name, conditional donation, uh, unconditional donation. Uh, unconditional because you are not asking them. As a gratitude, they are putting it. You understood. And therefore, it will be coming under unconditional but listen display of name gives a business advantage to the donor actually one jewelry shop owner donated say his name is paras jain donated by paras jain no business advantage donated by paras jain proprietor jain jewelers then it will be business advantage you got it so therefore it will be deemed as conditional donation so that is what if donor name is displayed anywhere in the premises against the donation, out of gratitude but not as a compulsion. If individual name is displayed, no business advantage to the donor, not a supply. If display of name gives business advantage to the donor, then it will be treated as sponsorship service. That will be treated as consideration. So then company name if it is displayed, again check whether the company name and its brand name is same. For example, donated by India Cements Limited. Company name also India Cements Limited. Brand name also India Cements Limited. So therefore, it will be coming under business advantage. Suppose, if the company name is different from the brand name. Example, donated by, you know, Fangs Technologies Private Limited. We don't know what is a brand name. That is not a brand name. That's a company name. But actually, it owns a brand called as Vivo. Vivo is the mobile brand. So that brand is owned by Fangs Technologies Private Limited. So donated by Fangs Technologies Private Limited in brackets, Vivo like that if you mention, then there is a business advantage to the donor. Now you see this example, illustration, the temple of ancestral deity of Mr. Aman Goel and his family is located in Beri, Haryana. The temple is run by a charitable organization. Registered under Section 12AA of the Income Tax Act 1961. The family has got unshakable faith in their ancestral deity. Mr. Aman is a big entrepreneur having flourishing business of tiles in Gurugram. Upon the birth of their first child, he donated 10 lakhs to the said temple for construction of a sitting hall in the temple. On the main door of the sitting hall, a nameplate was placed stating donated by Aman Goel upon birth of first child. Now, is there a business advantage or not? No. So, first you need to write 
if donor name is displayed anywhere in the premises and such display of name is not getting any business advantage to the donor, then such donation is treated as unconditional donation and it is not treated as consideration, not treated as consideration. Consequently, the said activity is not a supply. Suppose, same question, if it is changed to donated by Aman Goel, proprietor, his company name, okay. Then in this case, it will be business advantage. It is deemed as conditional donation, treated as consideration and consequently, it will become supply under 71A. Understood? Then, look into the next one, meaning of person. Already you know person under income tax act. Can you tell me the meaning of person under income tax act? Individual, HOF, AOP, BOI, then company, body corporate, local authority, artificial juridical person. Same list extra central government and state government. Central government and state government is also person under GST. Remember central government and state government is not required to pay income tax but they will be required to pay GST. But in that also all activities are excluded from supply except four. What are the four activities which are covered under supply? Department of post, airport or port service, transportation of goods or passengers, services to business entities. So person under income tax act plus central government or state government is person under GST. Then meaning of business. So, there is a general meaning of business, basically how it will be relevant is that they will give a question in the, you know, like they will give one transaction in the question, you need to know whether it is business or not. Remember, by easy way I will tell you, all activities are business except personal activities. All activities are business except personal activities, so everything will come under business. 99 percent every activity will come under business, unless otherwise it is a personal activity, okay. Now, they have given a definition for that. This definition, even if you forget also, do not worry. Just check in the question, is it a personal activity or not? If it is not a personal activity, then it will be in the course or furtherance of business, okay. Now, see the first one, trade, commerce, manufacture. Trade means what? Sale of goods. Commerce means what? Service sector. Trade means good sector, pa. commerce means service sector. Manufacture means conversion of raw material into FG. So, trade, commerce, manufacture. Then, profession, occasion, adventure. These three are related to skills. Profession means you got a skill by way of qualification. Occasion means you got the skill by way of experience. Adventure means you are using the skill not for your living but as a passion. Then it will be called as adventure. Wager means betting activities or any other similar activity. So, what will come under the general meaning of business? Trade, commerce, manufacture, then profession, occasion, adventure, then wager or any other similar activity. Now, its incidental or ancillary is also covered. What is this incidental or ancillary means? Incidental means, so incidental ancillary means connecting to that. For example, a chartered accountant is doing practice his profession. He takes classes and earns money is incidental or ancillary to his profession. And he writes a book and earns some royalty income will be coming under incidental or ancillary to his profession. Is it clear? For the main activity, all connecting activities will come under incidental or ancillary irrespective of volume or frequency, whether you do it one time or ten times, so that will come under business. Whether or not for a pecuniary benefit, pecuniary benefit means profit motive. Pecuniary benefit means profit motive. Whether profit motive is present or not, it will be treated as business. So, you tell me what is the general meaning of business? What are the eight activities? Trade, commerce, manufacture, then profession, vocation, adventure wager or any other similar activity, three special points, incidental or ancillary, irrespective of volume or frequency, whether or not for a pecuniary benefit. Why this pecuniary benefit is relevant? Because 
there is a temple which is selling this dairies and calendars. If you see Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam temple, they will be selling dairies and calendars. Okay. Now, this sale of dairies and calendars is for profit motive or non-profit motive? Definitely non-profit motive. They do not have to sell dairies and calendars for the sake of living. You understood? For crores and crores money they are having. Pa. You got it? So, to run the temple, they do not need this. This is purely non-profit motive. Okay. And in that case, they are selling some money they are collecting, 100 rupees or 50 rupees they are collecting. Will it come under trade? Yes. Why it will come under trade? Even though it is not for profit motive, it will come under business. You got it? Then there are some specific activities which are treated as business. Entry ticket. So, entry to any place. Entry to cinema theater or entry to theme park or amusement park that will come under business. Holding an office accepted by a person in the course or furtherance of his trade profession or occasion. Example. There is a chartered accountant who became head of the ICI, like president or chairman, etc. By holding that position, they earn some money. So, that will be also covered under business. That is called as holding an office accepted in the course or furtherance of trade, occasion, or profession. Or, example, one more example there is an actor. Being an actor is a vocation. That actor will become head of the movie artist association. And for becoming the head of the movie artist association, they will earn some money. Sometimes only that money they will be earning. Okay. Now, in that case, will that also be coming under business? Yes, that is this. So, you are holding a position. What is the position? Chairman or president, like that one position, which is in the course or furtherance of your trade, profession or occasion. One more example. There is a doctor. Okay. Doctor is a profession. He is appointed as a secretary to one temple and he earned some money by acting as a secretary. Will it come under business? No. Why it will not come under business? Not in the course or furtherance of his trade, occasion or profession. You understood? Suppose if the doctor becomes head of the medical association and gets some money, then it will come under business. Then, supply of goods or services in connection with commencement or closure of business. At the time of starting business, we will buy some assets and those assets may not be useful for the business, so we will sell it off. Is sale of assets our business? No. At the time of liquidation also, we will sell some assets. Is sale of assets our business? No. Even then, it will be coming under business. That is not our main activity. Sir, you started a restaurant, sir. You close down that restaurant. When you close down the restaurant, the furniture, AC and all you will sell. Na? Is sale of furniture and AC your business activity? No. But that is done at the time of closure of business. So, therefore, even that activity also treated as business. Then, provision of facilities or benefits to its members by a club association or society. Example, there is a resident welfare association, apartment owners association. What are the common expenses incurred by apartment owners association? Lift maintenance, garden, security, parking, common area lighting, etc. And how they will recover that money from the members in the form of maintenance charges. That activity also will come under business. Then any activity of a race club including betting transactions. All activities of race club will come under business and all activities of government also will come under business. So, now, instead of remembering this definition, I told you now a simple way. What is that? All activities will come under business unless it is a personal activity. Then, look into the next definition, meaning of related. This related definition is important. You should, so far the definitions, if you, can, if you have just read it once, that is okay that this related definition will be applied in many questions. Okay. So, mark this related definition as very, very important and there are total 9 points and all these 9 points you should make an effort to remember. Okay. See the first one. Such, why, why we are discussing related parties definition? We have come across related parties in two places where 71C related party transaction including transaction between distinct persons. Then 
import of services from a related person or other establishment located outside India. Correct. Now, related parties, total 9 points we have. See the first one, such persons or officers or directors of one another's business. What does it mean? In my business, I am appointing you as an officer or director. In turn, in your business, you are appointing me as officer or director. Now, we both have mutual interest in our business. So, we both are treated as related. You understood? So, X is appointed as officer in Y's business and Y is appointed as officer in X business. Now, X and Y are treated as related. And one more point they have added recently is that director of a company and company is also related. Director of a company and company is also related. So, underline that. So, this point they can test. Director of a company and such company is always related. For example, there is a company with three directors. Each and every director and the company, if any transaction is made between them, that is a related party transaction. Then next, what is the first point here? Such persons are officers or directors of one another's business. Second, they are legally recognized partners of a firm. There is a partnership firm. So, A, B, C are the partners of that firm. Now, A and B are related, B and C are related, A and C are related. Sir, whether firm and partners are related? No. Only partners of a firm are related, but firm and partners are not related. Now, third point, employer and employee, okay. So, already we have seen employer and employer related. So, tell me these three points, come on, repeat. First one, such persons or officers or directors of one another's business. Number two, they are legally recognized partners of a firm. What is the meaning of legally recognized? Legally recognized means, so that firm should be registered. Okay, that partnership firm should be registered. They are legally recognized partners of a firm. And number three, employer and employee. Any doubt in these three points? You can remember now easily. Next three points related to control. Okay. So, look into the fourth point, which says any person directly or indirectly owns, holds or controls 25 percent or more of the outstanding voting stock or shares of both of them. You do not have to remember this. You try to remember easily two companies, please concentrate, two companies having a common shareholder holding 25 percent or more in the two companies, then those two companies are related, is it clear? There are two companies, these two companies having a common shareholder, how much that common shareholder has invested? 25 percent or more, now these two companies are treated as related parties, you understood? Why sir 25 percent? Because that person will be an influential person to take any decision. Without his vote, decision cannot be taken because majority required a 75 percent. If 25 percent itself is with him, so his decision will be crucial for the organization. So, that is why any activity between these two companies is a related party transaction. Now, how one company will know that he has invested 25 percent in the other company? Every person who invests 25 percent or more in the other company has to disclose that with every company. For example, here A has invested 25 percent or more in X limited and 25 percent or more in Y limited. Now, A should disclose that he has invested more than 25 percent in Y limited with X limited and that he has invested more than 25 percent in X limited, you need to disclose that fact with Y limited. So, now between X limited and Y limited any transaction is there, then it will be related transaction. Then look into fifth point, you understood fourth point, what is it you need to remember for fourth point? Two companies having a common shareholder holding 25 percent or more makes those two companies related. Then next one, one of them directly or indirectly controls the another. Sir, control means what generally? Investment more than 50 percent holding subsidiary, investment more than 50. Sir, if not through investment, at least through majority board of directors, two companies, pa, company A, company B. For company A, A, B and C are the directors, okay. Company B, A, B and D are directors. 
now a b c a b d who are common a b and a b two out of three common means majority common correct so which means these two companies are treated as related so what is the meaning of control control can be investment more than 50 percent or majority board of directors majority common board of directors or controlling the operations controlling the operations means what investment may not be more than 50 percent but that company is under the control of a another company or that business is under the control of another person through contract that is known as control of operations example oyo rooms oyo rooms will come under the concept of control by way of operations how sir oyo do not own any hotel they don't own any hotel what they have done is that they will be taking over all the hotels and they will run it in the name of oyo rooms and the advantage for them is that so they have a very good branding so that branding many reasons okay so lot of you know lot of people will discuss their future and all in oyo rooms only so therefore oyo rooms have become so popular because of that reason now what will happen is that you know there is a normal hotel or a lodge etc and they will have lot of issues but the moment when it is oyo rooms they will not have any issue got it so that's why they will be giving their hotel to oyo on a contract now oyo is controlling this hotel by way of operations so that is also called as control so there are three meanings of control either by investment more than 50 percent or control by way of majority common board of directors or control by way of operations then look into sixth point both of them are under direct or indirect control of a third person two companies having a same parent company now those two companies are related but two kids pa, same father mother different related or not uh, related no like that you understood so two companies having a same parent company okay for example x limited is controlled by a limited y limited is also controlled by a limited two companies x limited and y limited two companies are under the common control of a limited now this x and y are treated as related so tell me the next three points first three points is what such persons or officers or directors of one another's business legally recognized partners of a firm employer and employee correct next three points two companies common shareholder 25 percent or more or one company controlling the another company or two companies are under the common control of a third person you understood then look into next three points together they directly or indirectly control a third person together means you take any company having two shareholders okay major two shareholders if those two shareholders together control the company control means what more than 50 percent then those two shareholders are related is it clear for example there is a company with 100 shareholders you take any two shareholders say a and b are two shareholders together a and b has invested more than 50 percent in the company which means a and b are treated as related so together x limited invested 28 percent in a limited and y limited invested 30 percent in a limited now both x and y together how much they have invested more than 50 correct 58 percent which means these two people control the company so therefore x limited and y limited are treated as related they are members of the same family family is not defined or defined defined in gst family is defined so what is the meaning of family spouse and children spouse means for husband wife for wife husband and children whether or not dependent spouse and children whether or not dependent whereas brothers sisters parents grandparents if they are wholly and mainly dependent on that person that is the meaning of family can you tell me family definition once again spouse and children whether or not dependent so they may or may not be dependent then next parent brothers sisters parents grandparents 
if they are wholly and mainly dependent on that person. Now, whether in-laws are coming under family definition? No, in-laws are not read as family. You can check family definition, in-laws not given, mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, no in-law. And one more point also remember, for a grandfather, grandchildren will never come under family. But for grandchildren, grandparents will come under family. Check. Children given a grandchildren given a children. They did not give grandchildren. But parents wise, if you see, grandparents is given. You understood. That is, for me, my grandfather is family. But for my grandfather, I am not family. I don't know how. Okay. So, therefore, that is the definition here. Then, ninth point, sole selling agent. Sole selling agent means there is only one agent through whom all the supplies are made. That sole selling agent is also related. Now, tell me what are the last three points. Together, they control a company. They are members of the same family and sole selling agent. Okay. This is about related definition. Now, look into illustration 2. Examine whether the activity of import of service in the following independent cases would amount to supply under section 7 of CGST Act. Before this, import of services will become supply in which place? 71B, 71C. Provision alone, can you tell me once? 71B, import of services. For, for consideration or not for consideration? For consideration, whether or not in the course or further ends of business. Very good. Then, 71C, import of service. Import of service from a related person or another establishment located outside India. For consideration or without consideration? Without consideration. But it should be in the course or further ends of business. Now, read the first one. Ms. Srinidhi Kaushik received Vastu Consultancy Services for her residence located at Bandra, Mumbai from Mr. Rachel of Sydney, Australia. The amount paid for the said service is 5000 Australian dollar. Consideration is there or not there? Which means 71B or 71C? 71B, very good. Import of services for consideration. But it is not in the course or furtherance of business. Correct? Huh? Residence. Residence means personal. Even then it will become supply under 71B. Then second one. Ms. Srinidhi Kaushik received Vastu Consultancy Service for her residence located Bandra, Mumbai from her son, Mr. Varun, residing in Sydney, Australia. Further, Ms. Srinidhi did not pay any consideration for the said service. So, we should refer 71C. Tell me whether it will become supply or not a supply. Not a supply. Why not a supply? Not in the course or furtherance of business. You quickly look into the summary. 71C import of service. For 71C import of service, it should be in the course or furtherance of business or not? Yes, but here, even though it is import of service from a related person, check, is it from a related person? Son, whether or not dependent, will come under related person. So, import of service from a related person. For consideration or without consideration? Or without consideration. But is it in the course or furtherance of business? No. Therefore, the second one is not a supply. Now, read the third point. Ms. Srinidhi Kaushik received Vastu Consultancy Service for her business premises located at Bandra, Mumbai from her son, Mr. Varun, residing in Sydney, Australia. Further, Ms. Srinidhi did not pay any consideration on the set service, for the set service. Huh? Supply under 71C. Import of service for consideration or without consideration? Is it from a related person? Yes. In the course or furtherance of business? Yes. Therefore, it will become supply under 71C. Understood how to apply? Then next one. Meaning of various supplies. We have taxable supply. First, you understood what is supply. 
Now we have taxable supply, exempted supply, non-taxable supply, zero rated supply. In this already you know what is zero rated supply. What is considered as zero rated supply? Export of goods or services, supply of goods or services to SEZ is known as zero rated supply. What is the meaning of non-taxable supply? There is no levy. What are non-taxable supplies on which there is no levy? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption and five petroleum products. Exempted supply. What is the meaning of exempted supply? Remember three points. Notified as exempted. Government from time to time will notify few transactions are exempted. That is known as notified as exempted. Number two, nil rated. Means the rate of GST is nil, zero. Okay. Then number three, non-taxable. So, non-taxable also will come under exempted supply. So, tell me what are exempted supplies? Number one, notified as exempted. Number two, nil rated. Number three, non-taxable. The balancing figure is taxable. Pa. The remaining is known as taxable. So, means on which we pay GST is known as taxable supply. Now, see the no classification. First, supply we need to check is it chargeable to GST or not chargeable to GST. That is GST payable or not payable. If GST is payable, what is the name of that supply? Taxable supply. If GST not payable, why GST not payable? Maybe there is no levy, non-taxable. Or maybe there is levy, but the rate is nil. Or it is notified for non-payment. These three will come under exempted supplies. Now tell me whether taxable includes exempted. No. Taxable do not include exempted supplies. Taxable supplies does not include exempted supplies. Then there is one meaning of aggregate turnover. This aggregate turnover we will come across in many places in GST. What is the meaning of that aggregate turnover? SIPA, all these four supplies will come in aggregate turnover. What and all will come in aggregate turnover? Taxable supplies, exempted supplies, non-taxable supplies and zero rated supplies. Okay. So, you can see taxable supplies, exempt supplies, exports, exports will be in zero rated and interstate supplies. Sir, SCZ, supplies to SCZ is not there now sir, actually supplies to SCZ is deemed interstate, you can see, include supplies to SCZ unit or developer, okay. Then, of persons having same permanent account number computed on all India basis, for example, I have business in four states. While computing aggregate turnover, should I take all four states or aggregate turnover computed state wise? All four states. Remember A for all India, aggregate turnover on all India basis. But wherever they use the word turnover, that will be state wise, you understood. So in GST, two places they will be using the words aggregate, that, that is many places they will be using these two words, aggregate turnover they will use in some places turnover they will use in some places. You just write down there. What is aggregate turnover and turnover? Okay. Aggregate turnover, aggregate turnover and then turnover. Aggregate turnover all India basis. But turnover will be state or union territory wise. Okay. And remaining points are same. Everything else is same. What is the difference between aggregate turnover and turnover? Aggregate turnover will be computed on a all India basis. Whereas turnover will be computed state wise, state wise or union territory wise. Now, Will purchases come in turnover? Turnover means sales or purchases? Sales. Will purchases come in turnover? No. So, if you have some invert supplies on which you need to pay GST and or RCM, it will not come in turnover. Even though you are required to pay GST and or RCM, what is RCM already we discussed? Reverse charge mechanism. Sir, I am making some purchases, sir, on which I need to pay GST and or RCM. Even though I pay GST, it should not be added in my turnover because it is my purchase, a sale, purchase. Purchase will not be included in turnover. Okay. Then even GST will not come in aggregate turnover, CGST, SGST, UTGST, IGST. So tell me what is the meaning of aggregate turnover, come on. 
taxable supplies, exempted supplies, non taxable supplies, zero rated supplies, computed on all India basis. Two things will not come in aggregate turnover. What are they? Invert supplies under reverse charge mechanism and GST, CGST, SGST, UTGST, and IGST and CES. With this section 7, we have completed that is meaning of supply. The next one is 7 subsection 1 capital A classification of supply into goods or services. Here, once the activity becomes supply, what is the next aspect classification into goods or services? Look into that and whenever you are referring to section 7 subsection 1A, you need to give reference to what which schedule? Read which schedule? 2. Now, say this. There is an activity in relation to mobile property. When it will come under goods? If there is a transfer of title, it is supply of goods. When there is a transfer of right to use, it is supply of service. Example, pa. I am taking, I am buying a laptop. When I am buying a laptop, so I got the title to the laptop. So therefore, it is called a sale of goods. I am taking a laptop on rental basis. I am not having the title to the laptop, but I have got the right to use the laptop. That activity is known as supply of service. So transfer of title is supply of goods. Transfer of right to use is supply of services. But the title can be transferred at present or at a future date. What is the example of transfer of title at a future date? Higher purchase. In higher purchase, today we get the asset, but the title we will get on payment of last installment. Even higher purchase transaction is treated as supply of goods. Clear here? Then immobile property will never come in supply of goods. Why it will not come in supply of goods? Exclusion from the supply. Sale of land, sale of building is excluded from supply. Sir, then immobile property will come under supply of service? Yes. In which way it will come under supply of service? Construction activity, bringing into existence an immobile property or transfer of right to use immobile property. That is renting of immobile property will also come under supply of service. You got it? Example, so this uh, premises is Mylapur Fine Arts Club. This is actually a very old place, okay. And uh, no, I attended classes here. Really, I used to attend classes here. Uh, we had one uh, faculty by name uh, MP Vijay Kumar, sir. So, who was a legend in uh, advance accounts and financial reporting. Today, all the faculties are students of him. Okay, that's a great personality he is. And one law faculty by name uh, Jay Raman, sir. So, they used to take classes here. And I used to sit there, last row, there. Okay. And uh, so, therefore, at that time when I attended classes, no, I got inspired from them only. And uh, I wanted to take, one day I should take class like them. Like that I started my teaching journey. So, therefore, you know, this was that much old building. For many years it is there. And they are asking uh, rent of 40,000 rupees per, per day. The rent for this place is 40,000 rupees per day. Now, I paid 40,000 rupees per day. Is it transfer of title or transfer of right to use? <laughs> right to use. So, it is supply of goods, uh, supply of service, uh, supply of service. You got the clarity, na? So, that is the meaning of renting, okay? Then, intellectual property rights. So, first two points, what is that? Mobile property. Mobile property. Transfer of title is supply of goods. Transfer of right to use is supply of service. Immobile property, when it will come under supply of goods? It will never come under supply of goods. But it will come under supply of service? Yes. When construction or transfer of right to use immobile property. IPRs, intellectual property rights. What are examples of intellectual property rights? Copyright, patent, trademark, etc. If it is permanent transfer, it is supply of goods. If it is temporary transfer, it is supply of service. Example, so music director who composes music will not do permanent transfer to the producer, will do temporary transfer to the producer because the same tune he will be using for some other movie also. Really, pa, 
you take anirudh a very good music director okay without any doubt but what anirudh do is that you know mainly for this uh, lcu and all he will be using the same tune but if you see one one movie one one producer you take kaidi movie one producer and you take vikram one producer and leo another producer but in leo there are references of kaidi movie tune correct and again vikram movie tunes are there how are won't there be copyright issue there will be na but how he is managing because he did not do permanent transfer he made only temporary transfer same tune is with him so he can use it anywhere so he can copy his own tunes also they will never do permanent transfer that is the meaning of permanent transfer versus temporary transfer you got it whereas technology and all there won't be any temporary transfer technologies they will do permanent transfer example you know when uh, we develop a technology so that technology companies will be purchasing from us and the moment companies purchase from us they will be using for example youtube is one platform now youtube do not belong to google youtube was developed by you know one person and at that time he was in need of money so he transferred permanently to google now google is generating crores and crores of money through youtube you understood what i am telling like that permanent transfer technology and all will be usually permanently transfer that will be treated as supply of goods that is about this ipr then look into the fourth point carrying out process on the goods belonging to others if substantial material is given by the recipient to the supplier it is supply of service example ah uh, job work correct example i am a tailor you gave me cloth i did the stitching now what is the substantial material in this while doing stitching i use thread i use buttons etc okay but what is the substantial material in this cloth who gave me cloth is it mine or recipient so therefore whatever activity of stitching that i do will be treated as supply of service now cloth is owned by me i have a shop there is a cloth in my shop you come to my shop you select the cloth you ask me to stitch and give now it is supply of goods or supply of service supply of goods okay so if substantial material is supplied by the supplier example cloth showroom you go you select the cloth and they do the stitching and give that is substantial material supplied by the supplier it is supply of goods as per contract if substantial material is supplied by the recipient it will be called as supply of service then suppose if an activity involves both goods and services then how it should be treated if it is notified transactions it will always be treated as supply of service what are those three notified activities works contract information technology software and supply of food sir what is works contract works contract is in the context of immovable property usually what happens in construction is that i will only buy the material i will only do the construction and i will hand over the property to you this is called as works contract in olden days and all people used to buy the material they used to take the service of a construction contractor but now no one is doing that so they are asking the contractor only to buy all the material required for construction they will do the construction and give that is called as a works contract so in works contract there will be two elements what are the two elements goods as well as service element and it is in relation to immobile property against a lump sum amount you can see below this table the meaning of works contract a contract involving transfer of property in goods as well as supply of service in relation to immobile property against a single consideration okay in earlier indirect tax regime the same was classified under both goods and service now it will always be treated as supply of service then software software some softwares are sold like goods example antivirus softwares microsoft office these are all sold like goods and some software will be developed to meet the needs of the people so whether it is sold like goods or no, no developed developed software or packaged software all softwares are treated as supply of service then supply of food in food what is a goods element the ingredients used in the food is the goods element for example 
you buy idli, dosa, etc., there will be some material used in that, na, that is goods. Cooking is the service element, but it will always be treated as supply of service. What are the three transactions? It involves both the goods and service, but always treated as service. Works contract, software, and supply of food, okay. Then, suppose if it is apart from these three, any other activity, how to classify? Please concentrate, listen. We need to check whether it is composite supply or mixed supply. If it is composite supply, if the principal supply is goods, entire activity will be treated as goods. If the principal supply is service, entire activity treated as service. For example, AC and installation is composite supply. Why AC and installation is composite supply, we will see later. That is the next section. Okay. So, remember for now, AC and installation is composite supply. Okay. Now, in AC and installation, what is the goods element? AC. What is the installation? Service element. Correct. Now, what is the principal supply in this? Principal means main activity. AC. AC is goods or services. So, entire activity will be treated as supply of goods. Another example. Coaching plus study notes will be coming under composite supply. Why it is composite supply? We will see later. It is composite supply. Now, coaching is what element? Service. Study notes is what element? Goods. What is the predominant factor? That is principal supply. Coaching. So, entirely it will be treated as supply of services. Got the clarity? So, if the main activity is goods, entirely it is treated as goods. If the main activity is services, entirely it is treated as services. Then see the next one, mixed supply. If the activity is mixed supply, if the highest rate is goods, entirely it is treated as goods. If the highest rate is service, entirely it is treated as service. What is the difference between composite supply and mixed supply? Here we will take principal supply. Here we will take highest rate. So, if the highest rate is goods, entirely goods. For example, TV is goods. Optional warranty is service. TV is having highest rate. So, entire activity will be treated as supply of goods. Then, video lectures, service. Pen drive will be supply of goods. But, highest rate is video lectures. So, entirely this activity will be treated as supply of service. Apart from this, any other activity will be supply of service. Either doing an act, not doing an act, tolerating an act. Okay. You are tolerating my torture. Correct. No, uh, fine. Suppose, if you are tolerating my torture, it will be coming under supply of service. How, sir? Tolerating an act, balancing figure. I am taking classes, doing an act that will come under supply of services. So, can you give me example of not doing an act? Not doing an act. Somewhere in PGBP, you would have come across non-compete fees. What is this non-compete fees? Not to start a competing business. So, if you are starting one business in competition to me, I will pay you some money not to start this competing business. This is non-compete fees. This will come under consideration for not doing an act. Tolerating an act. What is this tolerating an act? Example, breach of contract. You enter into contract with me. You breach the contract. I am tolerating your act of breach for which I will collect some damages from you. That will come under tolerating an act. All these are treated as services. Clear, yeah? So, what you need to remember? First, movable property. When it will come under goods? When it will come under service? Transfer of title, goods. Transfer of right to use, services. Immobile property, always service. And then IPR, when it will come under goods? When it will come under service? Permanent transfer, goods. Temporary transfer, services. And next one. So, carrying out process on goods belonging to other person. Huh. When it will be goods? Substantial material given by supplier, goods. Substantial material given by the recipient, service. And then, supply of goods along with supply of service. Notified activities. Works contract, software, supply of food. Always service. Apart from that, any other activity. How to classify? Composite supply or mixed supply. If it is composite supply, principal supply is goods, entirely goods. Principal supply service, entirely service. Mixed supply, highest rate goods, entirely goods. Highest rate service, entirely services. Any other activity? Doing an act, not doing an act, tolerating an act. Where it will be coming? Supply of 
services. Now, we will see some illustrations related to this, some MCQs and illustrations. Then we will take a break. Look into page 45. Look into page number 45. Goods as per section 2 class 52 of the CGST Act includes actionable claims. Will actionable claims are included in goods definition? Yes. Growing crops attached to the land agreed to be severed before supply. Will it come under goods? Money? No. Securities? So, therefore, the answer is 1 and 2. 1 and 2. That is option C. Then next, an exempt supply includes supply of goods or service which attracts nil rate. Will it come under exempted goods? Exempted supply, yes. Non-taxable supply will come under exempted supply? Yes. Supply of goods or service which are wholly exempt from tax under section 11, notified as exempted. Will it also come? So, option D, 1, 2 and 3. Which of the following services received in the course or furtherance of business without consideration amount to supply? Import of services by a person in India from his son well settled in USA. Is it supply or not a supply? In all these cases, it is without consideration pa, and it is in the course or furtherance of business. Now, you answer this properly and tell me. Is it supply or not a supply? Why supply? Son. Son is always related without consideration in the course or furtherance of business. So, therefore, it will become supply. Then second one, import of service by a person in India from his brother well settled in Germany. Why not a supply? Brother settled in Germany means not dependent. Not dependent means not related. So, therefore, not a supply. Then next, import of services by a person in India from his brother wholly dependent on that person in India in France. Supply. Why? Brother is dependent. Brother is dependent means related party transaction. So, import of service from a related person without consideration in the course or furtherance of business. Import of service by a person in India from his daughter wholly dependent on such person. Daughter do not see. Son and daughter do not see whether dependent or not dependent. Children will always come under family. So, therefore, it will become supply. So, which activities are trade or supply? 1, 3 and 4. Option A. So, it is actually 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Then, which of the following activities shall be treated? Neither as supply of goods nor as supply of services. Neither supply of goods nor supply of service means not a supply, not a supply. Permanent transfer of business asset where ITC has been availed on such assets. Supplier, not a supplier. Supply. Then temporary transfer of intellectual property rights. Supply of service. So, it will come under supply. Transportation of deceased. Deceased means dead body. Pa. Is there transportation of patient supply? Because patient means he is alive. Transportation of deceased, dead body is not a supply. Patient is covered under supply. Okay. So, while going to hospital, supply. While coming back from hospital, not a supply. You understood. Ah. So, transportation of deceased, not a supply. Then, service by employee to employer in the course of employment, not a supply. So, which activities are neither trade as supply of goods, not trade as supply of services? 3 and 4, option D. Answers I have given below this, okay. Along with the reason I have given the answers. Next, but I am just discussing here, because if answer is there, there won't be any element of learning. That's why I have given separately the answers. 
which of the following activities is a supply of service transfer of right in goods or undivided share in goods without transfer of title in goods supply of service okay so then transfer of title in goods goods it will come under goods because title na transfer of title in goods under an agreement which stipulate that property shall pass at a future date goods so which of the following activity is supply of service only one that is a p limited has its registered office under companies act 2013 in the state of maharashtra from where it ordinarily carries on its business of taxable goods it also has a warehouse in the state of telangana for storing the said goods what will be the place of business of p limited under gst law but see pa place of business means every place from where they carry on the business every place from where they carry on the business that includes even warehouse agent place everything now where they are generally doing business maharashtra and they are having a warehouse in telangana means telangana also they are doing business yes sir no now you tell me what are considered as their place of business both a and b that is telangana as well as maharashtra if you are having a agent office or if you are having a representative office that is also called your place of business every place from where you carry out the business all operations any operations if you do that will be called as your place of business which of the following statement so this this advantage of this is that now say for example i wanted to tell that i have branches in you know five states or 10 states like that i will just open one office okay if i open one office i can tell i have branch in that state you understood so lot of people as a marketing stunt or as a branding activity etc and all they will be doing it's common so even this uh, rameshwaram cafe like that one uh, restaurant you would have heard of now because of all bad reasons like bomb blast and all it has happened there now what they did they wanted lot of investment for that sake what they did is that so they have just expanded the operations like anything in hyderabad reopened and uh, even in uh, some other vijayawada they are opening and chennai also they are planning now why these things because when you are attracting investment so what the other person will think you are having this many branches means you are a big guy so i can purchase your company like that they will be doing it's normal in investments okay fine so lot of people are doing nowadays then next which of the following statements is true under gst law see this grandparents are never considered as related person to their grandson or granddaughter what is your answer grandparents are never considered as related to their grandson or granddaughter no they are considered when if they are wholly and mainly dependent so this is false grandparents are always considered that is also false grandparents are considered as related to their grandson or granddaughter if they are wholly or mainly dependent on their grandson or granddaughter yes true this is true grandparents are considered as related persons to their grandson or granddaughter only if they are not dependent no if they are not dependent they are not treated as related so option c is the answer which of the following is not considered as goods in gst act 10 paise coin having a sale value of 100 old coins old coins are treated as goods sale of shares shares of unlisted company ah uh, neither goods neither goods nor services then lottery tickets actionable claim so it will be treated as goods so they are asking about which of the following is not considered as goods only two option b is the answer assuming that all the activities given below are undertaken for consideration state which of the following is not a supply of service 
renting of commercial office complex renting renting goods or services or renting is service an employee agreeing to not work for the competitor organization after leaving the current employment not doing an act not doing an act where it will come service repairing of mobile phone service so some other person mobile phone i am doing repair means material given by him i am doing the process so it's a supply of service provision of services by an employee to employer in the course of employment not a supply why not a supply employee to employer in the course of employment is excluded from supply na so point d so this is about those mcqs then look into first question first question this question is simple they have given some situations they are asking us whether it is goods or service okay renting of immobile property renting so it will be coming under service transfer of right in goods without transfer of title in goods again service already we discussed works contract where it will come always service temporary transfer or permitting user enjoyment of ipr temporary transfer of ipr service sale of personal car sale sale goods na sir sir personal car personal car means not in the course or furtherance of business so it is not a supply then any treatment or process which is applied on other person's goods carrying out process on the goods belonging to other person service transfer of title in goods good supply of goods understood here how this will be tested we discussed na classification of supply into goods or service this how it will be tested then so we will take a break thereafter we will continue with the remaining aspects okay okay see this so in uh, 71c red with schedule 1 there are four activities which are treated as supply 71c d r i p in that r is related party transactions including transaction between distinct persons so who are treated as distinct persons under gst one registration of a person to their another registration is known as distinct person for example if i am like liable to get registered and i am having business in two states say in andhra pradesh and tamil nadu i am having business now should i get single registration or two registrations i need to get two registrations one in andhra pradesh another in tamil nadu now between andhra pradesh registration and tamil nadu registration if there is any transaction that is known as transaction between distinct persons okay so when i have business in different states i have multiple business in different states should i get registered in each state separately yes what if i am having multiple business in the same state so should i go for separate registration if i have business in different places may or may not be it is optional example the first example you take so i am having business in tamil nadu andhra pradesh telangana and kerala four states and should i register in all the four states yes because all the businesses are in different states second example in tamil nadu i am having place of business in chennai coimbatore madurai and e road now where should i register either either i can register in the state single registration by showing one place as my principal place of business and other place as my additional place of business alternatively for each place of business i can go for separate registration suppose if you are doing multiple business in the same state and in same place of business in the same building i am having different business i am having a beauty parlor i am having a eating joint and i am also selling garments in the same place now in that case should i go for separate registration no as the place is same cannot obtain separate registration so 
you tell me when we can get more than one registration. If you are doing business in multiple states, we will get more than one registration. If you are doing business within the state but in different place of business, again we can go for separate registration. Now one registration of a person to the other registration is known as distinct person. That is the first point. Every registration of a person to their, to their another registration is a distinct person. Now second point you see, registered establishment of a person in a state and unregistered establishment of such person in another state are also treated as distinct person. First point is easy, you already know, but the second point is important. What is it they are telling? If you are doing business in multiple states, not necessary that every state you need to register. In some states where you make exempted supplies, you are not required to get registered. Look into the next page for the example. Say a person A limiter is doing business in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Telangana. The applicable threshold limit for A limited is 20 lakhs. Now A limited is making taxable supplies and exempted supplies. What is the total aggregate turnover? Aggregate turnover should be computed on all India basis. What is their aggregate turnover? 10 plus 3, 15 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3. What is their aggregate turnover? 22 lakhs. When their aggregate turnover is 22 lakhs, as the aggregate turnover exceeds the threshold limit. What is the applicable threshold limit? 20 lakhs. A limited is required to get registered. So, what is their aggregate turnover? 22 lakhs. What is the applicable threshold limit? 20 lakhs. Aggregate turnover exceeds the threshold limit. While counting aggregate turnover, exempted turnover also should be taken. Whether A limited is liable to register or not liable to register? Liable to register. Now you tell me where and all A should register, A limited should register. Whether in Tamil Nadu they are making taxable supplies? Yes. So, they should register in Tamil Nadu. Whether in Karnataka they are making taxable supplies? Yes. So, in Karnataka they should register. Whether they are making taxable supplies in Telangana? No. So, they are not required to register in Telangana. Now, listen, listen. This is the point I was telling. Even though they are not registered in Telangana, any transaction that takes place between Tamil Nadu and Telangana will also be distinct person. Got it? Why? Because in the other state, when you have an unregistered establishment, that unregistered establishment also will be treated as your distinct person. What if there is a registered establishment? Undoubtedly, it will become distinct person. There is no doubt there. One registration to another registration is distinct person. Pa. There is no doubt in that. But what they are telling, even if you are having an unregistered establishment in the another state, that is also you are a distinct person. So, a limited Tamil Nadu and A limited Karnataka, transaction between distinct person. A limited Karnataka to A limited Telangana, even though they are not having GST and that is also transaction between distinct person and A limited Tamil Nadu and A limited Telangana, even though they do not have registration, that is called as distinct person. So, what is the meaning of distinct person? One registration of a person to their another registration or one registration in this state to unregistered establishment in the another state. Okay. Now, concentrate in this one more point. Suppose, sir, in Tamil Nadu itself, they are having three places of business. Inside Tamil Nadu itself, they are having three places of business. Okay. Tamil Nadu, they are having business in Chennai, Madurai and Coimbatore, taxable supply, exempted supply and the applicable threshold limit, the applicable threshold limit is same 20 lakhs. So, Chennai 10 lakhs, taxable Madurai 5 lakhs, taxable exempted 8 lakhs, 2 lakhs and 6 lakhs. What is their aggregate turnover? What is their aggregate turnover? Aggregate turnover is thir 20, ah, 31 lakhs. Whether they are required to register? Yes. Now, what they should do? 
they need to go for you know separate registration they want to go for separate registration can they go for separate registration yes but you tell me where and all they need to register so chennai they need to register so they should have a gstin gstin means gst identification number only when you are registered you will get a gst identification number and in madurai also they will register why taxable supplies but in Coimbatore, there is no registration. Why there is no registration in Coimbatore? Huh? They are making only exempted supplies. So, no registration in Coimbatore. Now, between Chennai registration to Madurai registration, if there is any transaction, is it transaction between distinct persons? Yes or no? Yes, it is a transaction between distinct persons. Okay. Then, transaction between distinct persons. Suppose between Madurai GSTIN to Coimbatore GSTIN, if there is any transaction, will it be transaction between distinct persons? No, 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 it will not be treated as distinct person. You tell me why they are not treated as distinct persons? Same state. Sir, unregistered establishment in the different state is only called as distinct person. In the same state, if you have an unregistered establishment, that will not be called as distinct person. Not treated as distinct persons. You please see the definition again. Meaning of distinct person. Every registration of a person to their another registration. That may be within the state or it may be in another state. First point, no problem. One registration to another registration. Same state or different state. That is not a problem. But see the next point. Registered establishment in a state and unregistered establishment of such person in another state is only treated as distinct person. But here also it is there na sir. No. Both are in the same state. It will not be treated as distinct persons. Not treated as distinct persons. Then, so that is about the meaning of distinct person. Now, what is the consequences of distinct person? Mainly, they want to tax stock transfers and branch transfers from one distinct person to another distinct person. If there is any interstate stock transfer, definitely it will become supply. Why? Interstate stock transfer means what? both states. In two different states, always it will become distinct person, registered or unregistered, no need to check, correct or not. You are having business in two states, pa. whether they are registered or not registered, that is a transaction between distinct persons. Whereas, within the state, when it will be called as transaction between distinct person, only if you go for separate registration. If there is single registration, that will not become supply. So, only if there is separate registration, it will become supply under 71C. The next one, meaning of recipient. Who will be called as recipient? If consideration is involved in the transaction, the one who is liable to pay the consideration is the recipient. Example, I am entering into contract with holding company for providing the services to the subsidiary company. Now, who is the recipient here? Holding company or subsidiary company? Holding company, not the person to whom I am providing service. With whom I entered into contract? Holding company. Means who is liable to pay consideration to me? Holding company. My contract is with holding company only now. Even though I provide services to the subsidiary company, but I need to get the money due from holding company. So, holding company is only my recipient. I need to raise invoice to holding company only. So, remember? When the consideration is involved in the transaction, the one who is liable to pay the consideration is called as the recipient. Whereas, if consideration is not involved in the transaction, the one to whom we are delivering the goods or providing the services will be taken as the recipient. Same example, if there is no consideration, who will be treated as recipient? Subsidiary company will be treated as recipient because I am providing services to whom? The subsidiary company. So, if consideration is not payable, let it be goods or services, the one who is receiving that goods or the one who is receiving that services will be taken as the recipient. Understood? Now, this circulars on supply, we will see later. Now, we will look into 
section 8 composite supply and mixed supply please look into page number 42 look into page number 42 composite supply versus mixed supply now see this definition of composite supply and mixed supply basically when we will apply composite supply mixed supply if there are two or more supplies in a single transaction we apply composite or mixed okay now what is the difference between composite supply and mixed supply read the definition two or more taxable supplies means in composite supply all the supplies should be taxable of goods or service or both or any combination thereof are naturally bundled and supplied in conjunction with each other in the ordinary course of business what is the meaning of naturally bundle one cannot be supplied without the another is known as naturally bundle okay if you want you just write down naturally bundle means what one cannot be supplied without another one cannot be supplied without another ac and installation if you see if you buy the ac they will only do the installation definitely so that is called as naturally bundle one cannot be supplied without the another popcorn and coke combo in a cinema theater is naturally bundled or not naturally bundled not naturally bundled because you can buy it separately also okay as a combo also you can buy or separately also you can buy that is the meaning of naturally bundled and supplied in conjunction with each other in the ordinary course of business one of which is a principal supply so there should be principal supply in case of composite supply but if you see mixed supply definition two or more individual supplies here they are using the word taxable supplies here they are using the word individual supplies so what is the first difference you can find here all the supplies should be taxable here it can be combination of taxable or exempted then next one or any combination thereof in conjunction with each other for a single price whether that single price is given under composite supply no means it can be for a single price or it can be for a separate price then which of does not constitute composite supply so if it is not a composite supply then only it will come under mixed supply so for composite supply what are the three conditions you can find from the definition condition number one all the supplies should be taxable condition number two naturally bundled in the ordinary course of business condition number three principal supply should be involved then it will be called as a composite supply is it clear in that all are taxable evident in the question itself number two naturally bundled or not naturally bundled it is an element of judgment that you need to see the question and decide this is where we will make mistake because we will always see the exception side but we should not see the exception side we should see most probable side example now laptop and laptop bag naturally bundled or not naturally bundled uh, those who think that it is not naturally bundled that is the mindset which i am telling you will be thinking about the exception side sir i buy laptop there won't be laptop bag in that that is exception but see generally generally when they sell the laptop they will be giving the laptop bag but exceptions will be there exceptions will always be there for every transaction but see on the positive side what is it positive side so usually they will be giving it you got it so then one more example this is uh, pandal shamiana and all when they supply the chairs coolers they will only do the transportation say there is a function one marriage function you order for uh, chairs and coolers on a rental basis what they will do they will bring the chairs and coolers to your place and they will keep it and once the function is over they will only take it to their location so there are two elements in this renting of chairs and coolers and transportation now 
you tell me naturally bundle or not naturally bundle naturally bundle so but sometimes you may have to take that going to their place but that's an exception or extreme situation but in the ordinary course of business that is the wording they have given ordinary course of business means usually generally so we need to see this is a place where you will be making mistake so please read the question twice and thrice before answering in the question itself clearly they would have given a clue okay based on that you will know whether it is naturally bundle or not naturally bundle principal supply should be involved here you will not have any difficulty easily by seeing it you will tell principal supply is involved or not ac and installation what is principal supply ac and in case of laptop and laptop bag what is the principal supply laptop and in case of hiring of chairs and coolers and transportation what is the principal supply hiring of chairs and coolers you understood there you will not make mistake the only place where you make mistake is naturally bundle or not naturally bundle okay now if these three conditions are satisfied what is the name of that supply composite supply in case of composite supply we need to take the rate of principal supply and apply it on the entire transaction example ac installation ac is 12% installation is 18% now ac 30000 installation 2000 on entire 32000 you will take which rate 12% the rate applicable to ac you will take on entire 32000 are you understanding this so in case of composite supply you will take which rate here principal supply rate suppose if it is not a composite supply when it is not a composite supply maybe all are not taxable all are taxable not naturally bundle all are taxable naturally bundle but principal supply cannot be identified then it is not a composite supply when it is not a composite supply check mixed supply to become mixed supply only one condition what is only one condition for mixed supply there is there should be a single price there should be a single price then it will become mixed supply if it becomes mixed supply what we need to do sir you take the highest rate between the supplies and you multiply it on the entire amount okay example popcorn plus coke popcorn 5% coke 28% okay now is it naturally bundled or not naturally all are taxable naturally bundled or not naturally bundled so it is not a composite supply and it is sold as a combo 299 rupees okay now you tell me is it mixed supply yes it's a mixed supply what is the highest rate 28% that will be applied on entire 299 rupees that's why what they started doing all cinema theaters instead of giving coke in tin or pet bottle they started giving in the cup vending machine one vending machine they will be keeping in that water can they will connect generally coke pepsi and all they will not give the formula to anyone only exception is theater cinema theaters so this multiplex theaters alone will get the concentrate so they will there will be one vending machine they will connect the water can and they will get the formula and based on that they will fill there in the vending machine and in a cup they will be giving you understood you know why if it is given in cup the rate of gst 5% if it is given in bottle regular tin or uh, like normal place and all you will be getting na pet bottles that will be 28% but in the cup when they are giving that will be 5% so now why unnecessarily they need to pay 28% because highest rate gets attracted here what they will do they will be giving in the cup how much ever money it may be if you ask for only coke also some 79 rupees is what they are charging only coke but even then the rate of gst on that will be 5% only reason being they will be giving in the cup you got it so that is the problem of mixed supply that's why they will try to escape from the mixed supply one more example concentrate battery plus inverter battery plus inverter so you tell me and both are taxable pa both are taxable is it composite supply or mixed supply first all are taxable ah yes naturally bundled or not naturally bundled not naturally bundled 
sir, how sir, battery will not work without the inverter na sir. Why are you seeing from the usage point of view, see from the seller point of view. Generally every transaction you need to see from the seller point of view except import of services. Import of service you need to see from the recipient point of view, otherwise everything should be from supplier point of view. Here it is naturally bundled or not naturally bundled from seller point of view, not naturally bundled, they can sell only battery, they can sell only inverter, they can sell both battery and inverter together, so which means it is not naturally bundled, so it is not a composite supply. Now if they sell it for a single price, it will come under mixed supply. What if they are not even selling for a single price, they are selling for a separate price, then it will come under individual supplies, neither composite supply, first not a composite supply pa, because it is not naturally bundled and not even mixed supply because there is no single price, then what else it is, individual supplies, individual supplies means we will take respective rate for the respective supply and apply it on the transaction, you understood. So there are three things, composite supply mixed supply, then individual supplies, three treatments we need to give, okay. Now see here, supply of goods or service or both, whether they involves more than one supply, yes, naturally bundled, yes, then it is composite supply, otherwise it will be mixed supply and what is the rate of GST, if it is composite supply, take the rate of principal supply, if it is mixed supply, you take the highest rate and this is the differences, maybe if you get a theory question, distinguish between composite supply and mixed supply, you can write this, okay. Now, how you need to apply and what are the differences we have seen, meaning we have seen type of supplies involved in composite, what type of supplies, all are taxable, but here taxable are exempted or non-taxable. How the price should be in case of composite supply, either single price or separate price, but in mixed supply, how it should be single price. Should the principal supply be there in composite supply, yes. But in mixed supply, principal supply is not relevant. What is the rate of GST that we take in case of composite supply? Highest rate or principal supply rate? Principal supply rate. But in mixed supply, we will be taking highest rate. So these are some examples of composite supply, AC installation, transport and insurance. So AC installation, you understand. Transport and insurance means what? Generally, people who do the transportation of goods, they also take insurance on the goods also na, they provide the insurance service also. Suppose if transportation itself is not there, transit insurance shall not arise. Then replacement of parts during servicing of vehicle plus labor charges for replacement. Usually when you give your vehicle for servicing, they will say this part gone, that part gone and they will replace the part plus also they will add the labor charges for replacement. Again it is naturally bundled because if the part is not replaced, the labor charges for replacement of part shall not arise. Then, inverter and battery already I have explained why it is not composite supply, not naturally bundled. Renting of building and renting of furniture, why it is not naturally bundled? Sir, only building you can take on rent separately, only furniture you can take on rent separately. And again, popcorn and coke is also not naturally bundled. Now, how you need to apply is that, first, the moment you see the question, check whether there involves two or more supplies. If there is no two or more supplies, only one supply, Ignore this section, this section will not be applicable. When this section 8 will be applicable, there are two or more supplies in a single transaction. Yes, there are two or more supplies. Now check all these three conditions are satisfied. What are the three conditions? All are taxable, naturally bundled and principal supply identifiable. If all these are satisfied, what is the name of that supply? Composite supply. Price can be single or separate and you will take the rate of principal supply for the entire transaction. Suppose out of these three, any one is no, any one is no, then it is not a composite supply. Check whether there is a single price. If there is a single price, it will come under mixed supply. If it is a mixed supply, what we will do? We will take the highest rate and apply it on the entire transaction. What if it is neither composite supply nor mixed supply? Then what it will be? Individual supplies, we will take respective rate for the respective supply. Got the clarity? Now. See the illustration below, see the first illustration below, AC and installation, whether there involves two or more supplies in a transaction, two, minimum two should be there. So two or more supplies, yes, all three conditions are satisfied or not, you check. What is the condition number one? All are taxable, whether all are taxable, yes, naturally bundled, yes, AC and installation naturally bundled, principal supply identifiable, yes. 
So, price may be single or price may be separate, therefore, it will be coming under composite supply. So, in case of composite supply, you need to take which rate? 12 or 18 or 12, that is rate of principal supply and apply it on the entire transaction. What is the total value? 32,000, 32,000 into 12 percent, so 3,840 that will be taken, got it? And also, we have seen classification, if the principal supply is goods, entire activity will be treated as supply of goods, got it? Then next, next illustration you see, CA coaching and books, CA coaching 18 percent, books nil rate. Now, whether two or more supplies involved in the transaction? Yes. And is it composite supply? Why no? Huh? All are not taxable. All are not taxable. Okay. All should be taxable in composite supply. So, it is not a composite supply because books are nil rate. So, all are not taxable. So, one taxable and one exempted means it will not come under composite. Now, you need to check mixed supply. For mixed supply, what is the condition? Single price. Check whether there is single price. There is no single price. Correct. Separately price is given here. Can you see that? Separately price is there here. 40,000 for CA coaching and 10,000 for book. Separately number is there na. Means separate price. It is not for a single price. So, what is your answer? It is neither composite. Why not composite? Because not all supplies are taxable. Not even mixed. Why it is not mixed? Because there is no single price. Therefore, it will be individual supplies taxable at the respective rates. So, 40,000 taxable at 18 percent, 10,000 taxable nil rate means no GST. You got it? So, 40,000 at 18 percent, 10,000 zero. Sir, then it is nice idea, na, sir. Fees and all we can divide this way because coaching centers are charging lot of fees, sir somewhere 60,000, 70,000 and all they are charging plus GST. Now, they can do this way na sir, 40,000, 20,000, 60,000 intermediate fees means 40,000, 20,000. Now, 40,000 only GST, 20,000 no GST because it will be nil rate. Like that they can say na sir, we will save money, correct, correct only but the problem is students are smart, they will tell why should I pay 20,000 for books? 40,000 coaching fees I will pay, books I will take Xerox, like that they will say. That is the reason why, you know, coaching centers will not do, otherwise they can do this and they can give the benefit, okay. So, this is a loophole actually. Then next, here what it will be treated as CA coaching only taxable, so it is treated as supply of services. Now, look into illustration, now wait, wait, one second. Sir, in this case you are telling coaching and books not composite, not even mixed. But in the above place somewhere you said coaching and books will be composite supply and you need to read a supply of service. Why is this contradictory statement? This is not books, it is study notes. Books are exempted, but study notes are not exempted, study notes are taxable. What is the difference between a book and a study note? Book will have ISBN number, study note will not have ISBN number. So, whatever book that you are having do not have ISBN number, okay. No, if it is not having ISBN number, then it will be taxable. If it is having ISBN number, then it will be exempted, okay. So, why you bother about this book? Generally, I am telling, okay. So, generally I am telling you, so study material and all if you see on the back side of the study material they will be giving ISBN where number will be there, means it is a published books. Lot of faculties what they do, they give their own material printed and all. So, that will not be called as study material or book, then it will become taxable, okay. So, that is what the difference I have given. Then look into another example here, illustration 8. Popcorn plus Coke, no separate price, no separate price, but a combo price is there, 299 rupees plus GST, popcorn 5 percent, Coke 28 percent, but here the Coke is the tin or the bottle, okay, it is not the cup, so it is not in loose form, it is already packed one, okay. Now, you tell me whether composite supply will be applicable, 
Why? Not naturally bundled. Even though both are taxable, but it is not naturally bundled. Composite supply will not be applicable. But is there a single price? Yes. Therefore, it will become mixed supply. And between these two, what is the highest rate? 28 percent. So, that should be applied in this case. Then, and here both are good. So, the question will not arise. Always it is supply of goods. See illustration 9. Accommodation service and complimentary food. When you stay in a hotel, they also provide complimentary breakfast as a part of your stay. Now, accommodation and complimentary breakfast, is it, you know, like uh, both are taxable? Yes, both are taxable. Is it naturally bundled? Yes. If you are not staying in the hotel, they will not give you the complimentary food. Correct. And uh, complimentary food alone will not be given. So, you have to stay in that place. So, therefore, it is naturally bundled. Number three, what is the principal supply here? Accommodation. No idiot will go there for the sake of food. They stay, so they get the food free. So, therefore, accommodation is the principal supply. Now, it will come under composite supply. Yes. What is the principal supply here? Accommodation. What is the GST rate for accommodation? 18 percent. So, that 18 percent will be applied on entire amount. Okay. Now, see the note below. If in illustration 9, price is separate, then even then it is composite supply because for composite supply price may be single or separate that is irrelevant you understood even then it will become composite supply and the rate of principal supply is only applicable understood here yeah? then there are two more points see these two notes note number one in case of servicing of cars usually cars and all when servicing is given they will replace the parts, usually some part will be gone. If it is not gone also, they will tell it is gone. Okay. So, because every time I give my car for servicing, that person will call me, one service technician will call me and he will say, sir, air filter gone, sir, and uh, brake oil we need to replace, sir, or uh, some part, I do not know what is the name of that part also, because we are not technical people, na? and I will tell, should we replace? Yes, sir, you should replace. What will happen if I am not replacing? I do not know, sir. You can drive, but somewhere in the midway, accident can happen, sir. Okay. Then replace, like that we will say. Psychologically, they will attack and uh, replace that because we do not have the knowledge about it. And when they replace the part, they also add the labor charges for replacement, but separately they will give part this much, labor charges for replacement this much, like that separately they will be giving. Part will be taxable at 12 percent. Labor charges will be taxable at 18 percent. Okay. In this background, you tell me, is it composite supply or not? All are taxable, naturally bundled, because I cannot buy the part outside. If they are low, na, I will go to Pudupet and I will be getting you no know, part, because all old vehicles, parts and all available, stolen vehicles, parts and all available at a very cheaper rate there. So, I can buy that part and give it to them and ask them to replace, but they will not allow that. So, I have to buy the genuine parts from them only. So, they will only sell and they will only do the labor charges for replacement means it is a naturally bundle. And number three, so is it like principal supply involved? Yes. What is the principal supply here? Part. If the part is not replaced, the labor charges for replacement will not arise. Then it is composite supply. Yeah. What is the principal supply? Part. Part is taxable at what rate? 12 percent. Then the entire transaction should be at 12 percent. Correct or not? But service centers will not do this. They will follow for parts 12 percent, for labor charges for replacement of part 18 percent only because of this circular. What does this circular say? In case of servicing of cars, test of composite supply should not be applied parts replaced and labor charges for replacement are treated as individual supplies if the amount is shown separately for each. Yes, they will show that separately, but this exception is only for cars, servicing of cars, not for other cases. Generally, for servicing of cars only, this exception will be applied. Then another case, pa. when you go to the cinema theater, you will buy some food during the break time and all the food which is sold in the cinema theater is taxable at 5 percent. 
Cinema theater GST is 28 percent. Entry ticket rate is 28 percent. Food rate is 5 percent. Now, you buy the ticket on the 28 percent. You go to the theater, you buy the food on that 5 percent. Now, sometimes we open the app book my show, we book the ticket. In the next screen, we will be getting food, food order. In that we can select the food also, we can order the food. The advantage is, so we do not have to go stand in the queue etc. and all, because there what will happen, for the sake of this powder they will be fighting. <laughs> popcorn they will not fight, it is available. But after that popcorn, the powder will be there na, that they will put on the popcorn. You, you did not see, in that multiple flavors are there. Okay. So, three different flavors, one yellow color, one orange color, one white color, flavors is there. That they will put, okay, like this and all they will be putting and uh, other people and all. So, will be fighting for that. No, you do not want all this torture and all. So, directly you want that to be delivered to your place. That is why lot of people will order the food. Now, in this case, you tell me, is it composite supply or not a composite supply? Why not a composite supply? You can book the ticket without food also. Then it will not be naturally bundled. So, it will not come under composite supply. Then what is the rate applicable for food? 5 percent only. Are you getting? Now, third case. First case, you go to the theater and after going to the theater, you buy the food. 5 percent GST for food. Cinema 28 percent. Second case, at the time of booking the ticket itself, you order for the food also. Again, same story, theater 28 percent, food 5 percent. Third case, ticket along with food as a combo. Ticket along with food as a combo, yes. So, there is one PVR select like that, one theater is there in Bengaluru. PVR select, PVR director's cut like that. You know what is the price in the theater? 1500 rupees is the ticket price. Okay, 1500 rupees. And it will be like luxury seat, pushback seat. So, sleep and you can happily sleep and you can watch the TV, etc. and all. Lot of couples will prefer that. Now, the <laughs> now advantage is what you know. I mean, food and all they will be giving free along with the ticket. So, along with the ticket they will be giving popcorn and coke also. You happily sleep, we will deliver food also like that. Okay. And uh, this case for 1500 rupees, you are getting entry to the ticket plus complimentary food also you are getting. Now, in this case, will it come under composite supply? Yes. Why it will come under composite supply? Cinema ticket plus food naturally bundled up. This is given free pa, food is given free. Food is given as a complimentary along with the ticket. Sir, I do not want food. Then also you take sir, you eat or you throw, who is bothered, okay. You will be given. Now, ticket plus food, it will come under naturally bundled. All are taxable. What is the principal supply here? Entry to cinema, correct. No idiot will go to PVR for the sake of popcorn here. They will go to theater and then they will eat the popcorn. If you really want to eat popcorn, act popcorn, 20 rupees. Really, act popcorn, 20 rupees, you buy it and in house uh, there will be one cooker. In that cooker, you put the popcorn and you close it, wait for some time, you will get popcorn. On that, you put this idli molaga pudi powder on that and you eat. Okay. So, why you need to spend that much money? So, not required. And cooking is also very easy. Dad's little prince also can go and cook, no issue. So, therefore, this particular case, you know. So, not for the sake of popcorn, we go to the theater now. So, what is the principal supply here? Entry to the cinema. So, what is the rate of GST on entry to cinema? 28 percent means even the food and beverages, which is given as a complimentary along with the ticket, will also be taxable at the rate applicable to ticket. You understood? This is a latest amendment pa. Say this, food and beverages purchased in a theater 
taxable as individual supplies and if the same is purchased along with ticket as a combo then composite supply attracts food and beverages taxable at the rate applicable to entry to cinema hall okay this is a very very important circular and definitely you can expect because of the amendment sir generally if you buy it as individual supplies there is no gst but when you buy it as a combo then in that case composite supply attracts what is the composite supply principal supply cinema theater rate so that will be taken on the entire amount you got it so this is about section 8 that also we have completed composite supply mixed supply now see some questions related to this descriptive questions you see already we have seen the mcq in the descriptive question question number 1 we have seen look into question number 2 page 47 explain the service provided by way of tolerating non performance of a contract and its chargeability under the provisions of cgst act what is the meaning of tolerating non performance of a contract generally when we enter into contract and when we breach the contract the person who suffers the damages on account of the breach will be claiming a compensation from the other person who made a breach so this compensation payable by one person to another person is known as consideration for tolerating an act okay and is it supply or not a supply it is supply because there is a activity for consideration it will be supply and it will be treated as supply of goods or supply of service it will be treated as supply of service and we have one exemption for this if the government is getting some money towards consideration for tolerating an act that is exempted we have lot of exemptions with respect to services provided by government to business entities in that one exemption is consideration for tolerating an act if you enter into any contract with government and if you breach the contract you have to pay some damages to the government that money which is received by the government is exempted okay that is this conditional exemption however in case of supplies to government non performance of contract by the supplier for which consideration in the form of fines and damages payable is exempted anyhow we will again come across this exemption in a different place then look into question number 3 shahab sales so read this question shahab sales an air conditioner dealer in janakpuri delhi needs four air conditioners for his newly constructed house in safdar jang enclave therefore he transfers four air conditioners on which itc has already been availed by from its stock for the set purpose so a dealer is transferring the acs from his stock to his house okay examine whether the said activity amounts to supply under section 7 now for consideration or without consideration without consideration then you need to refer 71c in 71c what is the first point drip d disposal of business asset is ac his business asset dealer pa ac dealer inventory will come under asset side you understood inventory is asset balance sheet la inventory will come under asset okay it's a current asset so inventory is asset okay ac is asset is it is business asset yes on which itc is available yes itc is available so it will come under disposal of business asset on which itc is available but sir it is not given to some other person it's okay business and owner are treated as two separate persons business entity concept somewhere in foundation accounts okay owner is different from the business okay so therefore whenever from business the owner take over the asset that will also come under supply 71c is it clear then next see the next part further a janakpuri resident akash approached shahab sales he sold an air conditioner to shahab sales for 5000 rupees akash has brought the said air conditioner six months before for his residence does the sale of air conditioner by akash to shahab sales amount to supply under section 7 of cgst act now akash is selling na ac so is it activity yes for consideration yes 
Is it in the course or furtherance of business of Akash? No, it is a personal activity. Therefore, it is not a supply. You understood? Now, first, uh, how to present it? Mark this as very, very important question. Easily for 4 marks or 5 marks, they can ask this question. Now, what is it? First, you need to write is that as per first section, you will ensure that 4 points are written in the answer. 4 points. First, you need to give the reference. First, you need to give the reference. Then, you need to write the provision. Then, you need to give the discussion. You need to give the discussion. And finally, you need to give the conclusion. So, these are the four aspects that should be present in the answer. Okay. First paragraph, what is that you will write? Reference, what is that you will write? As per section 7 1C, read with schedule 1 of CGST Act, reference over. Now, provision disposal of business asset on which ITC is availed is treated as supply. Clear? Now, provision over. Now, discussion. What is the discussion? In the present case, the air conditioner dealer has taken ITC on the AC is purchased and when the same is taken to his residence, it will be treated as disposal of business asset and consequently it will become supply over conclusion. Conclusion is what consequently it will become supply over. Now, same way second paragraph what you will write first as per section 71A because it is related to consideration. 71A, okay. Any activity for consideration in the course or furtherance of business constitute supply. In the present case, Akash is selling the AC which is used in his residence, which is not in the course or furtherance of business. Conclusion, consequently, the said activity is not a supply. Understood per presentation. So, ensure that these four points you are touching, then automatically the answer will come and you will get step marks also based on this only. So, ICI will usually follow step marking. If you have seen your RTI answer sheet, so you would have known that they will give step 1, step 1A, step 1B like that they will be giving step marks and based on that they will give the marks. They will never give 4 marks means 4 marks, 3 marks like that they will give a step marking. That is how the evaluation is being done. So, due to that reason, when you are writing like this, so automatically even if one point is wrong also, at least one mark or two marks because of the step marks you will be getting for that. Okay. Then, look into question number 4. Raman is an architect in Chennai. His brother who is settled in London is a well-known lawyer. Raman has taken legal advice from him free of cost with regard to his family dispute, examine whether the said activity would amount to supply under section 7 read with schedule 1 of CGST Act by the for consideration or without consideration. Without consideration. Without consideration means you need to refer to 71C. Now, in 71C, is it import of service from a related person because supplier is outside India? Supplier is outside India and London, recipient is Raman in India. Is it import of service? Yes. From a related person or not? No, not from a related person. Why? Brother settled in London, not dependent on Raman. Therefore, it is not a related person. So, 71C will not come. And what will be your answer if Raman has taken advice in respect of business unit in Chennai? Then also the answer will be same answer is no by first of all it is not import of service from a related person. Now, what is that you will be writing for this? First you will write section 71C read with schedule 1 import of services from a related person on other establishment located outside India in the course or furtherance of business even though without consideration is supply like that provision you will write. Thereafter you will also write as per related definition. So, persons are coming under family if brothers 
sisters, parents, grandparents are wholly and mainly dependent on that person. In the present case, brother of Raman is not dependent on Mr. Raman. Consequently, it is not an import of service from a related person and therefore it is not a supply and the answer remains same even if it is with respect to business unit. Got it? See, you don't have to by heart the answers. Please don't do that. If you by heart the answer also, it is of no use. Learn the way of presenting. English, it can be in a easy English language. Now, you don't have to like uh, write the same way and all. At intermediate level, you will not be tested with respect to your language skills. So, in simple words, if you write also, it is okay. Not necessary that you need to, you know, by heart the provision and the same way you need to write not required. Just follow this way, you will definitely get marks, okay? Trust me. Then question number 5, Megraj and company wishes to commence a business of supplying ready-made garments within Punjab and in the neighboring states of Delhi and Haryana. Kindly state as to what is the taxable event under GST <coughs> and leviability of CGST, SGST, UTGST and IGST on the same. So, where is he selling? Where is he selling? Within Punjab and in neighboring states of Delhi and Haryana. With respect to sale in Punjab, it is known as intrastate supply and the type of GST will be CGST and SGST. Whereas, in case of sale in Delhi and Haryana, the type of GST will be IGST because that will be interstate supply. So, it is a simple question. Look into question number 6. Damodar Private Limited registered in Delhi has transferred some goods to its branch registered in West Bengal. So, from where to where it is transferred? Delhi to West Bengal. Delhi is a different state, West Bengal is a different state. Means it is a distinct person? Yes or no? The goods have been transferred without any consideration. So, transaction between distinct persons without any consideration. The company believes that transaction undertaken by it does not qualify as supply as no consideration is involved. Ascertain whether the transfer of goods by Damodar Private Limited to its branch office qualifies as supply. Yes, where it will come? 7-1-C because one branch of a person in a state to another branch in the another state will be treated as distinct persons. Then. Question number 7, composite supply is treated as supply of that particular goods or service which attracts the highest rate of tax. True or false? False. Why? Mixed supply only highest rate. For composite supply, it is a rate of principal supply. Then eighth question, transfer of title under our possession is necessary for a transaction to constitute supply of goods, examine. Both are necessary, transfer of title and are our possession, no. So, it is partly true, transfer of title may be at a future date, but even if the possession is given today, it will still qualify as supply of goods, correct. See, transfer of title along with transfer of possession or transfer of possession wherein title will be transferred at a future day will become supply of goods. Then question number 9, Suleka manufacturers have a factory in Delhi and a depot in Mumbai. Both these establishments are registered in respective states. Means one registration to another registration. Finished goods are sent from factory in Delhi to Mumbai depot without any consideration so that the same can be sold. Explain whether the said activity constitutes supply. Why? Delhi and uh, other state, Mumbai, so means different state. So, it will become transaction between distinct persons. Even though it is without consideration, it will become supply. Then 10th question already we discussed that Srinidhi Kaushik. One question we saw, na, that already we saw. Look into question number 11. Determine whether the following supplies amount to composite supplies. A hotel provides 
four days, three nights package, wherein the facility of breakfast and dinner is provided along with the room accommodation. What is your answer? Composite supply or not? Yes. So, because accommodation and complementary breakfast is naturally bundled, all are taxable and the principal supply is accommodation, so it is a composite supply. A toothpaste company has offered the scheme of free soap along with toothpaste. Will it come under composite supply? No. Why it is not a composite supply? Not naturally bundled. When you go to shop and ask for toothpaste, will they give uh, soap also? Definitely no. So, it is not naturally bundled. Okay. Then this uh, hair oil and comb, hair oil and comb, naturally bundled or not naturally bundled, not naturally bundled, but Induleka hair oil, one applicator they will give, uh, you know that, yes, so you do not know, I know, okay, so of course, now it is of no use and uh, this will be coming under composite supply or not, yes, you know why? By default, they will be giving that applicator, so then it will become composite supply, means always they should be giving along with the product. Then, look into question number 12, Dum Dum Electronics has sold the following electronic items to Akbar retail store, refrigerator 500 liters taxable at 18 percent, stabilizer for refrigerator taxable at 12 percent. LED television taxable at 12 percent, split AC taxable at 28 percent, stabilizer for air conditioner taxable at 12 percent. They have issued a single invoice indicating price of each of the above items separately in the same. Pa, be careful, they gave single invoice indicating the price of each item separately. They did not give it for a single price. The single invoice is confusing. We will think that okay, single price mixed supply. No, because invoice single invoice but price is given separately means will it become composite supply first check composite supply no why it is not composite supply even though all are taxable not naturally bundled correct sir can we buy refrigerator alone without stabilizer can we buy refrigerator and television separately also so therefore it will not be coming under naturally bundled therefore it is not a composite supply Will it become mixed supply? No. Why it will not become mixed supply? Because there is no single price. So, due to that reason, it will not be even mixed supply. Then what it will be? Individual supplies taxable at the respective rates. Like that only you need to present the answer. First, you need to write why it is not a composite supply. Then you need to write why it is not a mixed supply. Therefore, it will be individual supplies taxable at respective rates. Then, question number 13. Manikaran, a registered supplier of Delhi, has supplied 20,000 packages at 30 rupees each to Mukija gift shop in Punjab. Each package consists of two chocolates, two fruit juice bottles and a packet of toy balloons. Huh. All these three are taxable. You tell me, is it naturally bundled? No. So, therefore, because usually in the ordinary course of business, chocolates and juice bottles and toy balloons will not be naturally bundled. So, it will not be coming under composite supply. Is it for a single price or not? Yes, as it is for a single price, it will be coming under mixed supply and we will take the highest rate. Between these three, what is the highest rate? 18 percent. That 18 percent we apply on entire amount, 20,000 into 30 into 18 percent. 20,000 into 30 into 18 percent. So, how much that will come to? 1 lakh 8,000. Then next one, fourteenth question. Gagan Engineering Private Limited, registered in Haryana, is engaged in providing maintenance and repair service for heavy steel machinery for carrying out the repair work. Actually, this is related to one circular. We will see that circular and come back to this question. So, see the first circular. There are various circulars related to supply. In that, see the first circular page 33, page 33, see this example, Ford Limited Tamil Nadu, Ford Limited factory in Gujarat, distinct persona, not distinct persona, distinct person, because two different states na, 
two different states means they are called as distinct persons. Now, they are sending a lorry to Gujarat. This lorry contains some goods and some spare parts and uh, these goods value is 25 lakhs, lorry value is 8 lakhs and spare parts for consumption in the Gujarat factory not for further sale that is 6 lakhs. Now, in this case definitely on goods there will be GST correct or not no doubt GST will be there on goods, but the question is whether there will be GST on the lorry no even though lorry is goods actually lorry is also goods why lorry is movable na? as lorry is movable lorry also will become goods and GST will be payable on lorry, but there would not be any GST on the lorry even though it is goods they are telling that it is not a supply because that lorry will go deliver the goods and will return why should we pay GST on the lorry. So, it is the first point you need to remember movement of conveyance not goods movement of conveyance between between distinct person movement of conveyance between distinct person carrying goods no need to pay any GST on the conveyance you understood same way movement of spare parts between the distinct person not for further supply, but for consumption in that case also no GST payable on the spare parts got it. So, tell me what are the two points here movement of conveyance between the distinct person carrying goods on conveyance no need to pay GST second point movement of spare parts between the distinct person not for further supply, but for consumption then also there is no supply no GST. Now, see the another case from Ford limited factory in Gujarat they are taking the lorry for repairs to Ford limited workshop in Maharashtra again on this lorry whether any GST is payable no why because this lorry is taken only for repairs. Now, first point what is it you told movement of conveyance between distinct person carrying goods or people or for repairs there is no GST you understood. However, this workshop in Maharashtra is sending the lorry after repairs. Now, they provide the repair service now that repair service will become supply. So, on that repair service alone they need to pay GST not on the lorry. So, on lorry no GST pa, but the repair activity they do na service on that alone GST payable because that is a transaction between distinct persons. So, what are the points you need to remember movement of conveyance for transporting goods or person between distinct person do not constitute supply. Also movement of conveyance for repairs or after repairs do not constitute supply. Movement of spare parts tools between distinct person not for further supply, but for consumption in the distinct person do not constitute supply these three points can you remember can you please repeat it once again what are the three points movement of conveyance between the distinct person for carrying goods or people is not a supply second point movement of conveyance between the distinct person for repairs or after repairs then also it is not a supply the number three movement of Huh? spare parts not for further supply, but for consumption in the distinct person is also not a supply. Then see that question how this question will be tested how this circular will be tested come back to question number 14 page 51 Gagan engineering private limited registered in Haryana is engaged in providing maintenance and repair service for heavy steel machinery. For carrying out the repair work Gagan engineering private limited send its container trucks equipped with items like repair equipments, consumables, tools, parts etcetera from Haryana workshop to its own repairing centers located in another state own repairing center located in another state means distinct person correct huh? registered under GST law located in other states across India where clients missionary are brought and being repaired. So, please try to understand what is the question Gagan engineering private limited is a company where are they registered Haryana what they do maintenance and repair services 
for doing the repair service what they are doing they are taking a truck they are taking a truck the truck contained the repair equipment where they are taking the truck to the client's place or to their branch in other state to their branch in other state discuss the liability of gst on the interstate movement of trucks from the workshop of gagan engineering private limited in haryana to its own repairing centers located in other states what is your answer it's a transaction between distinct person as per circular movement of conveyance between the distinct person carrying goods or people on conveyance it is not a supply however gst is payable on the goods which are carried inside the truck you got it then next see the next one ptl private limited is a retail store of merchandise located in 25 states in the country for the purpose of clearance of stock of merchandise and to attract consumers ptl private limited launched a scheme of buy one get one free for the same type of merchandise for instance one shirt be given free with the purchase of another shirt buy one get one free okay determine how the taxability of goods supplied under buy one get one free is determined now listen carefully this buy one get one free or uh, buy this product get another product free should be treated as composite supply or mixed supply okay and if it is naturally bundled means always it will be given then it will be a composite supply example kinder joy you remember kinder joy kinder joy chocolate one toy always chocolate with toy they will be giving so this will be coming under composite supply because naturally bundled na the toy which is given free along with the chocolate naturally bundled sometimes as a promotional offer they will be bringing some promotional offers this promotional offers is only you know for a limited time etc example boost if you buy one bat you will get free one bag you will get free one zipper bottle you will get free exactly this time they will start that april and may why because summer season lot of kids will be requiring something to play so for the sake of free they will make the purchase so therefore this is a promotional offer only for the period then it will not be naturally bundled so it will come under mixed supply is it clear but in this case buy one get one free is a scheme which is launched for the same type of merchandise for instance one shirt to be given along with the purchase of another shirt same product na so therefore we need to treat it like composite supply or mixed supply and the free product will not be taxed because for buy one get one free only one price will be there that one price only will be taxed then why sir we should apply composite supply mixed supply mainly to determine the rate here the problem will not be there because both are same products but in the kinder joy example chocolate different rate toy different rate will be there are you getting this then in that case a rate confusion will come so you tell me how the freebies should be treated along with the other product you should apply composite supply and mixed supply just remember that then another question saravana and sense wishes to start supplying alcoholic liquor in the state of tamil nadu therefore it applies for license license pa not sale license to tamil nadu government for selling liquor for which the state government has charged a specific fee from it examine whether the grant of liquor license by tamil nadu government qualifies as supply no what we have seen liquor license granted by state government is excluded from supply so how you will present it first you will write as per section 7 subsection 2 red with schedule 3 of cgst act grant of liquor license by state government to any person against the consideration is excluded from supply therefore in the present case it is not a supply then 17th question examine whether the following activities would amount to supply under gst law glory limited is engaged in manufacturing and selling of cosmetic products seva trust a charitable organization approach glory limited 
to provide financial assistance for its charitable activities. Glory Limited donated a sum of 2 lakhs to Seva Trust with a condition that Seva Trust will place a hoarding at the entrance of the trust premises displaying picture of the product sold by Glory Limited. Ah. So, what type of donation it will be? Conditional donation or unconditional donation? Conditional donation, therefore, it will be treated as consideration and accordingly it will become supply under 71A. Then, second point Mr. Swami of Chennai is working as a manager with ABC Bank. He consulted Messrs. Jacobs and Company of London and took its advice for buying a residential house in Mumbai and paid them a consultancy fee of 200 UK pounds for this import of service. Import of service for consideration or without consideration? For consideration, therefore, it will become supply under 71B. Then question number 18, list any 5 activities or transactions specified in Schedule 3 which shall neither be treated as supply of goods nor shall be treated as supply of service. And that's spelled slow na. Any five points you need to write. Okay. That's an easy question like this and all. If it comes, no, super, it will be. Then 19th question. Examine whether the following activities would be treated as supply under GST law. So the previous question was asked for May 23 exam. So actually from 22. May 22 exam onwards I am observing, one question for 4 marks or 5 marks they are testing on supply chapter, this chapter what we have seen so far, okay. So May 23 they asked, November 23 also they asked one question, examine whether the following activities would be treated as supply under GST law. Mr. Sonu from Chandigarh purchased a water cooler from Malhotra brothers of Hosiapur for 25,000 to donate it to a temple situated in Hosirapur, Mr. Sonu directed Malhotra to engrave the words on the water cooler dono donated by Mr. Sonu, only individual name. There is no business advantage. So you tell me what is your answer? As display of name is not out of compulsion, but as a gratitude. And that display of name is not giving any business advantage to the donor. It will not be treated as conditional donation and therefore it is not consideration and consequently it is not a supply. Next second point, Vesco Limited, a registered person in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, having head office located in Singapore, received management consultancy service free of cost from its head office. Is it supply or not a supply without consideration, without consideration. So, is it disposal of business asset? No, import of services from a related person or another establishment. This will come under another establishment located outside India because they are reporting services from their head office located outside India. So, even though without consideration, but it is in the course or furtherance of business, therefore, it will come under supply and it will be taxable, okay. It is supply or not, they are asking, yes, it is supply under 71C, okay. So, these are the questions that has been asked in past exam. I have included all past exam questions, RTP questions, MTP questions and study material questions, okay. Now, look into the next circular here. See page number 34, second circular, page 34. So, classification of the print activity, okay. Whether this print activity will be treated as supply of goods or supply of services, okay. So, just 10 minutes, pa. 10 minutes, okay. Uh, if you want to leave, it is okay, you leave, no issue. But 10 minutes I will be taking and complete. At least 2 3 circulars we can complete. So, that tomorrow we can start with a new chapter liability to pay GST. Okay. Say this classification of print job. So, in print activity, there will be goods element and service element. What is the goods element? 
paper and ink is the goods element. What is the service element? Printing and binding is the service element. Example, you are having one book. In that book, so printing and binding is the service element. Paper and ink used is the goods element. Now you tell me, what is the principal supply? There, because CBIC circular says, we need to classify it as goods or service based on principal supply. You tell me what constitutes principal supply in this? Paper and ink, ah, printing. Ah. Suppose in the book, uh, printing is not proper. Will you keep that book? No. And binding is not proper, pages and all coming out. Will you keep that book? Paper, ink is there, keep it. No, no. So, principal supply is what? Printing and binding. So, therefore, it is treated as supply of service. Another example. When you go to a restaurant, you see a tissue paper. On the tissue paper, the restaurant name will be printed. Correct. In this, what is the goods element? Tissue paper. What is the service element? Printing. Now, what constitutes principal supply? Tissue paper. Just because no hotel name is printed, you will keep it safe and all. No. Whatever purpose for which you use tissue paper, you will use for that only. Whether name is printed or not printed, you are, it is irrelevant, correct. So, therefore, what is the principal supply there? Goods. So, now how the classification will be are in print activity? You classify it based on principal supply. If the principal supply is goods, it will be treated as supply of goods. If the principal supply is service, then it will be treated as supply of service. Then next one, so this we will see later related to this tenancy premium. Look into circular number 8. Whether the activity of bus body building is supply of goods or supply of services. What will happen in bus body building? This is the chases which the bus manufacturer will sell. Bus manufacturer will never sell the body. So, if you buy a bus, it will be like this. So, there will be a chases, tires, engine, driver seat. This much only will be there. There won't be anything. This is only bus. Okay. You need to buy this and take it to a bus body workshop. In that workshop, they will make a structure like this and this structure, they will fix on the top of this chases and that is where we get this bus. Now, this is known as, you know, bus body. Okay. And what is the goods element involved in this? What is the goods element involved in this? Material that iron and steel, pipes, sheets will be called as the material. What is the service element involved in this? Fabrication. They need to cut it and properly they need to fabricate, weld it, correct? Now you tell me what is the principal supply involved in this? Material, fabrication. Fabrication, therefore it will be treated as supply of service. So again in the activity of bus body building, we need to classify based on principal supply. Then next one, whether re-threading of tires is supply of goods or supply of service. What happens generally in re-threading is that, see a tire's life is max to max 50,000 kilometers. That to commercial vehicles, because commercial vehicles and all, they will be taking heavy load and they will be going in the highways and sometimes the roads may not be proper, because of it there will be lot of wear and tear. 50,000 kilometers only they can use the tire, then they have to replace because the grip of the tire will be lost. So, if they apply brake here after half kilometer it will stop and uh, accidents will happen. So, due to that reason they need to replace the tire, but one tire will be somewhere 40,000 rupees. Now, if 4 tires or 5 tires if they replace itself, so that will be 2 lakhs, 3 lakhs, they will not do that. They go for re-threading. What is it re-threading? For the same old tire, a grip will be fixed, okay? a grip will be attached. So, when they attach this grip, again this can be used for some 20,000 kilometers like that. So, this is known as re-threading of tires, whether this activity is supply of goods or services, simple. Pa. You are giving me old tire, I do the re-threading and I give you and collect some money. This is carrying out process on the goods belonging to other person. And the principle that is whatever substantial material, what is the substantial material in this? Tire you are giving, 
So I do the process, so it will be coming under supply of service. Got it? Now, I purchase the old tire from you, and that old tire I am doing the retreading. I sell it as a retreaded tire. Then it will be traded as supply of goods because I purchase the old tire. Means this material belongs to me. On that I do the process and sell. Then it will be traded as supply of goods. So that's what. If supply of retreaded tires where the old tire belong to the supplier of retreaded tire, it is traded as supply of goods. If the old tire belongs to the recipient, you are giving. I am just doing the process. Then it will be traded as supply of service. Then next circular, whether artwork sent by the artist to gallery, is it supply on the date when it is sent to the gallery, or is it the date when the gallery is selling it to the customer? Usually, artwork when we send it to the gallery, so today they will not pay money to us. They will display in the gallery. And only when they sell it to the buyer, they will be giving money to us. So, whenever the artist is taking the artwork to the gallery, it is not sale on the date on which he is taking to the gallery. But when is it treated as supply on the date when the art gallery sells it to the customer? Now, this is where I wanted to bring you the point of certainty in the consideration. I told you one point: consideration should be certain. When I take the artwork to the gallery, is the consideration certain? No. When is it certain? Only when the art gallery sells it to the buyer, it is certain. Correct or not? Until that point of time, the consideration will not come. That's why the supply will be on the date. Come on. When the art gallery sells it to one buyer, you got it? So it is only when the buyer selects a particular artwork displayed at the gallery, the actual supply takes place. And applicable GST would be payable at the time of such supply. Then, next one, this perquisite related point already we discussed. So, what is the difference between perquisite and gift? I told you, if it is mentioned in the offer document, it is called as perquisite. If it is not mentioned in the offer document, it is called as gift. So, that is based on one circular. Okay, that's what I have given. And again, gift does not exceed fifty. Exceed fifty, we have seen. Then last point, whether sale of land after leveling, laying down of drainage lines is taxable under GST. So usually, this developed plots and all will be sold by the promoters or developers. So they will tell. So very near to Chennai, on the back side uh, airport is there, front side uh, railway station is there. Like that and all, they will be selling plots. You would have observed, and even they will be roping in lot of celebrities also. And lot of VFX and all they will be doing in that. So wherein in helicopter they will be coming and landing. So lot of ads. I don't know whether you are seeing that. So plots and all they will be selling. And what they do is that they will buy this uh, agricultural land or any industrial land which will be like raw. There won't be anything. So they will demolish all the trees, and they will level it because it will be uneven. They will level it. They will put it like plots, square plots, like thousand two hundred, thousand square feet, nine hundred square feet, like that plots. They will lay down the drainage lines, electric lines, roads, and all. They will lay down, and this developed plots they will be selling. Now, when they sell this developed plot, the question is: Is it still sale of land or not? Yes. But land, as it is, when you sell also sale of land. When you develop it and sell, also it is sale of land. So sale of land is excluded from supply, correct or not? But for development of that land, some money will be collected. Example: You just go to you know this uh, Red Hills, uh, Ambattur, Avadi side and all. Lot of plots they are selling here. Now what they will do is that per square feet two thousand rupees land. Development charge thousand rupees per square feet like that they will collect. Okay, two thousand rupees per square feet is not a supply. Why not a supply? That is sale of land. But thousand rupees for development they are collecting now because they invest money on developing that. So the thousand rupees will be covered under supply. Is it clear or not? What if they merge this thousand along with this two thousand and make it like three thousand rupees per square feet as the sale of land? Then it will be completely excluded from supply. Read there. Sale of such land is excluded from supply. However, any service provided for development of land 
लाइक लेवलिंग लेइंग ऑफ ड्रेनेज लाइंस शेल अट्रैक्ट जीएसटी एट द एप्लीकेबल रेट फॉर दैट सर्विसेज गॉट द क्लैरिटी अबाउट दिस फाइन विद दिस वी विल स्टॉप एंड द रिमेनिंग सर्कुलर्स hardly it will take some half an hour that we will complete tomorrow morning and we will be starting with liability to pay gst segment 3 a very very important area lot of amendments are also there in this that we will see tomorrow thank you